Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022 once again. I'm still Septulans, but this time I am joined by the CEO of New Street, Eric, who's going to get to tell us about NFTs, which I'm really excited because I told you this before the interview. I'm, I know nothing. I'm like a newborn baby about this. Yeah. So I, I would love to hear <laughs> kind of about what you do, and then we can talk a little bit more about the esports side of things. Yeah, so absolutely. We'll get into the NFT side in a second. But just to quickly explain what I do, yeah, of um, course. Eric Witchin, thank you for the intro. Um, <laughs> CEO of New Street, and New Street is a media and analytics platform for collectors. Um, so you can think about it as like the, the world of collectibles has, has grown significantly over the last five to ten years. Um, and what's happened is we've, we've had a lot of marketplaces evolve, so places yeah. that are going to sell you things. Like if I want to buy a pair of sneakers, I have to go to no less than 10 to 12 websites in order to figure out the best price. So right. you know, the value proposition for us starts with, you know, as a collector, where can I buy these things on the internet and where can I get the best deal possible. And then furthermore, we add media and insights, um, you know, sort of like a financial technology company would do, but around things that I personally care about a lot more right. than stocks. Right. So, so that's, uh, that's us. Absolutely. So looking at it, you know, NFTs being one thing, esports being the other. Yeah. Where, where's the oh, link? Yeah. Where's the connection so, there? So first off, let's demystify NFTs a little bit. Oh, yes, please. So, so first of all, an NFT is, is, is the first time in human history that we've been able to prove that something digital is scarce. Yeah. You need to take that in for a second. So basically, you know, we've been creating things on the internet and with digital art and otherwise for many, many years. Uh, we're buying in-game items, we're, we're doing a bunch of things, and we've been taught that because you can copy and paste those things, they have no value, right? Enter the blockchain, and the blockchain allows us to be able to prove that something digital is truly owned by one particular sure. person. Sure. So you can copy and paste that thing as many times as so you want, is it but like you don't a certificate own it. Then? It's absolutely like a certificate of authenticity, sure. certificate of ownership that could represent a digital asset or a physical asset just as equally. Right. There are people playing with this in, in real estate markets. I mean, so you know, collectibles, uh, you know, is just is just one of the areas that this thing is interesting in. But in terms of esports, I think it connects very uh, very much to. Um, you know, when you think about all the work that you do uh, as a gamer um, in these ecosystems, um, what happens if one day this ecosystem, this company that controls this ecosystem no longer exists? All your in-game assets and all the things that you've worked so hard no longer exist too. And so, of course, you know, the, the primary use case of these a assets in ecosystem are going to be within the ecosystem, maybe forever. But it'd be really nice to be able to pull them out of the ecosystem, own them separately. And so if those companies are foregone, you know, go, go by the wayside someday, you still have these things to say, hey, I used to play this game. Right. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, and so that's really where I think the value comes in. Okay, so that, that, that's... Preservation that's, of value, so to speak. Yeah, so that, that's a great kind of segue into the other part. You, you've got all these positives. So people that are looking at it, they're kind of shaking their head a little bit. They're like, oh, this is going to be damaging. This can be harmful. Of course. It, what, what is kind of the, the, the counterpoint to that, uh, I guess? Of, of course, of course. The counterpoint is that I think the misperception is, is these NFT games are coming to take gaming away from gamers and, or the fun out of games. Uh -huh. and, and the fact of the matter is, is that's like a lot of the, the current NFT gaming is more of a replacement for casino gambling than it is for anything else. Sure. I mean, these are not meant to be competitive with the games that you guys are playing here and shouldn't be seen as such. So it's almost like two completely different industries. Okay. You know, the graphic engines and all the things that are behind the scenes on these things, they're just not there yet. I mean, if you look at the, the like the, you know, it looks like some of these look like Minecraft 10 years ago. Right, right. But, but that being said, really it's the, it's the connectivity to economics, uh, to the other, the rest of the web and whatnot that makes a lot of these things really more interesting. Sure. And those things haven't even happened yet. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So it's, to kind of pull us away from the eSport, back to the NFT kind of topic, and you and I did discuss this a little bit before the interview, is people are often talking about how NFTs can be damaging or harmful to kind of the, the real world, literal environment, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the environment definitely, itself. So definitely. what is kind of, for somebody, you know, compared to me who knows nothing, someone who actually knows what's up with NFTs, what's the stance on that? Yeah, so, so absolutely. So it's one of, the, one of the most strongest negatives about NFTs right now is the carbon footprint that um, that these blockchains leave. And, and just to get not too technical, but, but just to talk really quickly through it, there's these, these things that essentially are used to confirm transactions. It's called a consensus mechanism. Okay. Essentially, it's, it's how do you prove that the ledger is accurate. That it happened, right? right? And so, the, so Bitcoin and, and Ethereum currently use this thing called proof of work. Okay. And that uses a lot of energy, tons of energy. I mean, energy of small countries. So I do agree that on a per user basis, the electricity that's being used right now by the network yeah. is absolutely higher than it should be. That being said, Ethereum in particular is going through a change this year 
that's going to reduce the emissions by something like 99 and a half percent. Wow. So it's really like, it, it's kind of like one of those things that is a current problem, but that problem gets solved really quickly. Right. And I sometimes question the areas that these narratives come from. Because yeah. when you think about it, right, like negative narratives tend to come from industries that don't want something to succeed. And you know, you know, you, you look at the, the things like you know crypto industries or sure. whatnot. And there's a lot of industries that stand to lose uh, if crypto wins. So you know, I'll just leave it at that. But but there's a lot of false narratives being perpetuated, especially around the environment. And the fact of the matter is, is whereas they are currently concerns, they very quickly become non-concerns. Sure. And a lot of actually the current blockchains that are being used actually already uses consensus mechanism. Okay. So so really r take very 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 little power. Yeah, so I guess the question is, are you afraid that e even after they fix this, the 99% goes down, sure. are you afraid that's going to damage the, the longevity uh, of this idea, of this concept? You know, I think, I think that it, it has the potential to, right? Sure. Because, you know, we're still in the, the early adoption phase. Right. And so anytime you get, you get a narrative as strong, especially environmental ones, which I am very attuned with, um, you know, environmental concerns, you know, it alienates a large group of people. So there are groups of people, um, you know, that uh, like lobbyists for all intents and purposes that are are taking the counterpoint and are right, essentially lobbying right. for the crypto industry. So lobbyists everywhere, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I guess, so we've, we've covered the NFT portion, we've covered a little bit of the gamer portion, but a gamer watching this, somebody gaming. Absolutely. Where's the benefit for them? What, what's the benefit of kind of the, so, the gaming NFT? Absolutely. So, so I would say right now, um, very little. I'll be honest with you, sure. but it's coming. And, and where it's coming is in the ability to own these in-game items and digital objects that you worked so hard right. to collect, um, that commemorate things that you've done, things that you've won. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it connects to a lot of different things, particular in esports, but also just in everyday life. Yeah. Um, you know, ticketing for events is, is a, you know, there's a lot of ticketing vendors that are, that are moving to this as some way to keep these tickets immortalized in your wallet forever. We're you know, just once in a while I'll find a little piece of paper that, that reminds me that I went to a concert in 1987. Right. But, you know, generally speaking, that, you know, I don't find those that often. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things, and I think that a lot of people get sort of, um, you know, any, any nascent industry is going to have cash grabs and scams. Right. Um, the Internet had that in 99 and 2000 as well, um, but here we are. So, you know, that's kind of how I think about things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. I know that I have learned a lot. I hope people watching <laughs> have learned a lot as well. But I really appreciate all that. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. First, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, so my name is Caitlin. I'm a part of Farmingdale State College's eSports club. I am captain of the Valorant Green team. I am a second a uh, second semester sophomore at Farmingdale State College and I'm 19 years old. Okay, do you like Farmingdale so far? Yeah, it's a uh, it's really great. Uh the program I'm in is very specialized and it's not offered um that often in the East Coast, so it's pretty nice. I enjoy it. And what's your major? My major is aerospace professional pilot degree. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Thank you. So, is this your first time on an esports team? No. So, I've been a part of the Valorant team for two semesters, and this is um, my third semester, and it's my first time ever being a captain. Okay, oh, that's awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like being a captain? So a lot of times I'm organizing the team, making sure everyone is properly set for upcoming games, um, getting scrims for our, our team, and kind of just making sure everyone is there, present, and possible, and able to play the games that we're going to, you know, be participating in. We're participating in two leagues this semester, so it's kind of hectic. Oh gosh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. How is it different for you as a player versus as a captain? Do you feel a lot of responsibility? I basically have the responsibility of choosing who you know really plays, what uh, type of characters everyone's playing, and what positions and roles we are all doing, as well as um, being there not only as a team member, but also being seen as in a leadership role and having that sort of respect there and being able to delegate um, everyone's role in the team. So it's definitely a lot uh, more different, and my voice is most definitely her. So <laughs> I, I like it. I like being a, uh, a captain. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what games do you play, or what is your main game? I know you mentioned Valorant. 
Right. So um, I played Valorant, but um, I started off with Counter Strike, and I really always have been interested in FPSs. So um, it, that background has always been there. So my transfer onto Valorant was pretty pretty easy. That's cool. What have you done to improve yourself in game over time? So one thing um, for my teams, especially, I have open communication where we're able to really give our constructive criticism without taking offense. And me as a captain, especially being uh, it being my first semester, I find it really important that everyone is able to come to me and communicate like, hey, Kate, I don't know um, how I feel about doing this or uh, I want my voice to be heard about this specific thing. And um, just basically taking into consideration everyone's voice and having that open line of communication is really helpful. And that's something I find really important. Okay. And do you carry that strategy into your everyday life as well, would you say? Yeah. Um, communication is really important to me, um, especially in aviation with crew members. You're always trying to communicate properly and efficiently to get the assigned goal completed. And that works in video games as well as in aviation. So um, I feel like it transfers very well. And I put my 100% effort in everything I do. I put 100% in um, the team, the leagues that we're participating in, communicating with um, opposing teams that we might be going against. Welcome everyone, it's time for some Esports U action. It's a little bit of Valorant, a little bit of time, but of course you're gonna have to hear it all with a rhyme. I am Hail Monkey Man in the booth alongside Vincent, and Vincent, the wait is over. We're getting ready for some nightly week two ECAC Valorant Division One action here. I didn't know, how are you feeling? And of course, are you ready to see some Valorant? Well, I'm absolutely ready to see some Valorant, and we are looking to get started with this matchup. It's going to be Grand Valley State University going up against the College of St. Rose, and I think this is going to be a little bit interesting as we've yet to see Grand Valley take on anyone this season. It is week two, but I couldn't find any week one matchup information, whereas the College of St. Rose, they're walking into this with a loss. They uh, took on St. John's last week, and unfortunately, weren't able to overcome and lost out in an O2 fashion. So they're looking to take their maiden victory tonight. Well, you know, when the Saints went walking in, they came limping out. So hopefully they're able to take a bit of a stub toe and go right back into the action prepared. But we will have GVSU coming out fresh. And of course, when you haven't been able to get into league play as of yet, that means there's a lot of question marks and not a whole lot of war room tape to really review. But you know what? Let's go and look at the map pick bands. I know that you guys are always excited and curious about what we're going to be seeing tonight. The first couple, interesting. We got to actually have Bind taken out breeze the same way and then gvsu they went immediately for a haven we're not going to have that one be uh our three site uh third map as is kind of tradition but then ascent does kind of rear its head just thereafter yeah and well icebox and fracture then leave uh, for the time being in pearl will be our cider should it be necessary but that is the question mark right i mean will we even need to get to pearl we have uh, some fantastic players taking the server and though we like i said haven't gotten to see the likes of gvsu um and and how they're going to be playing i do think that it's going to be exciting to see how they measure up against uh, the likes of the golden knights for college of saint rose but with that being said um i, I gotta ask what are your expectations are, do you have any uh, strong feelings one way or another here I mean, I always have strong feelings, depending on where we get to sit and, of course, being able to sit next to you. But I got to see exactly how Haven is going to be dissected and overcome. It's a bit of a puzzle map. I love it as it's the only three site map, and I love the aesthetic that also kind of surrounds it. But I'm looking more towards how uh, the attacking side, which will be for the side of, of rather, for St. Rose, as they're going to be kind of implementing and dissecting this one against uh, Grand Valley State. I their entry and being able to hold thereafter post plant hold and now as we actually get onto the map it wasted no time we had some extra time to be able to get here in the first place game number one it's about your initiators i really see that kind of getting more and more defined going into it and i want to see how maybe that uh that rotation after an initial attack is really kind of delayed you have kind of the main a you go down that lobby and then either you have to put smokes into heaven and then a blind fire account occurs or you're going to rotate out maybe just have your omens that could go and flip this map on its side on its head from the shadows i love being able to play that it's basically his playground and uh i'm looking forward to what this map can become i've also seen just a lot of teams run it down b over and over and over again maybe we get to see the same thing tonight 
Uh, you talked about having uh, some significant uh, focus on the initiators, and well, mm. Riot felt the same way was the subject of some of the changes as of recently. Two of the most common initiators in KO and Sky making uh, some or seeing some changes. We are seeing a Sky being pulled out. No longer can you destroy that guiding light. We'll see if that has any significant impact, as it is double initiator for the own uh, side. The site. Seems to be where this attack side is headed. CSR, they've made their way in and cobalt even the opening pick with the plant going Fight down. Planted. That's a great, just kind of running it down, getting on site, then waiting for these smokes to more or less dissipate. You actually see that defense of the Omen coming out all the way from Garage, and they're going to be trying to look at window, see what they can find the back in. Dive, maybe diving in, but it would be a slow dive, but from the opposite side angle, you have Illusion that's casting the Illusion of Weakness. They get a couple, and it becomes a two-on-one. A nice take by DJK. Can she be able to find another? Not quite. As a headshot by Arax will get the defense, the defusal. That happened all in an instant. It sure did. Illusion with uh, some really good shots connecting a double kill to set things up there, but ultimately it was a team effort from Grand Valley State University doing everything that they needed to do on the retake. And, you know, despite what I saw from CSR there, they were very, uh, very quick to decide for that B site. It seems like they had a plan from the very beginning um, but even with the opening pick, they weren't able to keep hold of the space that they had taken. So I want to kind of keep an eye on that and see if that's going to be a consistent factor as we continue on. But now it's going to be classics abounding. I think all five players have one of those and no upgrades to speak of. You know, I, I do appreciate sticking together, especially when you're on kind of these uh, these round twos where you need to find a lot more value out of your no buy. But I also like a little bit of frenzy death ball syndrome. That's not going to happen. Arax is able to get rid of Andre from the opposite end. That's going to be the aftershock that's going to try and push people away from mid. Oh my goodness, more damage coming through. The grenade, the paint shells will be put out and clutch. is just kind of waiting to right click anyone. Loof on this near side corner with that fade. Will be able to lurk just enough, maybe get a valuable kill, deny this from being a flawless. Well, that's not going to happen. They hit every bullet except the one that counts, and that's the one that will put them on the ground. Arax will save their life. And so that's opening two for GVSU. Sort of standard start, right? You pick up the first round, pick up the pistol. You expect to pick up that second round as well, and it's exactly what GVSU have done. It's now time for the rubber to meet the road, though, for College of St. Rose. And, well, they have... Vandals, five of them, prepped and ready. And if you look at the map, I mean, they're not really necessarily poised to go anywhere, at least as a, as a squad early on. It looks very defaulty to me. Illusion trying to get some aggression and will continue to push forward. That is a lot of space being taken by this raise. But Andre, too prepared, down to 16 HP, but that's not a problem because the man advantage is now firmly in the hands of CSR. They're playing for a little bit of that default C where they need to flex over two after a great take, but you do actually have the chamber waiting down on sewer if they were to rotate four. They're looking more into garage. Dark cover will come out and dive will back up at least a little bit. Waiting on the opposite end from CT. Fade from that high side box onto left side C. But you can see the rotation really being considered and they're actually gonna go all the way back to mid and get out of dodge. Nice teleportation, and you still have a bit of damage that actually fa uh, found its way over to Arax, but the rotation will actually be making its way over to A, but you do have Chamber for Bido ready to get back into the fray. But I, I like that they're kind of picking their poison, taking their time. And this is what you got to do to not drop 3-0, really trying to make their one-on-ones and make these first contacts valuable. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the right decisions being made, but nice shot there from Bido at least connect. Frag, but still, even stead as we look towards the retake, Paranoia has come out. DJK, she's on the site, but Haunt making life miserable, making it very difficult. Cobalt climbing on this flank is going to be important with now the push. Everyone moving from every angle. Cobalt alone, the defuse coming through, and Cobalt is going to confirm that first. The second now in the swing from Rax is there. 14 health was all that was necessary for him to find that frag. Three. Rounds now in a row for GVSU. 
Arax is going to have that Rolling Thunder already activated. One of my favorite agents just because they are just so loud and proud of everything that they do. He'll tell you, let's go, and the entire team will have a morale boost and pretty much just rolls in with that kind of buff. And I like that they've been all every single time they've been playing into this left side or I guess viewers, right, of site B, to be able to put that fault line forward and really delay the the immediacy of the push into A. Lots of good utility that just kind of gets early expended just to kind of stun you out. So the first three rounds goes over to G of it and GDSU. The Lakers trying to find extra value. The Odins looking to put some extra holes in the wall. Renovations will have to be made. And there's not a lot of great weapons on the side of the Knights in this moment, but they do find a kill. Oh, but the op is going to find even more value. Great work there from Appa. The dink from the Stinger alongside the headshot from the Ghost is good enough for the frag on the aggressive maneuvers. You know, still live and kicking an Arax there. Re-aggression is good. A dive alongside. So much damage done. Just a single player survives. It's DJK. Well, the kill here would be nice. There we go. Able to get the set as well. Taking a duel here and there, but seems like this is just a matter of time, especially with oh. this Prowler. But wow, max value out of that Spectre, I think you could say. Yeah, just running it down and just a little bit of timing to find a quick step in. Dive's like, okay, hey, I can be able to apply pressure and then found a Spectre straight to the face. And maybe that's why there is that, shiny, that shiny teal gap straight up in uh, under that cow. So we got a 4-0. We were kind of talking about this a little bit as we get into this matchup, how this feels like a differential that could be swung very heavily in favor of GVSU early. It took them a while to get involved, but we also have Ops Abound. This one's going to play in the form. Actually, we got two straight up in on top of B. Yeah, that, that's what I was. That's what I was yelling about. I was like, "Are you kidding me? They got <laughs> two Ops in round five? I mean, just hold, put on hold for a second. The fact that individually purchasing two Ops is." A bit ridiculous in uh, in of it of itself, but in round five, come on, the Odin as well. Just there was a moment there, by the way. There was two Odins and two Ops and a Bucky for GVSU and a Bucky. Just yeah. the Bucky must be noted. No disrespect to yeah. Bucky's in yeah. this house. I'm but. a I'm a big shotgun stand. Uh, you you will know if you uh there. you cast with me anymore. I'm uh anytime sure there's a judge or a Bucky, I, I'm loving it. I'm gonna need to make sure to cast with you again. Because it's, it's it's Bucky Gang all day. We get we Let's get go. aces with those. Yeah. But Bido is going to find one from distance. Not quite the same thing. And utilizing that regrowth to be able to get some more health. At least a little bit back. And wall bang from Cobalt who gets rid of Illusion. So one op will fall. But Luf will be able to get a wall bang headshot as Cobalt retreats. It's just full control of Site C. The bomb's still hanging out on the back end of it. And they're kind of waiting on this lurk to maybe come out. They do recognize that one is still long term C. Edo is just outside garage. They're kind of stuck in this position. It's it's really just a squeeze, and there's not much that Clutch is able to do to really escape it. I mean, just look at every sight line. They, every escape route is fully covered up. Yeah, and if it's as if things weren't already going poorly enough, the one away smoke there is just going to add insult to injury. Time ticking away, and that will be it. Bido, who uh, started with, a, with an op, Oh, just dropped it temporarily, collects it back, and is going to take it into the next round as well. <laughs> Double lock continues in the round number six. But, yeah, CSR, it does kind of feel as if things have started to already get a, just a little bit out of hand. I know that's early to, to be calling that, but right it just feels like the confidence for GVSU is, is abounding. Yeah, they're on another save round as well. But uh, do you... One big question, because we know that Breach could do it. Do you think that a chamber could hold op each op underneath each arm to be able to just double sniper swing? Himself? Oh, yeah. Do you think? 100%. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just making sure. I'm, I mean, I, listen, listen I, I think that yeah, considering Tour Divorce plus the uh, the actual op, it's sort of like lore-wise, he has to be able to do that. <laughs> He's got to, yeah. And then, of course, with the Rolling Thunder, everyone's going, but Arax has fallen. DJK, she's able to get at least one on the back end and get a nice trade, so it becomes a 4 and 4 but This I'm is all about trail. what kind of ideas do you find? Dive is already in this near side corner, takes out their doppelganger and gets rid of their partner from behind. TP coming out, and they'll be able to escape the Death Cabbage. We'll be able to get 
At least one more from down lane. Fade, not fading away. A little bit of ghostly measures could be put out with that haunt. And just, they're just not afraid. Look at the swing. <laughs> just completely going at him. Comes back to it. Oh, winning that one-on-one -on -one immediately. They bunny hop around at will and don't get punished. That's what I like to call a bruh moment right there. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. Like I said, it just feels like the confidence is out of this world here. Um, but I do want to talk about a good response there from CSR. Uh, after the Rolling Thunder, Andre was very quick to uh, answer back. That haunt positioning was perfect. Gave a lot of information and allowed CSR to respond quickly to the aggression down middle. Of course, still one for one trade. Not ideal. But hey, it was a, a great response. Yeah, and being able to just be there and uh, have opportunity uh, available is one of the biggest things. You have this operator. Oh, it won't find anyone's skull, but you do have a little bit of damage that could be forthcoming. You save at least one blast pack to get in, get out, get on with the rest of your 30 HP life. Andre nearly getting wall banged to death. There are three operators in motion, ready to go. Dive finds a headshots and will be able to at least neutralize one of their two initiators. There is... A lot of firepower on the side of GBSU, but it's gonna be even more. No, it's actually Illusion that is stopped out. Clutch is traded, and another hot shot. Dive finds Andre in the back end. You did at least get rid of the show stopper, stopper but the show was stopped from the word go. That was, I mean, just talking about the, the swiftness of the flank there from Dive makes it so difficult for CSR to continue to move forward. They just can't. It's just impossible. And it, it feels as if, right, like CSR, look, they got four ultimates here, but they, they haven't been able to do much of anything with it and into this next round. It feels like that's probably going to continue with the investments that they've been able to put forward. Yeah, some additional shields to work with and... Well, whew, okay, I guess the shield's not super relevant against the, the gun that just, you know, one bullet, you're dead. You know, that uh that gun is, is fast and lethal. I mean, a little bit more lethal than the Halo 2 sniper rifle. It's just, if the Halo 2 sniper rifle won a one-shot kill into the gut, then yes. We're getting a lot of trades from backside as everyone's just trying to hole up. It's, it's a bit of a, uh, a fortress measure. You have your clubhouse in your own spawn, and Dive is diving all the way into the back line. It is one left over the bomb is in a bad spot cobalt has to turn into a much more arduous and forthright mineral but that's gonna be actually the stinger will win they give it a veto who bites off a little bit more than they can chew but it basically gives away what's left can they be able to get that operator and find dive but they're still being surrounded from all sides Whew. 18 <laughs> hp in a dream Vito, by the way, was doing that dual wield operator there with the Tour de Force <laughs> as well as the op. So uh, you, you asked about it. We got it delivered to us pretty quickly. RX, though, is going to shut it down. Eat. Oh, EVSU, they are showing absolutely zero signs of stopping. And it's just, it's instantly Vito back for more on the op. Another one pulled out. Their economy is still good even after losing that. I'm pretty sure Vito is, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they actually work at a circus because they are just <laughs> using one op and another and they're holding them up like stilts, just right walking around <laughs> on them. And anytime they take a shot, they just kind of pop into the sky and then they just make fun of you as they get a spinning headshot. So right now, 8-0, the Lakers looking like the Lakers of old. Can they, Kobe, get a three from downtown? Dive will be able to get rid of Cole Vaults and then the Haunt identifies and tags literally everyone in this corner. Illusion getting a little bit... Uh, sketch as they go for direct contact. What? It is non-stop firepower. The wall bang and another one in open space clutch. It's the graveyard. And this is just a 1v3 with Andre just trying to survive. They just want to live, man. I it, Like, not even just live. Get out of swan. That's <laughs> like step number one. They're where you buy guns. Uh, nice oh. shots from Andre. Oh. Chance for success there, but Vito... Stalwart up figure there for the defense. 9 0. I, listen, I hate to be that guy, but it, it's not too early. A gift. Is, is this going to potentially be a 13 0? Is this going to happen? I, I have a feeling, 
It's been all of one hot flick, just like at the end of that one there. Like, Andre was taking on the world in that survival moment, but one good bit of gunplay for them to get one. I believe in the 13-1. 13-0 could be an inevitability, but 13-1 has a little bit of attitude and stank behind it. And I kind of I kind of <laughs> want to see that happen for St. Rose, but right now, Jeevious using control, but see, Andre with a Guardian against Illusion, but Illusion has always been a little bit aggressive. No charge. Yeah, Illusion certainly playing with fire in some of these scenarios. The hot out towards a long, just to make sure that nobody's gotten uh, too aggressive. And after Illusion goes down, actually a rarity, but GVSU showing some serious respect for uh, CSR. They are are definitely not over aggressing anymore. There, of course. That might change. You see players down C long looking to get, find the information. The Prowler going to clear out some additional angles. So the rotations are going to be coming forward as the Nightfall goes out on towards the site. Everyone falling back. Beto, the only one actually committed to the place. Oh. They'll be able to find one from Heaven. Again, taking out their fellow Frenchman. Cobalt looking on oversight, and then you have an opposite Nightfall as they'll be able to get some suppression. And now, good aggression, Dive and Beto are a nightmare that work together well. They're going to be able to get this defusal. And I swear, a pair of Nightfall is falling in the same map, especially for these collegiate uh, players, has got to just be whispers of, you're going to fail that next test. You're not going to do well. This is about to be a 10-0. <laughs> and it just keeps happening over and over. That's so toxic. <laughs> Listen. It's true. I, some <laughs> Listen, I, I I struggle. I'm fighting against myself. These guys, they got to fight against the other team, too. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Feels oh. bad. Yeah. GBSU. They, they are just they're unstoppable. They keep buying back into this um into this uh, this operator. Like, you do love to see that. But at the same time, it's just got to feel oppressive. Talk, talk. For St. Rose. Got an Odin in play. Vito. Looking to go get their 20 bomb in the first half if they can. A lot of blind fire into this wall. And already DJK, she's not exactly feeling great. The other end of it. They will actually have a good positioning. I do like that they prov uh, that provocation of the vision over into window allowed them to move up into garage. And it allowed for that aggressive step maybe towards B. They flex over towards it and dive. For once, hasn't dove in. But they position outside of trail. Garage. And they actually threw that trademark straight in the middle of it. Yeah. And Lucian says, no, get out of here. Interesting uh, trademark. And, well, that's very interesting is the, uh, the Cabbage played defense. Ooh, you know, no need to play defense. Ooh, it's a quick swap. But he's not going to be prepared for DJK as she One finds success. Remaining. This might be the round 1v4 here for Dive. Potential. CSR to get themselves on the board is high. You gotta think Guiding Light's gonna be able to spot him out, but it actually doesn't. As this one will be a leer on target. He's gonna be able to find blind fire. That's a wall bang, but all from the opposite angle. See, I told you. They get a team ace. Everyone gets a kill. It's a party up in there. 10 Last 1. In Look, the half. There's no there's no 13 0s, at least in this first game. Okay? Yeah. This is this you can build off this. Now it's gonna be the other direction, I bet you. Not big money, small money. Lou Lou was was trolling for a moment. Had, what, wait, Tiny. what? <laughs> what? <laughs> there has been four operators purchased for GVSU. I just want it to be known. Uh, they, now, listen, two of them were sold, but four were purchased at one point. <laughs> Only two of them are going to stick around, though, by the look of it. They are so dead. From down, Andre's going to play from this corner of Long Sea. This is a very default. <laughs> They're kind of just waiting to win these, but they have not. Arax. We'll be able to put Cobalt on their back. Poor guy has been constantly just thrown to the tarmac and just had to eat tile more than they've been able to eat an appetizer here in Haven. Oh, because a five you. on four. Haven looking for anyone, but that actually does not identify All where right. he came from. Dive. Hmm. <laughs> He's just been hit with the rolling thunder from his teammate. Mito's like, well, don't worry. I'll push forward. He's going to fall to Appa. She's done some good work here and nearly lines up a double kill. Fortunately, illusion offset by just a couple of pixels. It's just down to clutch here in the final round and a half. It's going to be Luke to shut it down. 11-1. Yeah, certainly not the uh, the perfect 12-0. 
pry open their minds. Pretty darn close. The weakness. So, yeah. Okay, here we are. We, we flip sides defensively. Maybe St. Rose is able to bring something more to the table. Be able to control this, but you have, have a, a lot of... Do you yeah, really believe me. that? Yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the believer... Like, I believe in that as much as I still love Santa, okay? It's not as often anymore, but in case, you know... But, you know, every once in a while, you're like, oh, yeah. you know... I, I mean, it's a Santa. chance. There's a chance. Like, yeah. the kid in me... Look, your 30s are about... Going back to being what you were as a child. So yes, I truly believe that there is a percentage of chance for for Saint Rose. To I believe that. Uh, I'm down. with you there. See, yeah, I'm with you there. It, is it a high percentage? Are we above fifty? I, that's debatable. <laughs> Probably not. But hey, listen, I'm willing to uh, suspend my disbelief. Oh, but Arx, looking to uh, shut my belief down and stop it in its tracks. VBSU. They'll be finding themselves with the man advantage. That was some significant damage done on a couple of these players, all things considered. Not in the worst spot or St. Rose. The bomb's all the way back to their spawn. It is. It has just moved all the way around this map. They went to C. They started in B, went over to A, flexed on them, escaped, went to C. Just, and then they made the plants. That's, oh my gosh. Uh, style points, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Oh, and this read, that fault line somehow perfectly placed. And it's just, it's just too good. RX with the treble kill. 12 to 1. Match point. Well, we go to match points inside the first 14. Can't quite do it too cleanly, but they are looking at maybe taking advantage of just everything. If there was a, a, a pedometer on this one to be able to get you your steps in, that is exactly what the Lakers were finding in that rotation all the way through every site. It was basically Mr. Worldwide out there, seeing what still existed, where they could go, and they just were able to hit every single mark. So 12-1, maybe 13-1. It's only just begun, but it's about to end. Spike down. Oh, maybe not. Cool ball. There we go. Rx is just, he's literally just not stopping. He does, <laughs> he does, he's unbound DS key. It's literally not it's bound. W. There's only W's. <laughs> that's the only way to go. And that's all GVSU are taking right now. Spike the plant planted. coming forward. 4v4, but I'm having trouble with the whole hope thing at this moment. But Shinapa, though, maybe going to bring this back. The defense of the site. It's pretty easy from this mid position, though. Yeah, and the Bearson onto the scene. You've been, you have one guiding light in your back pocket, but Loof, oh, they are gonna just come up in their caboose. A nice blind fire from Dark Cover. Loof, they have at least one in front of them, and that is gonna be done. Bido sends an exclamation point into the situation. 13 1. The Lakers dominant over. The likes of St. Rose. I mean, that was that was anything but close. And it felt like they just continued to roll power weapons. You said how many were bots of those ops? Four or more? Four plus? <laughs> yeah, oh there was gosh. there was four ops purchased at one point in the final round oh, of the man. first half. And and I think that, that the fact that that is the case kind of tells the story of uh, that map. Uh, you know, I guess the only good thing for the College of St. Rose is that that wasn't their map pick. <laughs> they're yep. headed to ascent which you know maybe could be a little bit better and i'm, I'm saying that with as much hope and uh maybe a prayer <laughs> as well uh because man i'll just say rose they're gonna need it well we are gonna be taking a very short break as we get ready for the next map in our best of three tonight ecac week two action between saint rose and gvsu will return right after this
that, that's why we're here, right? This is why every, a lot of people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we replicate what you guys are doing? How do we, you know, how do they do what you guys are doing to a degree? Or why are you guys doing what you're doing to a degree? But you know, to kind of, I think, focus in then a little bit more, I, I want to talk about gameplay a little bit before we jump into to business and, and all of the other stuff, you know, Jensen, this one, this one's for you, right? I want to talk a little bit about this because to, to someone like me, who's, you know, who's traditionally a League of Legends fan and all that, I know that you've been a coach that's been, you know, all over the world. You've worked with a lot of different professional teams and different regions. Um, my, my question, I, 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 I really want, I think a lot of people want to know, how did you end up at Maryville and, and why North, like a North American collegiate college, what was the draw or what, what brought you here? How did you get to this point? Um, when I first came to NA, I worked with the models, uh, with the academy team, and I realized that there's no cultural challenges that exist in, that's very unique to NA and esports, right? Where there's this very interesting intersection, uh, because in, unlike traditional sports and esports, uh, players, they don't start training with under a structure or, or a system or a coach, uh, from a very early age, which is what, which is what happens if you want to pick up any other sport right like you start going to community events or whatsoever and then you start developing your skills and your literacy of the game from a, from the age of six or seven and you're very used to working in a team environment a coaching environment but in esports and for league of legends a lot of times uh players they go to a they, they go up they climb the ranks in solo queue where everything is basically self-taught and then all of a sudden they need to be placed into a team environment and I realized that this is something that the Asian teams got right, where they had this these B teams, this, they have the B houses in Korea and Taiwan. Um, you would spend almost close to a year just being a understudy or a training partner for the team before you even join an academy team in the first place. And uh, in China, they have like these massive uh, B team systems with like lots of players in them. The moment you hit a certain rank on the ladder, they fly you in. Uh, you are then boot camping for a month there at the facility, and depending on how well you do, uh, they then decide whether to retain you on as a training uh, partner or as a trainee in the first place. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for map number two with tonight's action here on Esports U. I'm Hell Monkey Man in the booth alongside Vincent and Vincent. We have another map. Hopefully, this one, because it is the pick for St. Rose, is going to be a little bit bigger, badder, stronger. We're going to be heading over to Ascent. I don't think that GVSU has ever played on Ascent, maybe. Never. No, uh, you know, it's, uh. it's a little known map. Most teams don't play it very often. In fact, I'd say it's maybe the first time I've I've even casted this map. So, True. um, definitely possible. But yeah. after that performance on map one, it's gonna be maybe a little bit unlikely. I, I do think that there's a significant possibility that Saint Rose are gonna show us a lot better showing. Hmm. That being said, it's not a pretty. It's not a very large margin to be better than what we were seeing in that first map. And Listen, if that sounds harsh, I'm sorry, but man, GVSU, they just dominated. Yeah, they were not afraid of not just diving forward and having an aggressive lateral line of everyone kind of peeking out from positions like garage or even into sewers. I mean, you've seen the blast pack to op entry of illusion trying to just be able to pop heads from distance, but they were also going straight into spawn. Something like that has to be controlled. And they also did the worldwide stomp all the way around three points. Well, now <laughs> you only have two points and it's going to be a matter of can they flex from mid market over into A or to B? Uh, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, big movement when it comes to maybe some KO play on here, and I do love myself a bit of Cypher play, which we're actually having a change of roles. Illusion is going from that raise over to the Cypher, so we're going to have a bit of double Sentinel on the attacking half for the Lakers. Yeah, I think that's uh, going to be interesting, to say the least. Uh, mm. And, I mean, in fairness, it is technically double Sentinel, but eh, to be fair, when you're, when you're working with the, uh, yeah. the chamber, it's like... Eh, is it really a sentinel? Yes, like a half. Yeah, yeah, sort of, sort of half and half. I, I'm with you there. Um, yeah. but but the real interesting point that I want to make is uh, Yoru, Pito picking that one up. I'm gonna be interested mm -hmm. to see kind of how that goes. And then on the other side of things, I like that Andre has been put into a role that maybe they can be a little bit more effective with the fragging because Andre had some really good moments back on on Haven. Um sort of like some ifs, right? One or two kills go their way, and suddenly there's some big clutches. 
maybe with the uh, with the more fragging potential that a duelist has, that mm-hmm. Reyna can give them the opportunity to step up that that little bit more. And they did have that uh, a capability because I think they were floating on that fade before, and they had that chance for a big. I think it was almost a four K at that moment where the, everyone was progressing into their spawn side. So I want to see how they can utilize Reyna onto that uh, that lovely duelist. She's able to get such great value, especially now that we've had kind of the change ups when it comes to flashes into these uh, these changing patches, and the leer can be a little bit more effective, a little bit faster. So uh, get to see that happening, Andre uh, DJK. She's been able to move over to that KO, which is this basically the no fun police. You get a uh, whole parade up on, uh, behind that robot, and everything just gets shut down. Especially because we got a chamber on each side. Cobalt's gonna get the heck out of dodge early. Doesn't want to deal with the paranoia. Yeah, that zero point can be a very effective strategy against the uh, likes of uh, what we see right here from our eggs. Uh, that is uh, very, very useful in the pistol round to pick up that headhunter. But hit with a zero point, suddenly you got nothing but the classic to work with. Some rotations in from B, cross mid, and back towards A as here comes the fragment. Teleport's ready. Gonna stall things out, and Cobal interested some rotations the shot gonna have to swap back over an onslaught of players as they all move in illusion gonna take the victory is now csr pushed back disadvantage down by a player you know, they, that's got to feel very scary. All of a sudden, you threaten one, and then their entire gang of friends shows up just around the archway. Now everyone's starting to do the exact same thing here. Luffy's able to get rid of Clutch. But that's Appa. She finds Beto from behind. You were talking about that Yoru play. Now that they've kind of changed up who's going to be main operator, Andre. Whoa, that's Arax. He's able to put one straight down from distance. Good Headshot, and as soon as they find first contact, they're just ruining their day one step at a time. GVSU, their attack, they have very clever about it. They went for the early feeds to get those old orbs, and they're, pr they're prioritizing who they're trying to be able to give them to. And this is all about the trade and the duel, and it's just not going to happen. Illusion, Frenzy, superiority, my favorite gun. Favorite gun. A big fan of the Frenzy you are? Yeah, massive. All right. Like, I, I, I can, it's one of my I favorites. Can... I can roll with some frenzy sometimes. I'm, I'm all right. I mean, what's, better? what's that? What's better? What's better than the frenzy? Come on. I mean, we've already discussed it. That's that's a judge or a bucket. I mean, okay. But yeah, I, I understand. Not in the same yeah. category. I, I get mm. you. Okay. I, I'm I'm on, I'm on board. All right, we're still friends. It's okay. GVSU. We'll see if they are uh, going to be friends at the end of this one with CSR because right now. Yes, our wait, illusion. Why can't <laughs> I don't even illusion? I'm not even like. Come on, dude. Why are wh how are you not able to put it up there? Oh, a little bit too high. There's a distance factor, and they don't have the height. Got to join the NBA, really grow that extra foot. See if they can be able to dunk that camera onto the top the top bricks. But all of a sudden, uh, it is St. Rose. Here's the doors coming down, but the bomb is actually on site B, which has been broken. Good distance Ooh. illusion. They couldn't get the camera sights, but they could be able to get them that one down iron sights. And they're looking pretty good as they, again, limit this to just one remaining. And that's Appa, and she's got a long distance to trek. Look at this weird lurk happening just outside. Actually, right here. Well, that's, uh, that's one of those moments where Appa's like, all right, all right, I'm, I'm rotating in. Why is he there? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that was the immediate response. At least that's what I'm imagining. Uh, you can let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, Vincent Cass on Twitter, but regardless, CSR putting themselves uh, into a position where, based on their investments in the last round, they're really not in a position to buy back up. And I, you know, I can understand the argument, but I'm not a fan of it for CSR. I would have liked to see them maybe manage this money a little bit better and get some actual rifles instead. I mean, they're on the Stinger Bite, which can be good, but it's hard when you're working with a bunch of rifles on the other side of it. The dive is already out on the site, getting a double kill as quickly and as easily as you like. They are, they are taking seriously the ability to kind of try out new roles, and while they've got the chance to do so, because Dive was on the Omen before, and now they've been able to find a good bit of value coming in on that jet. Bido traded right around, found themselves a clutch. And yeah, this, this is kind of... Uh, 
pertaining to the identity, I guess, of each of your players as they really get to kind of flex into maybe agents that they're not readily using. But the, maybe this is also comfort picks when you go between different maps, between Haven as well as Ascent. So far, so good for GVSU. They let one round drop on that Haven map. And so far, it's looking more of the same to the opening perdition that was basically a failing war of attrition for the side of St. Rose. They got to be able to find some value, especially into this gun round. Well, we see if that's going to be the case here. Andre, we talked about their fragging power early on. Now Can't has found that. an opening pick, something that has not been it. very consistent for St. Rose. Illusion. Well, this is all about timing, and I don't know that Clutch is going to be prepared. Not in the slightest. <laughs> that was an interesting position, to say the least, because they were around two trap wires. Cobalt actually does find a Rax. And then Bido will be able to find Appa. She's creeping around into that cubby. And near side over to Catwalk. Andre waiting very tightly, but you actually get the teleport that's on top oh, of the box. No. If they don't look behind him, this is going to see them walk straight out. But Luf is not looking at him. So this dark cover is just a weird situation. They're in a great position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last player standing. Oh, oh my goodness, Luf, what a great adjustment there on the Cobalt. That's going to be essentially the guarantee of this round. DJK has to go for the 1v3 now to, to have any chance of victory. But to talk about that for just a moment, really great work from Luf just because of the fact that the paranoia goes forward and that, that paranoia, you're not able to hear it effectively. And so that actually covers up the shrouded steps. So... Really, uh, I mean, it's basic play. Don't get me wrong. We have seen it before, but it's just really solid fundamentals. I mean, hey, I'm going to be using that when I go into my bronze lobbies. Okay. Like, hey, I appreciate that. Show me the goods. Let me be able to get more of that. I mean, of course, it, it'll work. <laughs> yeah, it will. Yeah. I mean, at least the first time. Maybe not the second time. But see, that's what's great. You have that conditioning. Now that you've been able to present that to them, now they're like, okay, wait, I shouldn't step out. Let me look on this box. And then they'll be right behind you. Because they'll, mm -hmm. all right, let me, it's, it's all about solving this puzzle one check at a time. Dive has implemented the blade storm. So lightning and thunder about to crash forward as they're going to be putting knives and skulls. They're nearby into heaven. And they're actually looking for a couple that are going towards garden. That is one kill already. Dive finds another onto clutch. They're covering this distance into the spawn side, but they're also able to break some glass. Oh, Cobalt with a great challenge. And they'll be able to at least limit this down to a 2v3. A very winnable round here for St. Rose. They're on the comeback trail. Looking to get their first of these rounds. Zero point. Luke doesn't want to give away the positioning, but you got to hit the shots if that's the plan. And Rx oh. missing as well. It's Cobalt on the triple kill. And there is round number one for CSR. This was all they got on the first map. It seems that this might be different. Not only the victory here, but a thrifty one at that. They get a thrifty. They actually are able to buy up and upgrade some guns into three of their players' hands. That was a very, very fortuitous round. And it was bought off of the, a bit of aggression as you actually had Dive go into heaven, really make those early challenges, which I thought was going to open up some room. But good on Cobalt hitting their shots when they have that contact going towards ramps. So... College of St. Rose. They are anything but out of this. They just have to be able to find another. Uh, this is still a couple of rounds you in the back pocket play, of GBSU where they're not ex exactly affected by the economy, especially as you do have Tour de Force coming out. Dive puts down a good smoke. They're just trying to dominate through this as they elevate over the archway and Cobalt waiting. To be and there's a tag. Maybe one more. Camera comes out. They're able to get around the Tour de Force, but they don't have the lineup. But now... All the intel will be coming straight back to GBSU. Now you got the nice usage there. Cage triggered. The neural theft for illusion. Putting down the cyber cages to buy some space and time. Of course, trying desperately to claw back some of that area of effect to Ampa. Not only spawn. using the ultimate, but also the rifle. Down to dive alongside Luf, who are in wildly variant positions. Somehow. <laughs> Loof lurk in towards through garden and well, Andre's about to find dive free of charge. Sword market. Loof now from the shadows, technically available, so as crazy it was as it would be, this is not 
not unwinnable. And they immediately cancel. I was waiting for the From the Shadows movement. They're going to be able to get that plant down. Two are coming from heaven, and Luf has to answer in kind immediately. Paranoia comes out. It's going to slow them down. They're going to be looking for numbers game, but it's a bit of a delay, though. You do have the Leer, but they drop away. Dark cover. It's all about cat and mouse, and now they're getting surrounded. It's from behind, and they're going to fire straight through. That cow can only cover you so much. But that's CSR, St. Rose. They get their second one already looking oodles 100% better than they were on their previous map. Yeah, and not only did they pick up a second round, and that is double the rounds that they picked up on that first map, but it's back-to-back -back rounds as well. There's mm -hmm. so much that they get out of that. They build their economy. They set themselves up for some success. They apply pressure to the opposition. All of that is fantastic, and we're going to have to see more. You know, I'm I'm tentatively uh, positive here for CSR. <laughs> They're going to have to give me more to convince me, but I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. I can tell you've been hurt you've hurt before. I, we'll I have. Trust issue Listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after the fact, but we're going to immediately see the paranoia come in oh. and Andre drop to the ground. So maybe a little bit more. You do have the Hunter's Fury. They're just trying to shut down those early lanes, but early is dive as they are unafraid, often as they have been, to be able to get straight into the fray. From distance, dive trying to be able to recoil. You have <laughs> more. They said, bye. I'm out. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh man, I just I love the the fate or just walking through the <laughs> just smoke. In front. Yeah, like just a little bit of a hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> love it. Ooh. Nothing fake about that flash though. This is DJ K forced back. Her and Oppa left in the lone play to try and retake, but two v four wasn't going to be particularly winnable and not at that range either. Yeah, DVSU came, I mean, so when you see those kinds of executions off of speed, you have so many, so much of this game that's about, one, how can you execute off of uh, each other when it comes to utility, as well as just getting onto site, and two, then how it becomes kind of a, a method to the madness as well as a uh, chess game. You go either with timing, or you just say, let's go in, it's Call of Duty, baby, we're just going to be able to hop, skip, jump, and slide into position. Using that paranoia from that position gets rid of anyone from that corner you can slide i, I don't know not, that. well i mean neon can right? that's true that's fair yeah that's, that's yeah. a fair point she's not here though no not quite not uh, andre gonna be dispatching with one player not allowing them to have any further impact in this round gvsu down by one but it's still a sight take it is a little bit of a tough strategy to deal with oppa and on the site down and out as she's fallen so much to deal with. Are they gonna? I was about to say, DJ still there, still alive and kicking. Eventually gonna go down though. Two v three now. CSR looks to play retake, but illusion on the flank has shut that down as quickly as it even was a possibility. <laughs> they put that camera. I don't think they wanted that spot. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. They were aiming for the ridge going into marketplace. This becomes a very little amount of HP situation. Three K for illusion. And Skobal finds the floor, having to deal with just one in front of him and the other one split. But smoke play going on the site right then was so key because they were able to drop the two smokes off of that jet and allow them to just hold the door control. And then you had uh, you had Loof just constantly jumping there. All right, I've got my dark covers. When can I be able to TP around oh, this and get through them? And that just it, it was it was basically a juke. This is a, it was a kitten to football and just kind of lost their ankles on it. So two six. You got a couple in a row, but now it's looking more familiar from the side of GVSU. Vintage Adrian Peterson there is what I'm, what I'm hearing from you. Fair enough, GVSU. They have certainly been doing some great work, of course. Ahead. CSR, CSR looking to stop that here and now. Butch has found some information via the recon bolt. Oh, man. That's, that's a rough one. Bad situation is... Lampa's going to at least go one for one, but Andre, the overheal available to make this maybe a little bit more possible. The Leer is still alive on three. Nicely done. Dive, though, continues to find success. Oh, boy. That was an immediate pop. You see this hard angle uphold by Illusion. Oh, but then they're... 
defending it well from heaven dive is giving them a chance to rotate right around they go into garden actually no they go for the plan behind Ginny, and they've actually been able to drop down they have that empress out instant healing could occur but it's gonna be just a tiny sliver outside on backside that gives them that angle to find Andre peeking. So this becomes another three in a row. You start with four, you get three after you stumble a couple times. And the Lakers look like they're right back in proper form. I, I, want, I want to talk to Illusion later about these positions and placements for stuff. <laughs> they're just putting wires. Uh, <laughs> look at this. What, what is that? It's uh, creative is what that yeah. is. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. There's another creative version of it. Uh, I, I do love it. I do hope we get maybe get to talk to Illusion. Don't know who we'll be getting to talk to. Um, potentially for GVSU. Of course, they're going to have to close out this game before that can happen. So they've looked pretty darn good. Andre once again looking to stop that, though. Near clutch in the last round. Goes back for more after the dismiss. Going to be caught out in the open. DJK. Oh, man. Just exposed via the camera. And it's all going downhill from there. As soon as you have seen there, those walls are paper thin. You could throw just a pebble. And, I mean, well, maybe with a little bit of extra arm strength. But it still will be able to strike you eventually, especially if it comes out with a bit of gunpowder behind it. Clutch! Good, but not if they are unable to realize that the blade storm is moving through with thunderous applause dive is able to get an eighth round through the first 10 gvsu continuing to dominate the operator still in the hands of illusion who was a fan of it last time when they were on raise a little bit less extra movement uh, available to them this time around with no blast packs but they've been key for finding those good intel peaks especially on the one we just saw in the previous round yeah, and it's a little bit crazy considering that this is the attack side. I mean, typically you would expect the Sentinel to be a lot more effective on the defense, but has found a lot of success on the offense as well. Fresh in here. Dialed up. Dive. Not aware of Andre. Might be swinging into a bit of a problem as Cobalt taking that first duel as well. Andre finally going to get the chance. <laughs> he was so patient. He deserved it. Really was. They just watch him like, uh, 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 and then finally step out and they're like, uh, uh, goodbye. All right, thanks for the dance. I got to. It's dinner and a show, and so that'll be two now. No, and another as Andre is just winning these gunfights, these immediate targets as soon as I can get them. DJK realizes that Loof overstepped them so they're having to watch out for backside dark cover will allow them to continue to press up all the way into spawn side so this is a weird dance been played but bomb is under control uh outside of site a look at b do uh no seeing this no no, no uh, bomb sorry no, no bomb. all right it's well, just a prank bro it was it was spike unfortunately for luke spike recovered temporarily for a moment but it's instantly re-recovered now with the eight crash set up you know, oh, gonna get away with it now taking that gate crash and gonna be able to find the kill as well. DJK is down. It's 1v1. And that's it. <laughs> I thought this was gonna set up into something a little bit more epic, but Andre is just another day at the office as Beto will fall. That was a very heads up play you still have the fragment that was pulsing in front of them they go and get the bomb but they still make sure hey you know what this is a plan for Don't next hear. being able to get onto site get out of there get the plan down but not expecting andre to already be in marketplace so they'll get a third round and st rose setting up for the 9-3 curse if they can be able to muster it maybe even an 8-4 at best yeah i mean 8-4 would be would be solid Last enough round, like let's not pretend fit. like like four rounds on the defense is is like good by any means, but it's not like awful. You definitely can come back from that. It's not as if there's a, there's all that much going against you. Of course, nine three. Maybe maybe some would prefer it. Curse and shenanigans and such. Maybe. Yeah, but, a little bit on the mental drain. Right? A little yeah. bit of resiliency. Yeah. I, I think I think that's a, a valid strategy. Yeah. Could be a Valorant strategy. Oh, you want huh. to play? Yeah. Yeah. Let's it, play. Yeah. See what you've done. That, it's, it's, it was terrible. I shouldn't have done that. But either way, we go to our final round here of the first half. And Andre has already stepped up into the corner. Going to be very wary because, hey, guess what? Wall bangs can happen. And Arax is able to find them with 
earnest effort. DJ K, she does get rid of Bido, who was trying to clutch up before. Another wall bang is going to be a headshot to get rid of Appa. She's put on the sidelines. It's a 3K in a hurry, and this was just a swift attack. Well executed. Yeah, talk about the uh, quick, sides. simple, easy frags to come away with round BVSU. It, it, when they come out with rounds like that, I just wonder how how CSR have, have even been able to shoot back. I I think I'm impressed with what CSR have been doing because I'll be I'll keep it a buck with you. If I'm in the server here, Smokey Man, I'm like I'm getting rolled. I have zero kills every time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, me, me too. Me seven, honestly. So, <laughs> um, I, I'm impressed with what CSR have been able to do. They look to continue to do that here now on the attack. What do they have on the purchase? Looks like a lot of utility, from what I can tell. One upgrade here on the Ghost. A little bit of armor there for DJK and everybody else. Purchased up what they can. Fake teleport. I don't really mind a lot of extra utility into this one because they're going to try and weaponize that KO as best they can to shut down what does exist for the side of GVSU. But Dive is already pushing forward, trying to be able to get some early kills, maybe to have this default be clumsily put aside. Oof. He's looking to get rid of more, and they're going to turn right around, find them in tiles. Hey, there's your shotgun play. There you go. They, they heard you talking, Vince, and they, they love you. They, they did, yeah. I mean, listen... Mm. It always feels good whenever a shorty comes out and you get a kill. It's, it's so satisfying. It's just pop, pop. Camera taken out. Easy win. Big Illusion. Done. Camera no longer in play, but don't worry. Your favorite, the frenzy. I mean, it depends. Because right now, everyone's starting to walk away, so they may not be able to find true value out of it. But Loof is looking to, uh, to to dupe more people, clutch better, turn at least one corner, check your corners, it's a 50-50 shot, they may press out together, oh goodness, will they be able to turn around, yes they do, they find another, and that will be 4-1 uh, right now with Appa, dangerous place, they're going to have to fight against a headhunter from distance, they find it, Arax just wasn't ready for the flurry of blows. 1v4, Appa, maybe. Long range, the double swing, though. Mm. Good play from GVSU. Grand Valley doing everything that they should have done there. Multiple players kicking the same angle. That's uh, some of that fundamental Valorant that we were kind of talking about. Mm. Double digits as well. Look at, uh, look at this. No force fight. I do like that CSR have elected to just save this. I think this is the right decision, you know? Give it your best shot. You're you're not going to be winning consistently with pistols anyway, not or sense. force wide weapons. Just try to make the save happen and go into the next round with confidence. Let's feel like they are going to try and make this as best of a gun round as they can possibly be. You do get a quick tag as a Rax puts DJK out of commission to still considering some movement, but it's a Rax that is still putting shots on fire. Straight outside of that archway. Dive hanging on to a tight angle. I think they're all the way out here in mid. It's a weird place to kind of do it. And they'll be able to get at least another Cobalt hits the ground. What oh, 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 oh. in the world? Wall bang straight to clutch. They knew they went hiding and they just decided to guess why not. <laughs> Dive is just going for the most outrageous shots there. What? Knife? Knife? They want the knife. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, but... Wait. Oh! <laughs> what? It's a horror movie, and I don't know what's happening. Appa is just like, all right, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get him. Apparently, what well, was? Who was it? It was Arax that walked forward like a Yoru decoy. Here. I, I'm wondering <laughs> if Arax DC. No, Did he? no, 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 no. <laughs> it appears. I mean, they still got a ping, so. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, the reason I say that is that sometimes when you disconnect and your yeah. and your W key has been held, you know, then, then you just keep moving forward on on the server. Um, but that, no, that's not what happened. I think he was just trying to be a Yoru decoy. It's a, it's a great cosplay, to be fair. It so is good on them. Yeah. Ooh. So far, this attack presents a little bit more opportunity, except until you get a couple of headshots, and that's Cobalt and DJK put out of commission. Right-click hero, Arax finally finds the ground. Loof, trying not to whiff. They have one long uh, stint of Ginny, and they have a bunch of- Very oppressive 
in that uh he should be he's so good my boy he, he was incredibly good in that era of the game so there's a reason that that got changed that's all i'm saying mm, okay well reasons as they are and my bias as it is you do actually have the hunter's fury looking to see if i can get any value in just these corridors but it's used wildly and open not even after uh uh, I guess starting to make any kind of these leans into sites, so it doesn't really get any value. So, so I, I usually call those um, fishing expeditions. Oh yeah, just yeah. to find where they might be. Yeah, just you're, see you're just going, radar. you're going fishing, trying to catch information or maybe a tag or two. Unfortunately, mm. no nibbles today. Yeah, none. Well, right now you actually have a rack, so it takes a more aggressive angle outside long tiles and everyone has actually rotated away djk she's still here kind of waiting for any kind of movement maybe catch people off guard and that's where a lot of the vision is but you're gonna start having this sight especially with the camera now gone and they're gonna say hey they these, moved away these trip wires so many Whoa. oh man hey. want some more okay neural tech here we go <laughs> oh, the audio cue not quite giving it away. It's Andre versus Five. Nice. Very nice indeed. Two bullets in the chamber. Oh. Against the chamber. And now the knife fight ensues. Oh. Andre, nicely done. I like that they committed. Yeah. I don't I don't like that dive interrupted though. That was a one on one. He they pulled out the knife. Andre pulled out the knife and they were going at each other. That was a duel. And then and then Dive just decided, no, I won in on it. But it's 12-5, and St. Rose has been able to find a little bit of extra uh, success here on Ascent. But we're all of a single round away, and uh, we're going to have what? From the Shadows, they're going to be able to just kind of upend this if they want to. A Empress, Orbital Strike. I want to see that Orbital Strike get utilized. Appa has not been able to really find a time to expend it. Cutting through. Veto. Oh, no nice way. shot. Well done. No need for the gate crash to get out of that one. Seems that things are just falling from bad to worse for CSR. 2v4. And that'll be it. <laughs> Dive, finding great value. Able to take this one. It's all business at the office. And GVSU dominant throughout a couple of maps. You go to Haven, you go to Ascent, and then we don't get to see the live changes on Pearl. It's a little bit sad here, Vincent. But St. Rose put up a fight in the midst of that uh, a second map. And honestly, they, they have some repetitions to really bring to the war room, tech the film. But for GVSU, it just seems like they were you know at the helm, controlling the pace of play, and just never let go. Yeah, and I mean, I, I gotta keep it keep it a buck. Like GVSU, they, they did a bit of trolling there in in a couple of the late rounds, and then they proceeded to almost still win the next round, even on the eco. It just kind of it felt like they were just a little bit better individually. And listen, sometimes that happens, especially in, in collegiate Valorant. Um, but I do think that College of Saint Rose, listen, now zero and two, but this is not the end of their season. There's a lot more to come. I don't think that they should feel disheartened here. There's a lot to learn from. They can watch things back and try to see where they went wrong. They had some, I think, really good moments. Their setups weren't that that, that bad. They played them pretty well. But like I said, when you're, the individual duels are just so one-sided um, as they were tonight, it, there's not a lot that your setups can do to deal with that. Yeah, and the early executions really did put them on a, uh, a foot forward. It was more of on their heels from the word go. And a couple of different times when they really played for the, for the more method and slowness and trying to pick their poisons, they were able to pick a less harmful one. As when we saw that a couple of times on Ascent. But ultimately, it is GVSU, the Lakers, that are able to swim right, have a ship right, and be able to set sail forward and forever. And they take this one as a dominating two Oh, and of course, I hope you guys were able to enjoy it. Vincent, it was so nice being able to catch with you for the first time. And we get to have some, at least some great fun uh, Collegiate Valorant tonight. Yeah, a whole lot of fun indeed. And well, congrats, like you said, to uh, Grand Valley State University for their dominant success. Of course, it's going to be it from us tonight. Uh, we'll uh, be saying goodbye. Make sure, though, to uh, 
Stick around for more action as the week moves on. Peace out. Have a good night. I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend. Somebody's going to have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is going to be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I, think it, I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And Oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're gonna interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's gonna rain, and the suit is new. So, oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and like writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's gonna be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You, Jen. All right, we're gonna interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm gonna ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right, great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue, I think, but I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. You were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's got his headphone in if we're close enough, but. Bless you. Because then tight. Because then tight again. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh my! Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm real. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty is Okay. Wow, it's not 10:30 yet. It's only like barely 10. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here, though, so we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not gonna ask what school you go to because unless you swapped hoodies, that seems pretty clear. No, nope. you know I got I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do. We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep calling him that. Yeah. His name is John, but it, my it, name is John Turbesi. Yeah, that's not John T. Turbo. Yeah, I get the message that I'm going to Nebraska where I met you. Oh, <laughs> that's so crazy. So context, if we're probably never gonna use this but I want to talk about it. Turbo and I met at a land like over a year ago. That's so Not crazy. Over. What is going on everybody and welcome back to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. I am Seb Delance, joined by a man I have interviewed probably well over 10 times. It's going to be my good friend Neb here from Bay State Overwatch team. Neb looked at me and before he started his last series and he said we are not dropping a map for the rest of the day and so far he has lived up to that title. But Neb, is there anybody you're thinking we've got to get them out of the way, we've got to take them down? Uh, no. No? Just looking at it, each fight's its own, every game, going into it, just taking it as it comes? Uh, I have the confidence right now that we're not going to drop a single map. I, I love Neb because he, not only is he confident, but he's correct. Bay State is one of the best Overwatch teams I've ever seen. So it's it's always good to hear from I love the confidence, and I love Bay State, so I hope they do a great job this weekend. So what qualifier, did you win a qualifier to get here? At large bid. We're looking at Rocket League, we're thinking high odds, low odds, what do, where do we think we're walking away? I think I think pretty high. I think we're, we're doing pretty good. Is there anybody that you're looking at, you're like, please do not let us go up against them unless we absolutely have to? I mean, really, everybody's good competition, so. And sorry, what was your name? Ethan. Ethan, Ethan from Mineral Area. Yep. Very exciting. Well, Ethan, good luck. Thank you. We'll see you soon. What kind of pass? A player pass? Let me get you a lanyard. No, you actually have to like tape it to your chest, like really awkwardly with masking tape. Okay. And it's gonna fall off. Yeah. Okay. It's, gonna, it's gonna be uncomfortable, I promise. That's a guarantee. Okay, cut that. I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, great. I'm great. Everything's good. Who do we interview? Who should we interview? I don't know. I'm just here. I need caffeine. Hey guys, KTAD here. Now, I've been told I need to step in to create like a buffer zone between some of the other hosts so that uh, the Valorant v Overwatch conflict may finally come to an end. But uh, between, uh, between you and me guys, I don't think they both realize that League's kind of already won that war. So, uh, so don't tell them. Don't tell them anything. But anyways... You guys already know why we're here, and if not, well, then you're in luck because we've got some of the best collegiate esports moments right here. Don't believe me? Well, that's okay, but, uh, you know, here's your proof. Let's get into it. 
To start us off, we have the combo of Matt and Festive as they execute a brilliant mid-air handoff to close out game two and tie up the series. Here in regulation, can Festive and Matt do it? Matt's there, puts it in, and we do get the go-ahead goal. Is it going to be enough to end it here in reg? 25 seconds left right here. About two minutes since our last goal. Fifth total in this one. Is this looking like a yeah, moderately... Feeling thirsty? Well, if you are, then crollo has got what you need with these sick plays on Pac-Man. Always guaranteed the stock goes for the side special into that. That would have been an insane way to end it. And now Crollo looking for oh! the fire under an edge guard. Slam dunk right there. Is they're able to finish them off? David? At number six, see if you can count the ultimates here because when the dust settles, there can be only one survivor. College, but I don't know what Kid University are thinking. Well, okay, they're thinking it. What is going on in this fight? My days. Two to the bomb, three to the tire, one to the self destruct, and it's we just get the team. It's a, it's a lone What baby is diva. happening? <laughs> no, okay. Hip is back there. You know what number play this is, right? Because J Rod knows. And let me tell you. He's definitely keeping count. But it's gonna be J Rod who strikes first again with a nice headshot onto Boss. Gonna start oh moving God. down into garage, and J Rod has just broached now through garage. Firefish Wall has been committed. Oh Lance oh tries to take a peek, but J Rod's there, finds Pigeon Mac. We're looking at potentially an ace. Boss is gonna do their. Trying to scrape together some sort of consolation prize. He's blinded, and they're. Oh my god, draw. What a teammate. He's given a. Oh no, J Rod around the corner looking for the ace. One shot on Austin, he finds the ace. Oh, Good guy, beautiful. draw. Gives it over. Love it. A man down, the overtime clock counting, and the ball on their half of the pitch. Yet somehow, Stonehill manages to make it work in this crazy match against Buena Vista. Out and push right back out again. This is a game of inches. Who can aggress first? And that's going to be it. Joker from the long shot along the field. Look at this from the back of board. Straight to Joker's feet. The touch is so delicate. In what was surely a game-changing play here, Nichols State's Law pulls out a tire that can only be described as illegal to put the nail in the coffin against Missouri Western. Already on the bright side, yeah, Nichols has enough time to come through. No, it gets three. No, it's not one. It's not two. It's not three. It is three eliminations with Law's rim tire there. Absolutely incredible. Able to pick up a fourth. Too shy for the team go right now. At number two, it's just a masterful display of edge guarding from Adelphi's Davian. Check it out. That roller is going to be a great opportunity to get in and pass, possibly even just through those arms. Goes for the down throw into forward or forward air, excuse me. A great combo. Going to find some great damage offside. And as that paint just racks up onto this mid -man, that is more and more damage basically for free. Davion, it's edge guard. Bottom stage. My goodness, what a stall. Beautiful edge guard. And England. And in our top play of this week, have you seen the movie Ratatouille? It has nothing to do with this play, but I think you'll see why we bring it up. Look at this rat, though. Look at this rat going up long, dude. Oh, he's got another. I mean, it's Ratatouille. They're chefing it up. I'm going to go find another. <laughs> Fozzie, quick trade, though. And they'll stall the push for now, but contain just a little bit here. we got a lot more work to be done. It's out of CT already. Right click, it's missed! Oh. Yeah, right click is huge going in this round. It's not gonna find anything but tumble. Oh, will Fozzie with a quick trade. Oh, and okay. stop. Okay, stop let the it. rat do it all. Oh, my. Phew. What a week and what a crazy set of matches we've been seeing so far. Now, with that said, we're just now passing the halfway point in the season. So that playoffs picture is definitely starting to shape up. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the ECAC action, then definitely give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or if you guys want to catch all of the matches live, you can find us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. 
Now, as always, a special shout out to our partners over at Esports U for expanding on our broadcast coverage. We definitely want to give them a special thank you for that. But, you know, that's it. That's the show. That's all we've got this week. Come back next week. Hopefully we've got a new host. Hopefully they've stopped bickering and all of that. But in any case, I've been KTAD. It's been a blast. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey, what's up? It's Honix back at it again to bring you the sickest clips from ECAC. But listen guys, here's the thing. Overwatch 2 still isn't out. And it's been so long that I understand what's happening in the Valorant clips now. I just, I don't know how I could have let this happen. Anyways, let's check out the action from week two of ECAC. First up, we've got Miko Baka, who's got a need for speed. Live, you can find us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. Hello, and welcome back to another ECAC Valorant Day. Alongside me is Rare Adam. I'm Visionary One. We're going to be bringing you a very hype matchup, of course, tonight in between SUNY Canton and Saginaw Valley State University. Rare, how are you doing today, man? Feeling pretty good. Uh, looking forward to casting some of this Valorant action here. Two of these teams starting off the season undefeated. To an extent, wasn't the easiest time for them in that week one, but looks like we're going to be set for some very competitive Valorant action today. Certainly are. I mean, we we talked about, of course, in the in the pre-show, we talked about, you know, these two teams coming in, very close games on both sides. Of course, uh, Saginaw Valley taking a 2-1 over their opponent and uh, SUNY Cannon actually getting taken to overtime in one of their games, but they were able to scrape out that 2-0. So these teams are looking pretty relatively balanced for sure. It's going to be very interesting to see, of course, when we get into the maps, how we're going to kind of break it down because it's a new season, Rare Adam. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of moving parts going on, maybe a lot of new teammates that they're trying to get adjusted to. So I'm just excited to see them bring that action to us. Yeah, and of course, with all the changes that the maps have been going through, you know, Pearl and Fracture getting changes in the last couple of patches, it can affect what these teams are looking to go for as well. Nothing too crazy in terms of agents, but of note, something we actually forgot to talk about when we were talking between ourselves, the blind changes are going to come through today as well. So Reyna Sky going to be a little bit more contested, potentially, especially with those changes. But of course, here's our map picks here, and we don't get to see either Pearl or Fracture, but some pretty standard maps across the board. Of course, I mean, Haven's my favorite personal map in the game. So SVSU, good job. I love having three sites. I love having that flexibility to kind of work around it. Ascent, obviously, always just a classic, uh, very just standard, you know, three lane map going through with those modern choke points at Garage and of course at A main as well. Then the decider being Icebox. Honestly, when I casted Valorant for ECAC last year, we didn't see a lot of Icebox. So I'm really excited to see what these two teams bring to it because I didn't even get to see a lot with the Icebox changes that happened around the finals time last season. Yeah, and Icebox, I think, especially brings different agents to the forefront as well. You know, some older agents, I want to say, like Sova and Sage, you get a little bit more priority on a map like Icebox just because of those choke points and how much vision can help you there. But of course, Haven and Ascent, you know, the classics that we always like to see in these sort of best of series. And very curious to see how they sort of adapt and what they can show on their map picks. Sometimes, you know, you pick a map and the other team is just really ready for it. They were going to pick that map instead and they can come through firing on all cylinders as well. That's for certain. I mean, and when you talk about those flash changes, you you forgot to mention KO as well. The KO right click has been nerfed to oblivion as well as the sky pop flash. So it's going to be a lot more team play oriented. I actually wouldn't mind seeing more breach on Haven like a lot of uh, you see APAC pro teams running because I feel like he's actually going to be a better flash agent than those two because you can get around those corners without exposing yourself. I feel like that's extremely important in that scenario. So we'll see how it ends up playing out, of course, with these brand new switches. But we're getting into Agent Select right now, Adam. And of course, on Haven, I, I have to say, I think Omen is the best controller, but we've seen we've seen people go with other picks. 
Yeah, I think that Sage is one that doesn't really show up as much there, of course. I'm going to be biased on the Sage main, but I mean, as every team has, usually going to see at least the Chamber, probably two coming through as well. Very curious to see what the Duelists come through, because we've seen Ray's Fade sort of rise up here, but Jets are locked in already, so a little bit different, maybe a little bit more towards what they're more comfortable with, maybe looking for some other options if you do want a secondary offer. Yeah, and I mean, it's always nice having a secondary offer when you do have three sites to cover. There's that long entrance, of course, on C, uh, that the attackers have to go through and then you have the long side of a as well on that split or if you're yay you know you peek short and just dare everybody to try to ego you so we're gonna see how that ends up working out but we are seeing that breach coming out with the changes i'm not really surprised by this because you know breach is going to remain consistent whereas everybody else got changed in that initiator space that has flashes right with ko with sky and then of course reina's blind has now been changed and then we're also sitting on um sky's hawks can't be shot anymore like yeah. it's there it's just massive massive changes up front we actually see astra coming out as a controller on the other side for sdsu so i'm definitely excited to see that as well getting into it with what we saw running breach on both sides are you surprised by that i'm not too surprised i feel like both of these teams being as evenly matched as we're sort of setting them up to be are imagining that we're, we might get 12 rounds on both sides we might be going to that overtime so you know having that uh ad adaptability to play it on both sides may be what they're looking for but very curious to see how it works out you know this is effectively a mirror match you know the omen versus the astra it's I feel like sometimes it just comes down to preference at that point between those agents so we'll have to see how this plays out but very curious to see how these two teams go I certainly am curious as well. And we're seeing the chamber buy, of course, on offense with that ghost. I saw that a ton in VCT, you know, with the with the headhunter bullets getting changed to 150 credits, that value proposition really isn't there as much as it used to be, only getting four shots instead of the six with the chamber trap, of course. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that ghost plays out instead of, of course, using those headhunter bullets. We're looking at a slight C split kind of sitting there at the start, probably some hard default action to get us going. And Rare Adam, we're getting right into it. Yeah, they don't want to get up too much in this early here. You can see the Omen just already sort of sitting in this garage, ready for maybe what they were expecting, but I think they expect as many people in this midsection here, just sort of overloading garage right now, but Radiate, happy to sit there in the Astra smoke. They didn't even have to set it themselves. They get to save their own smoke for later. Yeah, it's Cover definitely great out. to see. And then we get another one coming out, of course, in mid there to kind of cut off that B site. And this is just a very hard default coming out from FCSU right now. You're going to see them back off of this. They kind of dumped it out. But the fight coming in from Lil J. Going to be able to get one. And Falthion going to come from the side as well. Great trades coming out, though, from SVSU. And now you have to take your side because it's going to be spread out in between CB and A. And it's going to be a three-man take against that site. Yeah, you can see already rushing towards this A site chamber, just trying to anchor in case they might go for that rotate, but especially with about 40 seconds left, you got to start committing to a site. This is where you start to see all that util come through, and let's see how the defense comes down on this A site. Almost expected. I feel like, you know, A first round, that's one on this flank, remains. though. It's going to be two picked up Spike there by the a. Omen. It's just Slade here left. trying to hold the door, but get blasted out here. Be great pickup here for Suni. Yeah, SUNY can just did a really good job of retaking. They kind of just played their time. They didn't rush it, seeing that almost everybody went long. You know, those two, just be patient, wait for them to come around and try to get the plant down, and you get two free kills right there because the person from short isn't peeking the support. You have two on site. You honestly think you have that. It did not turn out that way, and we are going to see the full anti-eco buy coming out, except, of course, for the chamber, who's going to opt for the marshal, which basically acts like an op in round number two anyway, so very solid purchase coming out right here from SUNY C. And actually going to be a little bit more aggressive from Faithion there, going for the Bulldog. One of those sort of options that you can go for if you have enough credits but it is a little bit riskier if you do fall and be quite tough. But look at this full overload into this garage area here i think radiate sniffs this out let's see if we can find anything that's one picked up already in the astra smoke because they might have overexerted themselves here I mean, you're on pistols though, right? So you're trying to find that early pick, potentially get yourself a gun and do some damage. And when you're not able to find that, well then, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and back up a little bit here on the plate. They're ready for it though. Little Jay gonna get the counter strike, they get one, one looking for two, remaining. and Baltheon's gonna clean flawless. up everybody else in Garage. It's a flawless right now for SUNY Canton. And I mean, to be fair, that Bulldog play that you were talking about being aggressive, it pays off there. Also the Bulldog much better against the rifles that we're gonna be seeing from SVSU. So personally, I like the aggressive buy especially when it pays off in that matter exactly it pays off so i mean we can say yep worth it if it they die then like oh you know it might not have been the best choice but of course hindsight is 2020 i think just overloading that garage area and the early pick 
picked up by Radiate there, sort of teed them off, and it sort of set them up for failure, especially when you saw the heavy flanks coming through from a last round from Sunni Kent. And then, you know, it, we'll see if Second All Valley are able to adapt a little bit here and sort of play the map a little bit more. Maybe sniff out these roams a little bit, because you can already see Jet sprinting down a, a long here. Will they get spotted out? We'll find out. It's right there. Lil J just going to sit. He's being patient right now. There's the gun He's barrel, faster. and there is the pick. Of course, you have a Spectre in hand. You want to be aggressive. You want to get a gun out of their hands. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen there. The one thing I have noticed, though, at of FCSU so far is the fact that Breach has always been kind of lagging behind everybody, and they haven't really been able to combo any util to try to get plays going and into sight. We're going to kind of see that now, of course, Flash with him lurking with the Astra in shower. But here's a nice pick coming out from Ashi. He's going to be traded out immediately. It looks like sight is going to be overrun by SBSU. Yeah, but as you said, that Marshall acting like a little bit of an off there, taking it down. If that was the fate of 14 health, we're getting picked out, but Bring them back. see, finally getting that plant down. Let's see how they play this post plant here. Great flash Let's coming through, vision. but Stitch has a lot of control over the site right now. Jin is playing in hell, gonna be able to find another one 2v2 one on the map. Let's remain. see if they're able to find it. it's another pick. And finally, Saginaw Valley stopped the bleeding. Yeah, Saginaw Valley, but that's a lot of economic damage coming out, you know, for that basically that bonus round for of course suny c so i really like seeing what came out from them there i mean they tried to play the retake obviously you're going against rifles it's going to be a little bit more difficult at the end of the day though it's it's a real good round by sbsu to at, at least reclaim something but you're going to have a scuffed by here with a couple of sheriffs and you know of course chambers headhunter coming out and a couple of rifles we're going to see what they can kind of cobble together here versus a full purchase including Lil j on the op and we actually have the chamber rifling on defense so this is kind of an interesting Where setup yeah, it seems like maybe it's just a confidence thing at this point, but of course, if you've got the money for it, might as well go for the op full shields. The rich gang buy, as I like to call it, but once again, Radiate just sort of sitting in this garage. They're trying to overload it once again, this time sort of using that blast charge to get through, push the omen back, and gives them a little bit more control around the space. Yeah, and it's going to be space that is taken pretty effectively here, but you have Chamber on alert up C main. And there's nobody there. Nobody is pushing C to support this. Are they going to be able to find him? Because if they get on site, that's full and well. But right now, this chamber is just sitting there, just waiting diabolically. And finally, you see the spike rotating around. It's going to be most likely a pinch onto this cubby position here as they get caught out. Slade's actually going to pick off two. Ash is going to find one there. They find the position. They overrun site. And now it is a 4v2. Very solid play right now and a very solid take from SVSU, especially with the patience that was brought out with four of them basically just sitting in garage. Yeah, really well played. Radiant able to find their one there. Let's see if they can continue that. They do have the Omen Ultimate. Not sure if they want to try and pop that down. Not sure what the situation for it would be if they want to use that, but see the angles of that SVSU are holding here. Radiant's going to have to make some magic happen alongside this jet. It was just sort of holding Last their angles. Standing. Right, it's going to get picked off there, and now it is just the Jet versus the World. Looks like they're just going to save that off. Yeah, and I mean, that's the right call, of course. You, you, like you said, it's a rich man's buy right there with the full shields and the op. But I have to say, Ashton had two kills right there. Two headshots with, of course, that Sheriff coming out. So that's getting value from that. I said they were going to be on a scuffed buy. They had to make some plays. Well, they definitely made it happen. Yeah, really good of them to sort of wrap around, catch the chamber out on a little bit of a flank there. Flanking the flanker, as I like to call it, and... No well played to be able to find that pick that could have been really lethal coming through from Sunni C, but at the end of the day they tie it up and now you can look at the buys on the opposite side. Sunni C are the ones with the little scuffed buys. Yeah, but you know the Stinger just rest recently received yeah. a buff, so you know Stinger Gang unite. I know uh, I know Vanity was a big proponent of the Stinger even before it got buffed, and right now it is sitting kind of pretty. It is doing a little bit more damage long range. Now, it, a full rifle buy plus uh, plus Jesus over there uh, with, you know, just chilling out, really. I, I think he's going to yeah, re-pick up way. the op, but, and he does, actually. It was just kind of toasted on there. You're going to see him posted on top of B. We're going to see a huge stack on the A side and just another default coming out of SVSU. They have the gun advantage. They really don't have to be aggressive here. Yeah, you can see Jet Knives also popped, at least from the side of SVSU. There was a pick actually picked up by the Jet down mid, so good pick up there from Lil' J. We'll see if they're able to find another one here. This op is really going to be the crux in their side here. You've got to try and find this kill onto the Jet because she's going to be the one causing so many issues. Oh my goodness, the timing on that one. Just seems like they caught him off guard. Yeah, it certainly did. I mean, 
of all the places that you think Jet would lurk, right? Because, I mean, we're going to talk about this in just general text. But Jets like to be aggressive. They like to be in your face. They have that dash to get away, right? So the top of B main isn't exactly the one spot that you'd expect to see somebody up there. I would expect, a, you know, C long, A long kind of scenario. Using that B spot to be able to do something like that. And we have oh. Jesus coming up once again. Going to get a tag of a knife off, but not much else. And we're going to see because this A site has been completely overrun. Oh. There's some knives coming up. Oh, yeah, you're going to get one. The trade's coming up. Fakion with another Deagle headshot. You love to see it. We're going to see the retake come through. It's a 3v1 right now. And soon EC has done a great job with basically what we said was a scuffed buy. Yeah, the scuff buy is paying off for both of these sides in the end. You know, last round sort of a thrifty pickup with the triple sheriff, and now Ashton just wants to try and get the plant Ten down, but it's so left. difficult. They might just have to back out of this. And by the looks of it, Sunni C is going to be able to hold the line here on their scuffed buy. It's two rounds in, a, or two sort of scuffed buy rounds in a row that end up paying off That's for the thrifty team. That Still was. Yes. <laughs> 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 gotta get the guns <laughs> gotta make sure you get your guns <laughs> my man's goes down to one hp uh if he would have died there i think we would have had a pretty good chuckle and a, a moment potentially of the week fortunately for him he ends with one hp <laughs> and he's able to just be fine on that and we're kind of going back and forth of course svsu did take two rounds in a row so they're going to be able to purchase this round as well we're gonna see what that kind of brings and see if they kind of get off that default style they do have of course the the breach alt online right now they have that rolling thunder so i'm really interested to see if they're more aggressive and try to hit a site heavily versus what they've been doing with their kind of default offense and you can see this time lilajay going to the more default spot themselves going a long to try and look for it. oh pick up this time around though it's a little bit more aggressive coming through from svsu you can see them pushing the envelope a little bit more they've been better at pushing on the c site i feel oh, after that feet. one mishap in garage but now here comes the rolling thunder forces Sai all the way back Trying to execute on this site, but look at the timing through Garage. There's already two members there. Let's see if they can find it. There's four members stacked up here from the side of CBC. Oh, and SVSU is just sitting here waiting for one of them to finally nice peek in the fatal and retaliation. Oh my, this is gonna be epic as it comes through right now over the top we have so many people on site so many people rushing in off of that fade all just everyone, people stunned no there is just utility dumpage right now it is all over the place and the opening fight gonna go in favor of ashi gonna get one over spec but spec's gonna get the trade right on out as spec in that long position kind of just pinned off and we saw one in shower as well but Sitch and Slade gonna get two and Sitch gets the diffuser as well they retake from garage one swing ct and one holds made and that way you have a triple crossfire on the spike that it was an excellent play coming out from SVSU. i like seeing the aggression off the breach alt they able to capitalize on that play it was really messy you saw both fade alts getting used there the breach alt no one could see no one could shoot straight at the end of it it just sort of breaks down down at the end of it, SVS, you were able to hold the line. Really good positioning coming through from spec to sort of bait out everyone to look long. But after that, the execute from Garage was excellent, as you were saying. And now, once again, they've got the better buys. They've got the better inventories. But as we've seen, that isn't so secure in this game. Lurking up mid once again. They've been really good about starting these rounds default and positioning from there. I think that SVSU, on their buy rounds, they've been looking really good. It certainly looked great on the rifle rounds. It's just really going to come down to if they can continue, basically just every time they've attacked C through garage, they've been successful so far. Now, I understand it's only six rounds in, so we can't give them too much credit, but their attacks have looked a lot more cohesive. When we see them hit A, it's a little bit scrambly. You know, they get flanked once or twice and it just doesn't end up working out for them. Now we see them re-aggressing towards A right now, with the chamber kind of on alert here. This might just catch the breach out solo. If they do that, they're going to have a free site pretty much, except for a jet who also only has a sheriff. So this is looking pretty good right now. It's just going to come down to the timing of who's going to catch who at the right time. Yeah, you can see this jet is sort of in between B and A. It's going to be the first one on the site, but you might actually get the timing oh, here. Spec, though, not able to land the headshot. They get caught out. Use that Astra astral divide there to try and split up the site a little bit, get this spike down. But even then, this A site execute, as we've been saying, has been a little bit shaky for the side of SVSU every single time they've gone here. Certainly does, and you're going up against a jet ult, and that's always terrifying when the blade storm is out. Little J is on low health, however, and we're gonna see that fade come out as well. The rolling thunder, the retake attempt. Slade is just sitting here spraying everybody down. Slade with three. We're gonna see if he can find the last one here, and no, it's gonna be Ashton. The that was beautiful.
yeah, I think Slade actually dodged away from the Rolling Thunder, so they were still able to, you know, get that fire rate up, sh shredding through the side of Sunni C. And, you know, we said that the Thrifty have been a plenty this game, but finally, SESU are able to hold the line. And now there's going to be a buy evened out here, but now they're... Their economies are booming at this point. They can afford a gun next round. They can afford a gun after that. They're going to be good for most of the rest of this half. They can keep this play up. This, yeah, they're certainly going to be fine. If they win one more round, you can just chalk up the rest of the half to them having full buys. You it's want to play? really Let's unfortunate, play. however, that, that that Rolling Thunder, like, you, you have to clear. You have to clear out graffiti with that. You can't just leave that alone. As Lil J just gonna aggress all the way up C long and be like, hey, y'all are defaulting hard this entire time. All right, I'm just gonna walk up and take it for free. Gets a pick of their own. We're gonna see what they can do on this. A lot of aggression towards the C side. We have three players stacked on the site right now and two peeking out of main. That is something that I have not seen in a hot minute as this aggression is coming on strong. They're finally gonna retreat back out and kind of reset this, but we're already seeing a lot of people committed towards C on the SUNY C side as well. Yeah, a lot of utility used this there from the side of SESU to sort of get that space back for themselves. And that could end up biting them here. It will give them a little bit less of an execute, but you, they know where the side of SESU are. SUNY C doing a really good job of keeping this chamber sort of on alert towards A, but you know, Garage, C site, it's locked down by the side of SUNY C, and they're looking to try and get this game back in their control. And we're going to see if they can get that control. It's just going to be one of those things where it's a hard default still and you only have 35 seconds remaining. You have to make a move at some point. It's looking like B site may be the left. call, but B, of course, being the easiest site to retake here because you have entrances on both sides. A lot more to worry about as far as a B take goes. We're going to see the smokes coming out. It is going to be a B hit. We're going to see how this pays out. They do have the time to get the plant down, I believe. We're going to see if they have the time to actually hold it down, though, afterwards. And B is one of those sites that is super easy to take, not so easy to retake. Super easy to retake as well, sorry. You can see already remaining. bodies falling, Slade falls as well. Faithion's found three this round. One you can see remaining. Odd Man Rush now. Stitch actually going to find another one. It's the AWP versus the low health Astro. Will this pay out? Dropping down the stars. We'll see if Stitch is able to find it. No, Psy shoots well, and they're going to be able to find this difference. Yeah, it's a great job by Sai there to recognize that, hey, the first Astral Star is probably going to be on the bomb trying to pull me off of it. The second one in front used for the concuss. It doesn't fall through, and it's an easy pick over the side for the operator. Of course, seeing the shoulder with the way sightlines work in Valorant, there's almost no chance that you're getting shot unless it's just a lucky head shot through a wall at that point. So really good job by Sai just kind of realizing the space that was afforded to him after those two stars went down and really taking that space as well. We're going to see, of course, tied up 4-4, kind of what the plan is, because we talked about, of course, SVSU with that economic advantage, able to buy this round, most likely able to buy full next round as well. But SUNY C had a great round on the last round. We're going to see if they can pull it out, even though it's a pretty heavy committed buy once again for them. Yeah, this is definitely a round they need to get for themselves. I think the chamber will have another buy in the inventory there. Another bullet in the chamber, so to speak. But it's still going to be really costly if they aren't able to execute on this one. This is an integral round for Sunni C if they want to keep this half anywhere close to even. Finding a pick there, Blocking site. it might help them. It's a trade, but still four on four here. Moving towards the C site once again, as we've said, been very successful for the side of SDSU. They have been successful there. We're going to actually see the Rolling Thunder come through as well. Radiate does his best job just trying to get some damage down while he's concussed. We're going to see Ayashi come over the top right now, only with a Bulldog in hand. This is going to be a staunch retake attempt. We have three people in Garage right now. Are they just going to push the smoke? Are we going to see NA Valor come through? Because oh, that's what I'm curious about right now. <laughs> yeah, it's so tough pushing through that Astro smoke, especially since you can re-smoke that over and over. The Breach Utility is just going to keep them in there. Found one pick on the backside onto the chamber. Last thing coming through as well. Radiate just not able to get in onto this site. They're going to have to execute soon because, you know, their time's ticking down. They've got to find some kills here. They ought to back out here. And I don't mind this as much, especially since we talked about how fragile their economies are. Yeah, I mean, you get to save the op. You save two rifles. At the end of the day, that's all you really need to be successful in Valorant, right? You have those kind of... Don't want to relate it to Halo too much, but like that, those power weapons, right? You need to have the rifles to be able to win rounds most of the time, unless, you know... You just find a lucky corner or you know you're you're just excellent at ratting and unfortunately in the case of suny c of course they they do have that omen so you can get some of those rat plays off it's not going to happen right now of course with the full buys coming out once again like we're not going to see shorty plays coming out right now i can tell you that i 
hope not. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Sometimes they just pull out a shorty out of the back pocket and they say, hey, you know what? I need to find my one. I'm going to try and sit in my smoke and go for it. But as we said, I believe this should mean that SVSU have enough to just fly That's out for the response. rest of the half. So it's going to be challenging for the side of Sunni C to kind of grasp control back. They're going to just have to win against the heavy Econs from SVSU. And once again, this default strat working for them. But... You know, we like to use results-based analysis from time to time. Going towards A-Site might not be their best shot. It's definitely not as the op pick actually going to come through as well. The patience, the breach stun coming out. There's actually... Ooh. Oh, the flank! Little J going to be able to find one here. The breach coming into support. This is the pinch that we've been looking for. This is going to be an excellent chance right now for Little J and everybody else to make some plays. But Sitch going to get one, of course, from Sewers. We're going to see Faithion going over the top with that Fade Haunt. Going to find one. Remaining. Not find much else. Little J fights two and a wall bang. And Ashton is just lost in no man's land right now. The classic Ashton. Out, not able to get anything little j with a 4k off the immediate flank to mid window just flies through there does not care finds 4 it makes a difference for the suny c roster a is for attacker no it's a is for absolutely not for the side of svsu <laughs> they've been kind of stumped they're not really able to find anything they get picked off by the operator to start that off they're able to find the pick back on the spot onto si sorry believe they got a lot of damage down forced them to teleport out but at the end of it little j faith on, on a really good flank able to punish the side of svsu and we expected this game to be even i don't think we expected to be this even this has been back and forth it seems like neither of these teams can really get a handle Spike my down, goodness mid. insanely quick picks from little j once again make it three two oh, oh, that's actually got one as well oh here's faith dude they don't care they're just pushing me they're like you're gonna default this slow on us we're just gonna pinch you over and over Whoa. again the gun barrel is spotted little j's gonna fight one that round was over as soon as it started adam that was Last insane in incredibly quick play coming through from zuni cc they said you know what we're not waiting around let's go go button go 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 snapping their fingers pulling off the round 20 second round 30 second round at that really well played from zuni c changing up the tempo and i think that's something that you can sort of keep in the back pocket and svsu now maybe it's their turn to sort of change the tempo a little bit push hard for one of these sites We've said A site hasn't really been their best friend. C has been a little bit better, but you know, maybe if you just hard push A, you can overload that site and look for the win there. Pipe yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely looking for the overload here because they don't want to get flanked again. This at the end of the day, I think that's all it is. There's a double off trap. The off shot gonna not going to connect for little J. Uh, yes, that, that's basically a heat check. Of course, Faithion is going to find another one and throw that haunt down into sewer to kind of get an idea of where everyone is. And I'm pretty sure they pretty much know that A is stacked right now as we see Faithion going for the repeat here, actually just gonna sit in sewer, be a little bit patient. I thought they were I thought they were gonna heat check themselves with how they've been playing so far this half. I mean, I personally would have, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then again, these players, you know, just playing so patiently as well, despite their aggression. Saginaw Valley just gonna back off, take their time, go towards the tried and true. You see that chamber trademark in garage though, gotta be so careful of that because that'll tee anything off. Vision. Look towards B, actually, they found my trap. smoke it out, I think. So now this is sort of going to give up here. the play. Tour de Force going to find one already. It ultimately actually not going to land onto the chamber either. This position is so difficult for the side you of SKC. As soon as you see, just looking so good. Slade, though, finds a pick. Yeah, Slade's going to get one. We're going to see if they can pull this out. Little J already behind them. Uh, this, the, uh, Ooh, <laughs> uh, down the timing is beautiful for Little J right there. Two more sitting behind the Adderall. Of course, Lil' Jay's gonna push this. Lil' Jay don't care. Not able to find it. Faithion is gonna get the trade, however. So looking at a 2v1 scenario, it's gonna be Radiate 404, able to find one. We end the half at seven to five. A really good comeback from Sunny C there. They were able to sort of get their wits about them, sort of figure out what was going wrong, I think, on their defensive half there and just sort of flip a switch. Just go a little bit more aggressive, take the fight to SVSU as opposed to waiting for them to start it on their own terms. And I think that was the biggest difference there. We saw little Jay and Faith Young consistently finding these flanks. And you can already see they're playing a little bit more aggressive, opting for these frenzies as opposed to the ghosts here. They want to just rush in. They want to get the site and they want to plant as quickly as possible, it feels. That doesn't really surprise me with the aggression that they saw and the ability to just rush mid. They might feel like they could do it, of course, to SVSU on offense as well. So they're going to go with the frenzies. They're going to go with a little run and gun action. I definitely like it. And I mean, it, it just depends like on what fan you are, right? Like me personally, I believe in the classic right click and it lets me down every time. But hey, if you're goaded with the classic right click, I don't Bring mind classic down. buys at all here, especially on Haven when most of the fights you're going to be taking are going to be close. And we're talking about the rush. We already have three people 
in uh, i'm sorry in garage and they don't care they get slowed they continue to push look at Whoa. four people in here great shot by spec to open it up though yeah, this is just a little bit of an overload. Fapion's able to trade one back, but they're just going aggressive as we expected, going as quickly as possible, getting on this site. You can see already crested control here, but Slade able to find the pick on the Fapion there. It's an odd man push here from SVSU. Let's see if they're able to execute on it. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, two garage, two CT with the flash coming out as well. Ooh. Oh, Radiate, you don't want to TP right into the open. That is not good. Last Sal's going to clean up one. Ayashi's going to get one as well. Sitch finds one the answer right there with the ghost as well. Sai has one. It's going to be a 1v1 to finish it out. It's going to be Jesus coming through, able to find the pick. And SVSU going to win the pistol and set them up again for an anti-eco. It's, uh, it's just so close. It's just so close, you know? <laughs> yeah, like all of these rounds are coming down to the wire, and I mean, I think you can hear it in our voices too. We're just sort of, wow, it went that way in that sense. But you know, really well played from SVSU to retake that site. It was something that it almost felt like they had a little bit of trouble with, even on attack. They sort of planted it, then after they were getting re you know, retook on, retaken yeah. on, whatever it is at that point, <laughs> they they just struggled at that point. They sort of crumbled at that, that. But on this defensive side, able to retake their favorite site C, and it just seems like. If we were to split this map, we'd split it right down the middle of B site here in terms of what's working for each of these sides, because honestly, so close. It's so even at this point. We'll see if side of Sunni C are able to sort of recollect anything, take away this anti eco And yeah, we're going to see if Slade, unfortunately, doesn't find any of the shots. Lighting. We're going to see a hard B push here. Two Omen smokes Ooh. coming out. One. Oh, Spec oh. fights three. What? Break through the smoke. Oh, one spec. That's not legal, man. That's not legal. This is this is match day two of the ECAC league. You can't be doing that right now. It's <laughs> just goes with a Call of Duty swing around the corner. And says, man, I don't care. I'm getting me four. Yeah, spec column spot goes Vulcan mode and kills four of them. They're absolutely crazy coming through from the chamber. You know, spec was having a little bit of a down day, I feel as well. But you no, know, that round just flipping it all on its head, and now you've got yourself back tied up. You're going to be going up against this full buy once again. And we mentioned you know, Slade going for the Guardian, going for very aggressive, even more aggressive than the Bulldog, we can say, but wasn't able to find the shots. We'll see if they're able to sort of reassert themselves here. This is going to be very curious to see how this round goes, because if SVSU find this one as well, they really push forward their advantages once again. Yeah, and it comes down to look at this C stack that's coming out, and you have rifles, right? Like, this is one of the angles that you don't want to take. Ashen can actually push out and get a trade on site and gonna find a rifle as well. And immediately they're like, hey, we do not care about the pick on flank. We are instantly taking C. Y'all are gonna have to retake with Spectres. Good luck to you. We're gonna see after, of course, this comes out if it's going to work for them. But this is an excellent play coming out, of course, from SUNY C just to take site and kind of ignore what's happening behind them. Yeah, Ashen able to sort of trade up as well on their guns. They've got the Phantom now. See what they can do with that, because I think that's going to be really pivotal, especially in a world of Spectres and everything. You really value that Phantom. Oh, oh my goodness, LJ going to get sprayed down through the box as well. This retake has been excellent, but look at how much presence there is on long. There's so many smokes. There's so much crap you got to deal with in between. Slade just trying to cover for his teammate there. The one-way smoke's coming through as well. No one's really able to defuse for free. It's so difficult to try and fight this one through. Bolt's going everywhere. Trades back and forth, but the timing's starting to run out. Slade's sticking it, and Slade's going to find the defuse. Use great play from SVSU to stick it and win the round. I just, he, it, it's one of those scenarios where, and I, I know I've done it a million times too, so I'm not, I'm not, not guilty of this, right? But you have to be able to go ahead and sit down and understand that, hey, they still have their smokes alive. We cannot all push off site. Like we cannot just spray down and hope it's going to happen because you know, 75% of the time you'll get that spray down through smoke. No problem. And you know what? You, you'll get you'll get the kill. You'll get the round. But that 25% of the time that it happens, you basically give up a round for free. And I don't really think that feels good by any means. Yeah, it, it feels like a coin flip in a way, like a weighted coin, if you want to put it that way, where it, most of the time it works. But when it doesn't, it feels real bad. Oh, my goodness. You just got a bad shot. Jesus, just doing a great job. Oh, the dash Ooh. coming through with the Bucky Fabian. Going to find a pick there as well. Lil J is pushing without Bucky right now and finding value out of it. But it's going to be Jesus with three on the board. Sai's going to find a trade right here as well. We have Lil J picking up the spike and has a specter to their name, or I'm sorry, a stinger to their name at least. So they get to get rid of the Bucky. But it is going to be a 3v2. The retake coming in and all the agents right now that SBSU has still alive are just great for this retake. One you have Breach, you have remaining. Fade, you have so much util in your back pocket, and Slade's gonna find one. Oh, see. 
at the end of it, Spec just able to clean up the round once again. Side of SVSU feeling really confident on this defensive side. They haven't dropped a round yet. Four rounds in a row for themselves. And for the side of CNC, you've got to sort of question their execution a little bit there. It was very aggressive. I can see what they were going for. You know, the Bucky, this thing, and just trying to find any frags that they could. But at the end of the day, SVSU are just able to hold the line and now really pushing forward that economic advantage. Once again, this is a very similar situation to what we were talking about in the first half, where CNC were actually able to sort of bring it back in the second half of the half. Yeah, that's how that works. Uh, second, but, uh, I mean, technically correct is the best kind of correct, right? Exactly. But uh, SVSU this time, it feels as if they've got the momentum on their side. And you can see Tour de Force now pop. You've got the Breach Ultimate. You've got Jet Knives as well. So there's so many tools for them to sort of push forward their advantages. Good. We'll see if Sunni sees Chamber going to pop that as well. Very curious to see if they'll go Tour de Force a Force. Uh, tour de Force squared if, you, uh, yeah. if you're currently taking Calculus. Um, yeah, I mean, aggression towards B, of course, Little J has been the one to kind of quick start everything. He was the one who started pushing B on defense as well and pushing out to get some frags. So he's just going to be taking some map control there. Of course, B is kind of like the the, the no man's zone almost in Haven at times where nobody will really be sitting on it. So it's good map space to hold in case you do get a couple people picked off and have to go through. But nothing really done yet. Very hard default coming out from SUNY C. We're going to see what they can do and what they decide here. Honestly, Adam, I don't mind seeing this default from them, but at some point, somebody has to aggress. It seems as if they're sort of taking a page of SVSU's book in this and sort of slowing it down. There was a gun barrel spotted there, so they know at least one is on this B site. Oh, Spack, though, going to get peeked on. Little Jay able to find the head. Now on to site. Slade's in a rough spot here. There's a lot of members pulling through here. Little Jay, that's the timing on this. Actually going toward this B site. He's just able to trade one back. 30 seconds left. Uh, the trade is great, but we see everybody just filling into C right now, able to go ahead and take the site and overrun it. And this 4v4 typically favors the attackers, but uh, at this point, I can't doubt SVSU's <gasps> defense as Faithion ha might have the timing of the century. It's going to be on Slade. They're going to find the pick. You're going to see Ashton T down. try to come back through and get one back. It's not going to happen. They can't control oh, the Fade Prowler, not able to get around the corner and up. It's going to be a precarious position, especially with little j still holding mid control oh this is going to be so dangerous does little j catch the timing here oh absolutely he does soon you see looking like they're going to lock down around but sitch has something to say about that yeah it's going to be jesus once again trying to hold oh, this one with the round in his hand not going to get shot oh, down by a oh my goodness little j what are you doing there buddy Sitch is going to be able to probably save the rifle but you know when in rome go for the knife kill <laughs> Little, little J, I, I, that's a heat check. That's a million percent a heat check. I, I have nothing else to say about that. Five points. The just it. went like, you know what? We're going for it. Here's the knife. Let's see if we can get it in the face. I know we can buy next round. It's all good. He's got his blade storm, so he's actually going to end up saving here. But holy mother of God, little J just going in with a knife to the face. And unfortunately, that's why you don't bring a knife to a gunfight most of the time. Yeah, unless you've got five of them, which is exactly what Jesus is going to bring this time around. <laughs> yeah, Very right. curious to see how this round works out. Get and out finally, you know, it's soon you see able to find a kill on this attacking side. They've sort of bring broke through the mold. Yes, it was still a very messy round, I want to say. It wasn't the cleanest from them, but they're able to Where afford once I? again. Once again, you just got to get that momentum going, especially I feel against the team like SVSU. They really thrive off of momentum. And if you're able to break that with a couple round wins in a row, you might be able to continue to stack that up. And have to see how it goes. Both jets actually have their knives out. I know. I want to see some jet on jet violence here. We might actually catch it with both of them <gasps> looking at B right now. All right, here's Sitch. Uh, Sitch is going to get spotted by Little J here. They're going to back off, get the Astro utility out as well. Little J's done a good job of just kind of lurking up mid. And Little Ooh. J's actually going to get Jesus on the pick as well. So you're going to see that come down. The jet on jet violence actually does occur. Ends in a headshot with the beautiful blade storm knife. We're going to see them go for B right now. The dash through the Astro utility. Not checking C behind them, though. That's a little bit dangerous. Are they going to be able to catch a timing here? No, they're actually out they're gonna run out of all of this pressure and spec catches it are you kidding me yeah, spec, spec has a chance here spec has really good timing Sai gonna be able to find a kill on his stitch as well though did he see Headshot. really looking for this one but little j finding another left. kill one for themselves my goodness little j has been showing up the last couple of rounds and this time Sai forced way back to try and find ashton here actually ashton be the one trying to save the rifle but at this point five yeah. members strong you cannot say that to little j the j and little j stands for jesus by the way because he just made jesus 
is old bro. It's the nicest way you could have put that, honestly. Yeah, I <laughs> got a little bro. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that for sure. But little Jay just coming out, and we've seen him be the spearhead of the aggression there, but also kickstarting the aggression and then rotating back and kind of holding that map control just to be able to catch out the lurk. Of course, because Spec was in a great position on C long, saw them rotate to A, was slow walking it the entire way. If it wasn't for Little J rotating back and even looking that direction, that would have been a scuffed round with nobody knowing that of course, Spec was on that flank. So it's a really good job by Little J, not only to spearhead the aggression, but to also get out and cover the flank. It's really versatile and just really good strategy. And once again, Little J, the one aggressing here. And by the time they go, Ashton finally able to strike back. They find two in Garage. And all of a sudden, Sagno Valley, they've got themselves a very substantial advantage here very early on into this round. They certainly have that advantage. We're going to see if we have Fade popped up into Cubby on C long, of course, for Sunni C. We're going to see if that can potentially catch them, uh, you know, this uh, SVSU team out. I don't know if it's going to happen, though. Of course, this aggro is coming back to B that we've seen so much. Like, this B map control is so important, really, to the Sunny C attack. And Sai is actually going to find one on B as well as this gets smoked on here. Faithion just over in C long, looking for a chance. There's the breach stun coming out, actually going to hit spec. But they're going to rotate off of this. They're actually going to go... They go A, they're going to be rotating into one and a half players pretty much as Jet is just sitting there. We see Jesus just lurking right now Jesus on this is sewer. Ooh. Jesus has been the spearhead of the opposite way, but the shoulder peak catches them. This is so terrifying for the side of SDSU. Find a couple of picks early on. Now they're forced them back all the way off the site. And I think soon you see she get the plant down. Oh, counterfade all gonna come through. This is getting real dicey on A site once again. These teams hate One playing clean remaining. on A site. It's gonna be a kill picked up by Sai though, but three already falling SPSU. The only one who might be able to save it. Stitch gonna fall as well. Sai finds three. I just that's a great job by Sai, but honestly, I was thinking that that breach that breach all was going to come out. The Rolling Thunder to counter the fade counter all. <laughs> I guess you could say because it was a fade all followed by a counter fade all. And I was thinking, oh, certainly after they throw their own, they're going to aggress. You throw the Rolling Thunder down, you get a couple easy picks. But no, I mean honestly, Sunny C just does a great job of holding down sight just playing a little bit patient, playing their angles. They're able to find everybody and sweep it up. And look at the buy right now for SVSU. Four rounds in a row they popped off, and it's been four right back the other way for Sunni C. Yeah, this map has been so even, and honestly, just off the top, we said they might be going 12 rounds on each side. He's still gonna find a kill on the Faithion very early on there with the Stinger. Off Stinger, by the way. Yeah, this is delivering on all fronts, I feel. It's been such a close game going back and forth, momentum is nowhere in this game. There's no such thing as momentum, it feels, but now just executing really quickly onto this A site here. We said it was messy here last time. Let's see if they're able to do it this time around. It was much cleaner last round though, even with the presence of that fatal. So definitely feel a little bit better about this one going down. I'm still interested in seeing the fact that we've seen a chamber on rifle essentially the whole time minus the sort of force. It's been interesting and we do get we do get the rolling thunder as well, but we get a stun on the way back. Luckily, Sai is able to bail out of course, his breach there, as uh, Asashi, is this going to sit down Sai, still sitting in heaven, not really too threatened by any of the util that's being thrown. He's going to find that another one. There's standing. three. Actually, one Little Jay's going to fall down. Oh! Spec has a chance here. Spec clutches it. What? <laughs> Out of nowhere. Wasn't expecting Spec to be in heaven on that timing to find those two kills. We were all sort of focused Thrifty. on Sai down in hell, but... Out guns. of nowhere it feels, this chamber is able to pick up a rifle and able to turn this round around. And now, once again, 10 rounds apiece on each side. Sunni C, SVSU have been dead even throughout this game. Now both of them on full buys. You have to feel that eventually one okay. of these teams is going to break through. But every time we say that, it just goes back the other way. Not only was Spec able to get a rifle, he was able to get an operator for himself. So easy C long postings. We're gonna see maybe some chamber on chamber action right now. No, actually Sai's gonna go back towards mid instead of pushing that C long where he has the where he has of course his uh, his trademark set up. So we're gonna see what this is going to equate to here. Of course, a little aggression mid. We've seen this every round out of both teams for the most part here. Faith Young gonna go ahead and throw a prowler down there as well. Just to kind of scope out who could potentially be on B and is gonna be quite literally Sitch alone right now with Lil J and Pantheon pushing up. Gonna be sitting here on both sides of the smoke holding across. It's actually a fake smoke. 
And as you can see, B is totally free now. Just used it to down. get out and give themselves a chance to reposition. And we see the smokes coming in from the Omen. This is looking like a bona fide B hit. Yeah, but once again, as we mentioned, you know, if you're able to plant on B, it's so easy for the defenders to retake. You know, you've got three different angles that you can come from. And for that reason, it feels like they're playing it a lot slower. They don't want to execute quite yet. But look at this flank. Side, do you have the timing? Oh my goodness, you do. You find a kill onto Jesus. Little do they know there might be another flanker a miss, and this could be scary for Sci-Fi Peaks. Hey, he's going to be. <gasps> oh my God! The Slade planted. Slade, you didn't know what? Is he still okay? Is Slade still going to find the timing? Here is the question. Here's Spec with the opportunity with the op looking towards mid window, going to get picked off. Operator down. That's a lot of the firepower that we had on Sunni C, but Slade, the pick on one has the timing. Going to shoot off of course. Uh, his util trying to clear out that corner. There's a. Oh my, they are throwing the concuss there, throwing the, the basically the kitchen sink right now at his side. Can they find the pick is the question. Asashi gonna get one. Three still on site. Radiate gonna pick off one. It's gonna be a Last 1v1 with Slade standing. right now. Slade finds one. Time. Down to a 1v1. Don't know if he has time. I think Slade's no. just gonna back off of that one. Look how close this game is. The timings on everything. It's just splitting hairs at this point what is separating these two teams Sunni EC push themselves to 11 but and then you SVSU have enough money in the tank you gotta fear for them because I'm looking at these buys coming through they're gonna have at least three rifles but it's not gonna be very healthy rifles at that they're gonna be light shields on a couple of them and even then I see some stingers come out yeah this is gonna be tough for SVSU to hold the line here because especially pushing up against the wall now Soon as you get to 12, you've already guaranteed overtime. You just need that last push across the line. They're really forcing it here, it feels. Uh, they're definitely forcing it, but they do have enough to scrape together and buy and get rifles at least for the next round. I think that's vital. You can always play for 12 as we see Radiate. Get a peek over down Cover at the C site. Little J just having to back off entirely, Bring pushing the site extremely hard. Faithion, of course, it's been the wombo combo of Little J and Faithion with all the aggression. It's an instant C take, and we're going to have a 5v5 retake scenario against an eco. Yeah, you can see where Jesus has sort of set themselves. They're the lurker, in a sense, at the back of the train. But oh my goodness, the timing from Sai once again! He finds two, but it's traded back. It's a 3v3. Every single fight is even trades. Oh, and there's another one for Sage with the Stinger! Oh, 3v2 coming in. Rifles and hand for SVSU. The Astra all coming down as well. Oh. Little J gonna find one. one the stun enemy. misses. Little J Last finds two. Six standing. finds one. It's a 1v1 once again. 11 to 10 on the other Can side of the all. Can he hear it? He picks. Oh. Sai gets it. Sunni C gets the 12. Teleport's ready. My goodness, once again, just match point. By the slimmest of margins every single time. Stitch finds a miraculous stinger kill from range. Those are those buffs coming through once again. Finds the rifle, finds one. Just doesn't have enough. Doesn't have the timing available onto Sai. And Sai has just shown up in full force on this attacker half for Sunni C. Has the tour de force available. You can see the full buys now coming through. Bar the light shields on Jesus there. This is a round that SVSU have to win. They've got to win it cleanly as well. They need that extra money if they want to push this to overtime. But my goodness, it's been such a back and forth game. This has been absolutely insane to watch. I can't be more enthused that this is map one, the map one that we're getting in this best of three. Imagine what else is to come as Sai lurking that mid once again. There's an updraft, there's a dash. Lil J gonna get taken out. Faith on with the trade. Jesus and Spec gonna find two. Here's Jesus again on the backside of A, just waiting for this push, one on each side of him, one short, one long. We're gonna see what he can deal with here as the TP comes back. Faithion gonna find another one. Faithion has been so clutch this entire time for Sunni C. It's gonna be a 2v3 scenario. The plant coming down, there's a smoke up heaven, and here comes the fade ultimate to try to disrupt everything that they have going for them right now. A great flash as well from the breach. Gonna leave everybody pretty much destroyed. Oh, one enemy is, remaining. the tether out as well. Plus, Smet coming out and getting the wall bang. It's gonna be a 1v3 and Radiate has to do basically the best work of his life right here with them on the bomb. Oh. Just sticking it here. Really well played from Spec to clean that one up. You get to keep three rifles. That's what we were saying. They needed a very, very clean round here to make sure they've got enough in the bank for it's pivotal around and now around 24. You know, we predicted it off the top. You know, these teams are gonna go 12 rounds each side and we're getting a minimum of that here. If 
Second off, Ali, you're able to hold the line here. We go to overtime where, oh my goodness, who knows what overtime holds at this point. This has been absolutely thrilling. I, I have no idea because, like you said, these teams have been extremely momentum-based, right? Each putting together like a string of four wins and a string of three wins here and there. Overtime is just going to be who gets hot at the right time, and we're going to have to figure out who that is. Of course, the Tour de Force being popped on the end of Psy right here. Going to just be kind of lurking around, looking through that garage again. We're seeing a heavy default with a lot of aggression, of course, from who else but Lil J coming out with the blade storm looking to push the tempo on this a site there's two currently sitting on a though this might be a precarious position for him if he's not able to find one early and if you look at the alt econ as well if we want to put it that way if you see they've got the breach alt, they've got the fatal really only combat alts available for sbsu there's not as much utility in the tank it'd be challenging to see if they're able to retake as effectively because you see they can keep everyone off the site once they plant they've got you know the breach fade alt so it can so so many members out for such a long time have yet to execute though and this is halfway through the round and they have barely made a move now starting to move towards the say site and they're starting to move towards a but i think they took a little bit long too long as you see the chain is already coming back with the tour de force oh, on the side of sdsu but here is actually a little bit of friendly fire there on the breach stun doesn't seem to matter though there's a smoke on heaven we're going to see the execute coming through it's basically five people on site currently first soon you see the tether going to fall down as Two. well and asashi here's a little j just waiting waiting for the smoke to fall seeing if they can get anything we're going to see the breach util coming out as well trying to just stop the push from coming out of course out of the main, there's people sitting in heaven. Specs gonna find one from heaven. Whoa, oh, great flash, but no, no kills down off of it. Here's SBSU, they clean up. Just the quickest four kills you could possibly imagine on the retake. And it's gonna be SBSU. Uh, we are, in fact, everybody going to overtime. What the hell just happened on that site? It just turned on a dime there. The Switching fade sides. tether landed onto two overtime. members from the side of SBSU and Ashton's tether actually landed onto two members and they didn't peek off of it. It was worrisome for a little bit. Had they missed their opportunity, but then they go through the smoke, the blind coming through from Asahi just wasn't quite enough. Didn't land the shots and Faithion, who's been so true to their aim, misses that clutch shot and that just turns the round around. Once again, we are going to overtime. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a game one. What a game one, man. This is great. What a way to start, man. What a way to start. I mean, we're we're sitting here right now, right? And this is our first time casting together. And I couldn't ask for a more banger matchup. I'm not even going to lie. Like, what a great way to meet each other, right? Hey, yo, you want to cast this 12-12 overtime match with it just swinging left and right and all over the place? This is like a pendulum. I cannot believe that we're getting such a good matchup in this one. Of course, Sunni C and SBSU bringing the heat here. And we have a five stack towards C site right now oh. for SBSU on offense. And the Fade's going to find it. And we're just going to fight it out. Everybody's ego peaking. Stitch finds one. So does spec as well. Oh. Faithion just sitting in the corner going to find two. It's a 2v3 off the Stay rip inside. on this. It's going to be a great omen flash as well, but he doesn't push through the smoke. An opportunity miss potentially there in SVSU with a 3v2 with the spike down it was a five-man fault line to open up the round as well i just want to point that out they're all just looking at each other like do they know are they in our ears or something like that but my goodness the push forward just all aggression coming through so i believe they have the glass cannon op there so they've got to be incredibly careful but if anyone's gonna clutch this one out it has one to have to believe it has to be sign never mind jesus on the corner finds one finds two and svsu push themselves to map point Ah, SVSU on offense. Switching sides. Looking good, of course. Match I, point. I just, I still can't believe that's <laughs> the um the absolute mad lads. Five stack C, the first round of overtime, all get breach stunned, and it doesn't matter. They still take sight. That is, that that takes um, that takes a lot. I'm just gonna, I'm trying to keep this as PG as possible right now because yeah, it, it takes yeesh. miracle objects to be able to do that for sure. It's uh. It worked. You know what? If it works, it works. So you got your win, you got your round. And now you try and defend. And I think the second half of the defender half for SVSU was looking really clean as well for them to claw themselves back to the situation. So you've got to feel a little bit of worry here for Sunni C. But once again, you just need this one win. You just need to push it forward. And little J finding a pick on the spec is the way to do it. Yeah, little J spearheading that offense again. We're going to see a small rotate, of course, and then immediately they back off of this and start leaning towards the A site. But it seems like SBSU might have called their bluff. As you see, a lot of people navigating towards A site right now. You have Jet and Fade over there currently. We're going to see, of course, Aussie 
sitting down, kind of just waiting, waiting behind the chamber here, sigh. Bomb still hasn't been picked up either. I think Omen's finally gonna grab this. And we have Lil J just sitting there too. Jesus gonna find one, Ashton gonna find another. So all the A aggression is just called out by that fade and that jet. They're gonna see that nobody is going to be towards the suicide as well as they push up towards B. Lil J, look at the placement here. Look at where they've been able to find the flank from, but is the sniff down here? Does Ashton have the read on it? My goodness, Ashton's going to be able to it. find it. Patheon, though, going to trade it back to Fades. 30 seconds a left. A couple of kills, but once again, 3v2, odd man situation for us in EC. They've got to find the plant, but Slade is in the right place at the one right time. Remaining. Phantom moment almost Spike comes down, true as the see. 140 headshot. Not quite enough, and now it's Patheon against the world. 15 seconds. Oh, this is going to be one to get out of if you can. There's one. But you've got to find enough left. time. I don't think they have time to find the spike and plant. SVSU. Oh, especially with this flash. They're going to be able to hold the line. They do not have the spike and toe. Faithion falls. Defenders That's map win. one. And what a map that was for both of these teams. Oh my gosh. We get SVSU taking the dub. But that was extremely hard fought, of course. And I mean, we're sitting here. I mean, just again, just the call to five stack C long to sit through the breach alt and nobody, just nobody make a sound. It was like the quiet place. Like we're just all sitting here going, nah. Now we're gonna push this. You just gotta give it a second. And just the trades and the back and forth of kills. What a phenomenal map one. Absolutely. I mean, we couldn't ask for a better start to cast them together. We were like, you know what? Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you half an hour ago. And then we get that map. What a great way to open it up. And we have possibly another two maps of these two teams. If this series is as close as that first map was, we're gonna be in for quite the banger. But my goodness, what? A series or what a game already well, we can call it what a series already this has been that's more than enough for a series to make it good Atheon hopping the acs chart there, just really strong performance even on the losing side but ashton really picking it up at the end to be able to even it out and second off valley they're firing in all cylinders they look really good in the second half of that game too they looked extremely strong on the second half of that and it's really weird because haven's one of those maps that can swing either way attacker sided or defender sided and we just saw it dead even like seven five half both ways I mean, it kind of is what it is. And it's just fell out being SVSU. Now we're going to be able to go to Ascent, of course, for the next map. But before that, we're going to take a quick break, give ourselves a breather, because I know we were talking a lot through that overtime. We're also going to give you guys a breather. So stick around. Be sure to come back to Esports U2. We're going to be back with Ascent after this break. You're not able to find that. Well, then, yeah, we're going to go ahead and back up a little bit here on the plate. They're ready for it, though. Little J going to get the counter strike. They hit one. One for two. And Balthion's going to clean up everybody else in garage. It's a lot of control over the site right now. Jin is playing in hell. Going to be able to find another one. 2v2 on the map. Let's see if they're able to find it. It's another pick. And finally, Saginaw Valley stop the bleed. However, and we're going to see that fade come out as well. The rolling thunder. The retake attempt. Slade is just sitting here spraying everybody down. Slade with three. We're going to see if you can find the last one here, and no, it's going to be Ashton. Even this has been back and forth. It seems like neither of these teams can really get a handle. Spike My down, goodness, mid. insanely quick picks from Lil J once again. Make it three, two. Oh, my so goodness. got one as well. Oh, here's Patheon. Dude, they don't care. They're just pushing mid. They're like, you're going to default this slow on us. We're just going to pinch you over and over again. The gun barrel is spotted. Little J's going to find one. Two CT with the flash coming out as well. Oh, Radiate. You don't want to TP right into the open. That is not good. Sal's going to clean up one. And Ashi's going to get one as well. Sitch finds one the answer right there with the ghost as well. Sai has one. It's going to be a 1v1 to finish it out. It's going to be Jesus coming through. Doesn't find any of the shots. We're going to see a hard B push here. Two Omen smokes coming out. One. Oh, Spectre oh. finds three. What? Break through the smoke. Oh, one spec that's not before. Typically favors the attackers, but uh, at this point, I can't doubt SVSU's defense as Faithion ha might have the timing of the century. It's going to be on Slade. They're going to find the pick. One with the round in his hand, not going to get shot down by Ahahid. Oh my goodness. Lil J, what are you doing there, buddy? Yeah, uh, try and find Ashton here, actually. Ashton will be the one trying to save the rifle, but at this point, five oh. members strong. You cannot say that. To little Jay, and little Jay, the one aggressing here. By the timing, no Ashton finally able to strike back to find come through. This is getting real dicey on A site once again. These teams hate one playing clean on A site. It's gonna be a kill picked up by Sai though, but three already falling. SVSU, the only one who might be able to save it. SVSU, the Astro all coming down as well. Oh. Little Jay gonna find one. one the stun enemy. misses. Little Jay finds two. Six standing. finds one. It's a one v one once again. Eleven to ten on the other Can side of the all. Can he hear it? He picks. Sai gets it. 
gets it. Speed made. There's people sitting in heaven. Specs gonna find one from heaven. Whoa, great flash, but no! No kill found off of it. Here's SBSU, they clean up! Right now oh. for SBSU on offense. And the fade's gonna what? find it. And we're just gonna fight it out. Everybody's ego peeking. Stitch finds one, so does Spec as well. Oh. Faith the on just sitting in the corner, gonna find two. Anyone's gonna clutch this one out. It has, one it has to believe it has to be signed. Never mind. Jesus on the corner finds one, finds two. Say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend. Somebody's gonna have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is gonna be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I, think he, I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this. Window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're gonna interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's gonna rain, and the suit is new. So, oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and like writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's gonna be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You're Jen. All right. We're gonna interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. I'm gonna ask you like, a couple of very simple questions. Okay. Um, are we ready? All right. Great. College. I really like Georgia College's uh, color scheme. It's just red, white, and blue. I think but I think they did it in a really clever way. Mineral area wearing hoodies, even though it is 75 degrees outside here in Atlanta, Georgia. Absolute legends. If only Nick could hear you. Nick, come back. If he's over 100 feet away, he can't. And you were whispering something, and he started smiling. I'm like, are you whispering? Oh, yeah, because he's, he's got his headphone in if we're close enough. But Bless you. Gesundheit. Gesundheit again. You're welcome. All right, I'm going to go find him. Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> oh my! Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty. Okay. You. Wow, it's not 10:30 yet. It's only <laughs> barely 10. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here, though, so we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not gonna ask what school you go to because unless you swapped hoodies, that seems pretty clear. No, nope. you know I got I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do. We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep calling him that. Yeah. His name is John, but it, my it, name is John Turbesi. Yeah, that's not John T. Turbo. Yeah, I get the message that I'm going to Nebraska where I met you. Oh, <laughs> that's so crazy. So context, if we're probably never gonna use. This, but I want to talk about it. Turbo and I met at a LAN like over a year ago. That's so Not crazy. Over. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. I am Septimus, joined by a man I have interviewed probably well over 10 times. It's going to be my good friend Neb here from Bay State Overwatch team. Neb looked at me and before he started his last series and he said, We are not dropping a map for the rest of the day. And Hello and welcome back once again. My name is Visionary One and alongside me is Rare Adam and my god did we just witness a map number one on Haven 1412 of course going to SDSU and oh my I'm still out of breath. I'm still trying to catch. I'm still trying to think about what we saw because there were so many plays on both sides for both the teams. Of course we can go into stats. We can go into ACS. We can go into everything but SVSU just with the ice in their veins at the end to close it out in overtime. Yeah, honestly, really well played coming through from all their players. I think the biggest thing that we noticed from SCSU is just across the board, they were consistent performers. I think there was like a five kill gap between their top and bot frag, which at the end of the day, if you can get that much consistency across your roster, you can depend on anyone in these clutch situations. And I feel like that's exactly what we saw. So you see, though, they still showed up. They still showed up incredibly well. I mean, Sai always finding these flanks, little Jay, you know. Well, Jesus there over there if we want to call him that at that point. But it was just an overall really strong performance coming through from both of these teams. And if they are as evenly matched going into the second map, it's really hard to see if, you know, SVSU can pull off a 2-0 even. You know, it could just be going to map three as well. And you know, these, these teams are just, they're so evenly matched. It feels so nice watching these teams just go battle it out, duke it out. It certainly does. And I mean, we were talking about this earlier, right? And here's what it really comes down to. Obviously, we're playing Ascent. Who's your initiator now? 
with because this is a flash heavy map right like we're not going to see the lineups that we saw last time they're definitely not going to be bringing breach right now we see ko is coming out on both sides but you have to remember that right click pop flash was nerfed it only blinds for 1.25 seconds now so essentially it's been turned to the old phoenix flash i mean yeah. so it's it's gonna be interesting to see for certain seeing a chamber on both sides was like actually looking like we're gonna see a killjoy on the side of suny canton so that is something different of course bringing out the killjoy setups able to lock down sight a little bit more on ascent i know we saw fns playing that a lot we actually saw optic move away from chamber entirely on ascent and they put yay back on jet so i'm not really surprised to see this here except for the fact that little j is on raise and not playing said jet yeah very interesting to see that come through of course it is svsu starting on the defense here which is I think even more interesting considering we see the Killjoy come through on attack. Sometimes this can sort of get punished a little bit because you don't really have any... You don't really use any abilities until you're on site, until you've got that post plant set for you. But after that, of course, you get a lot more power in that regard. But seems like we're going to get the KOs on both sides. And this is something that I think both of us are very curious about to see how this turns out as well. Because KO, with that change to the flash, and you're not really flashing for yourself, you're flashing for your team. You have to sort of use your left click flash now. You're throwing your flash a longer way, but even then there's more time for the enemies to react. So curious to see how that one works out. Curious we didn't see the sky come through. I think this would have been a map that maybe favors the newer sky where they can't destroy the birds or anything. But once again, Ascent, three lanes, as you said, and there's three ways that we can see these teams just duke it out. Three places to just get as much action as possible, because if map one has anything to say about that, we're in for a treat. And we certainly are in for a treat here. And I think you're right, though, with, with the Sky's Birds now being indestructible, I think it's a lot more important because you can sign to, kind of still get that pop flash effect, at least for your team, right? Whereas the KO, you kind of have to loft it up and bounce it off something to be able to get that for your team with the left click. With Sky, you can just sit back a little bit further than you normally would and flash out for your team and get the full sustained flash. So I agree with you that, at least in my opinion, you know, my gold opinion, which it shouldn't hold any weight at all. <laughs> it seems like Sky <laughs> might be a better pick here, but also having that KO ability, of course, to shut down that utility is super important as well, especially with a Killjoy on the side. You're talking about post plants that can be vital as well. So I definitely see where it's coming from. We're seeing, of course, the offense towards mid. I feel like this is every ascent stock take ever on pistol is, all right, guys, let's push mid and see what we can find. Yeah, let's just find out what goes on. I mean, Jesus playing back here. Interesting to note that Jesus played Jet and now is playing the uh, KO this time around. Oh, was able to find it through that one way though. So early pickup coming through. Jesus says, yeah, that's right. You are little J by the record. Keep him down there in that sense. But pushing towards this tree area, as you said, just pushing up mid, trying to find as much space as possible. Seems like they're rotating out towards B. Yep, and they are. They're going to hit that beautiful tree up top be able to scan out the site. Ooh. Not going to find, oh, actually going to find one before it's destroyed. They're going to find Slade on site. The pop flash coming out, not going to be effective. Two are spotted as well. Ooh. Asahi going to get one. We're going to see Sai thrown to the back corner over there, looking to spot some people, but it is a 3v2, but you do Fire have planted. that Killjoy still intact currently, able to get some util down, potentially no on the round. Oh my, the flank coming What? In. Taking their time with the shots. They're going to fall, but they find two. Turn this into a 2v2, and this is absolutely massive for Suni C right there. That flank was remaining. deadly, but oh. Jesus is deadly here with the ghost. Gonna find one. The omen flash coming out on the side as well. The paranoia not gonna find one. It's gonna be a precarious one position right here. Remaining. The opportunity for Asahi to clutch it out. Four HP on both sides. And Asahi gonna clutch for SBSU. What a chaotic round one, and I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> what just happened this round one? And we see the flank of doom coming through from Baytheon with the classic, just able to find so many shots into the back. And that's really what turned it around. Stitch took so, yeah, Stitch took so much damage, wasn't able to clutch it out. What is this? Nothing like a little seance before the round starts. You gotta play you gotta pray to the spike gods after you clutch around like that. They're just giving Faithion his due. They're you know calling a seance. They're like, hey, Faithion is clearly a demon. We have to exercise those demons because that flank was disgusting. <laughs> What is going on? This man, this this series is just delivering Slade. Oh no, they get hopped fast, but Lil J says, Hey, I forgot to check that corner. Let me go kill him. And Ashen next to fall. This should be pretty clean coming through from Suni as they've already got the site very cleanly under control. And yeah, site is cleanly under control. No weapons lost so far. The flank protected, of course, by the Killjoy turret. So this is looking like it's going to be a rather easy pick. And of course, for SVSU, Lil J gonna get one here, gonna take down Sitch. And we have. 
the fate of course just sitting outside spec is like i hear the turret what am i gonna do here it's a great question honestly with the frenzy in hand not a lot they can get besides potentially some exit picks as that's gonna be thrown mid just to check they're back not gonna be able to find one I actually no does get one at the end there oh no get spotted oh this is gonna be wraps and it is radiate's gonna get the frag it's gonna be 2-0 of course in favor of suny c it's a great job by them just honestly coming out and just taking a breath relaxing realizing that hey might have lost mass last map it doesn't matter we're gonna come out with that aggression especially on an anti-eco they take care of business with the with the flawless as well yeah, and you know, it was the seance to start it off, you know, just doing this circle around the spike, you know, worked out. They get the round win, it's a flawless win, and this is definitely a spot where SVSU, they held the line last time, they can hold the line again here and really push their econs back into check, but it has to be a clean round, and, you know, it's yeah, early pickings, ahead. you know, we don't want to get too crazy into it and all of that stuff in terms of, oh, this you have to win this round, but, you know, you really like to win this round, and with how even the series has gone, the difference between these phantoms and the specters in this situation could end up meaning that difference. But once again, just pushing up through mid, going down lane two this time around. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about it though, and you have to realize that Ascent is defender sided. You're currently down 2 0 on defense starting off, and you have a killjoy that you're going to be facing on the defensive end as well, which is just honestly generally a pain to deal with so we're gonna see this come in Sai opting for that right click i'd like to see the left foot coming out it's a good job by him to kind of push slate back just a little bit nothing found yet and oh, they, they don't clear see. the back of sight come on you gotta clear your angles slade's good for two so far with that this is gonna be dangerous ashton gonna pull off one you said they have to hold on to their econ it looks like they're doing it rather well with Sai just sitting back here not able to get anything it's gonna be a flawless the other way for sbsu finally able to get around on defense and the ko nade just seemed to be a little bit of a paint coming through from Sai. He threw it down and said hey there's no one back there, and meanwhile, you just see the chamber lurking in the shadows. Slade holding their breath, just waiting for the right time. And you just got to clear a boathouse. You've got to do a more thorough job of clearing that site. And flawless one way, flawless back the other way. Now everyone's on their full buys here, but of course, SVSU feeling a little bit better. They should be able to afford some rifles next round, even if they lose. But of course, you want to be able to push this forward once again. Yeah, and typically, you said from the shadows, of course, came Chamber. Typically, that's Omen's job, but I mean, we saw a great job, of course, uh, coming out, just kind of ratting out that boathouse, you know, just sitting out the molly and not worrying about it. Nobody comes through and checks it. We're going to see some aggression towards A to start off this round. Little spot as well. We're going to have Sitch taking out, of course, the Roomba, the Boombot from Lil J. We're going to see what they can do here on site. We're going to see that double satchel through the smoke. We are not We're seeing just some shoulder peaks, a grenade coming out, trying to clear out generator. Unfortunately for them, nobody is sitting there. And we're going to see, of course, the tether coming out from the fate. A lot of utility strung out both ways right now on this A site. We're going to see who's going to win the battle of the util dumps because it's looking like with that KJ positioning, they might actually rotate back B off of this. Yeah, you know, Killjoy's just able to hold that B long as well for herself. Just prevent anyone from sort of looking for these cheeky flanks, but you just see how much they're using on either side. Actually, the Sova Drone going to get a lot of information as well, but the Paranoia comes down. Jesus finds one. Stitch finds another one as Radiate's able to trade that one back. They finally are able to find a couple of frags on the site here. There's the left like, flash coming through as no one peeks off of it, unfortunately. So it looks like CNC going to be able to get that plant down. Yeah, gonna be able to get the plan down, but it is a 3v4 scenario. Faithion. And Faithion here on the flank once again. Oh. Gets one, Faithion oh. gets two! Are you kidding me? Now oh, it's a 3v2, on. able to come back around, of course. Here's the Sova drone trying to find anything. Spots one, doesn't get the tag on him though, as Ashton is sitting here. Has to deal with the omen smoke. Slade just kind of sitting here as well, gonna break that. It's looking like they're both gonna push out of heaven. We're gonna see what they can find on it as Radiate is just sitting here waiting for the drop. Not much happening as far as the push right now because the smoke and you see Radiate actually repositioned down to hell. This is gonna be yeah. a terrible crossfire and you're actually gonna see both of the players looking like they're gonna bail. Ashton gets a pick on Faithion. They both said, hey, might as well cut bait we're gonna go ahead and save here and radiate's gonna get caught up in the spike unfortunately but i mean you got to hang around and make sure that they don't try to ninja defuse on you yeah i think especially when you've got this omen who's just sort of who had the money they had still enough credits to be able to buy a weapon this round shields that's another story at that point you know it's okay if you lose a member there i think that you just want to make sure you're getting that round win over anything three to one for themselves once again we look across you know, the, the buys are coming through. There's light shields on Jesus once again, but I think across the board, we're still just getting a lot of full buys. We're getting a lot of really scrappy rounds, and 
even that round, while it wasn't the most exciting ending, still very close. Faithion with some really good flanks every single time. It seems like they've just got that extra eye for it. And you know, them being pretty damn good shot as well is helping them as well. It certainly is. I mean, those two headshots, there, there's no scenario where they double swing that and should lose, right? Just theoretically, but Faithion just different. Just, hey, I'm built diff. We're going to take both of these. We're going to eliminate that pressure, force both the players to heaven. You and hey it's hard to catch dubs that way and you see the killjoy utility trying to make a difference here as well trying to clear out that b site now remember you can't clear out boathouse with that so they're gonna have to make sure to do a little bit of a better Five job here beat. to clear out the back and it's gonna be slain fighting two from Ooh. boathouse before he gets dropped of course by the killjoy utility that ultimate coming through setting him down and sitch actually sat down little j as well so it's gonna be a 4v2 it's gonna be a strong retake opportunity here for svsu i don't even know if door is closed at this point yeah, but you can see where they're coming from. Two from spawn, two from you know, T spawn there as well. And just going to be able to find that Faithion. All that util, all that post plant that we've been talking about, not going to be coming to fruition. But Sai finds one already. Sai not going to find the other one. KO on KO action as the knockout goes towards SVSU. They'll be able to defuse. Yep. I mean, it's a great retake right there. And that's, I, I, I hate to bring it up again, but how do you not clear out spec there? He already killed you. He dumpstered you two rounds ago in that exact position. And you're like, hey, yeah, the Killjoy ult will clear him out. Don't worry about it. No, the man is going to sit there and get his frags and not worry about the rest. You have to be able to clear Slade off of that backside on B, and they just haven't done it yet. And when it comes down to it, you have to expect him there at this point. Now, if he's playing a different position, he catches you off guard. I say that's fine because you have to clear out the position if you're going to take B site, and it's not happening. Yeah, Slade has just been there both rounds and both times that they push in and don't clear out Boathouse gets two. So, you know, results-based analysis all we want. They have every single one of their kills from Boathouse. Maybe you got to clear it out a little bit better next time. But this time, going to be an A execute. Looks fairly heavy thus far with how much utils are already being thrown out after, you know, 15 seconds into the round. But you can see the rotation's already coming through. It's just going to be... Slade holding that B site just in case of any lurkers, but this time around, even Faithion's here to push this one through. Yeah, and I think Faithion, honestly, kind of playing a pseudo entry, probably going in after Little J, is beneficial to them because we've seen how accurate he is with their shots. So, I mean, I'd like to see them kind of push him up and use utilize his rifling a little bit more as we go in. Little J sitting here on the door, gonna try to get spotted. No, he actually dives in to the no, Omen smoke. That's a great little play right there. But we're gonna see the alt come out. Looking towards, of course, the Sova. Not going to be able to find anything, really. Gets one, of course, on Sitch. But it's going to be a stack up towards the Heaven side. The Fade ult coming in as well to spot two. And now they know that this is going to be sitting in that position. That's going to be a great job. Oh, and... <laughs> Gotta love the cheeky wall bangs. One enemy yeah, remains. Through the floor is able to find it. It's just the Sova left alive. The tethers landed. They just got to swing it out at the right time. It's going to be a nice cleanup from the side of SVSU. And we talked about momentum. They're starting to get that back. Granted, this was a little bit of a save round. A bunch of sheriffs coming through. So the side of SUNY C, we've got to see them cut that momentum once again. It's, it's so back and forth. I think we've seen every single possible leave change we can. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have, right? It just comes yeah. down to being one of those things to where I just expect that out of this matchup so far. And I know it's only been one match, but I mean, 3-3. Three, three. I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm sorry. Yeah. We, we saw Haven. A sense not that much different, of course, minus the fact that we, uh, you know, you have three sites to push instead of two, but most teams, both teams basically avoided B like the plague, except for some early aggression of map control, right? So basically mid is the same in Ascent in that fashion, where you can have links to both the other sites. That's really all it's being used for right now as well. We saw that kind of five stack on the eco not working out for um, for Sunny C. So we're going to see what comes out now. A little bit more mid aggression. Just, you know, camping it out, kind of sitting down, just waiting for somebody to push and make a mistake. And we have Jesus, of course, tucked into the corner on tree. We're going to see if he goes ahead and makes a pop out. And he does. Picks off Faithion. <gasps> actually finds where the drone is as well. He's going to find two. Jesus. The man, the myth, the legend. Read about him in a book. He's got two. Yeah, he gets two kills there right off the bat. Great Molly there to clear out Asahi there. Sort of caught out of position, I think, on that Sova. Pushed up a little bit too far. And I was looking at the ultimate economy that we were talking about from Sunni C here. They've got three ultimates still available. This round isn't quite over, but you got to make use of those. you got to stay alive to, first of all, make use of that as well. But thus far, not really getting as much space. Little J going to get caught with this trademark. 
Gonna give enough information to sort of move some more members around. You can see Jesus starting to wrap around once again, looking for as much as possible. Just barely dodging out the Seas of OJ. And the Seas would have been nice. We have Radiate kind of sitting here, waiting behind Little J. The spray comes out. The reload! Oh. Little J's gonna catch the timing. There you go. 3v Thor. Here comes the party. We're gonna see this right here, of course, versus the Tour de Force. There's a shot, Ooh. the teleport back. Gonna at Ten least keep him left. to safety as this is gonna go down <gasps> lane. Trying to peek Lil' J. Oh, he gets a shot while he's paranoid. Are you kidding me? Here's a shot right here from Radiate. 1v2 scenario. Doesn't have time to get the plant down, unfortunately. It's gonna be a clutch for Sitch. He's gonna get, okay, get taken down there to finish it out. So the economic damage is done, but the round is lost because SBSU can hold on for just long enough. Yeah, really well played from Slade. Once again, Boathouse is the nemesis of Sunni C. They're never able to find anyone in there, and Slade able to find one with the Tour de Force. The key one, I feel, in that sense, forced uh, a little bit of an overextension from Radiate to be able to find that frag before looking for the plant. So at that, you know, just stalling out enough time. Still so close, these rounds. Even when they win, they lose at some point. <laughs> Even when they win, they lose. Yeah, that's how it really feels right now. So I definitely I definitely agree with you there. It's just kind of coming down to those small, minute mistakes. And like you said, Boathouse has been the overarching, like, big mistake that we've seen from Sunni C. They just haven't closed out Boathouse. They haven't checked it hard enough. You know, a paranoia comes through, but the little J gets spotted beforehand and gets traded out as little J gets an opening pick right there. Instantly, just double blast packed in to site they have an opportunity right here is anybody on it faithion's gonna get caught up by speck who is sitting of course in tree a, a nice paranoia is gonna get it as well and sitch on the flank oh my the timing is beautiful he stayed in wine forever there was three members walking down broadway right in front of him and he waited and waited and waited find a second one on to radiate here spike is down and to find that ko pickup as well as just the sahi versus the world once again but so was Queen of Door in a hard place in this situation, stuck in the garden. Raised down Ashton actually through the smoke, but Stitch gonna find their third. And this omen really well played that round. Yeah, I mean, Stitch was phenomenal. I just, it's just the little things, right? Like, I understand that most of your aggression is coming through trees, so you're not gonna really check wine as hard because most of your team is pushing through fast out of the other entrance end of the site. So it makes sense, but the two most areas that you have to worry about when you push A, and when other than of course hell on a but that's kind of a different story because it's actually on site right it's like boathouse and wine if you can make sure you can secure those areas you're not only solid for post plant you also know that you have site itself and just sitting there the entire time and be like all right we're gonna sit we're gonna let them plant and boom there goes the dynamite we're gonna go ahead and get a pick stop the plant and shut down the ko all, all at the same time it just seems like svsu is just bringing a little bit more nuance and a little bit more patience than suny c currently is and keep in mind, I believe this is Sunni C's map pick here. Ooh, little J. Got the friend in the back pocket there with Asahi to back that one up, but already finding some opening frags here. And I think this is a better pace for the side of Sunni C. Last time around, SVSU were just able to sort of quell this aggression. As we say that, uh, they're able to find a frag onto him. Asahi finds another one onto Stitch here. They need to up the pace a little bit more just to be able to play on their own terms as opposed to waiting for SVSU to reply because their retakes have been really good on this defense for the side of Saginaw Valley. The retakes have been extremely solid so far. And I, I mean, it comes down to Ascent, right? Ascent's kind of like a retake heavy map. Like, hey, we can give up sight, we can come back. There's always multiple angles that you can always aggress on, which is something I really enjoy about the map personally. But nice little spot with the recon bolt, gonna find one. A little spray down as well, gonna leave low HP. As soon as you see in a 4v2, radiate finding one right there. This is looking like it's gonna be wraps and a save. Of course, Slade's gonna be able to pick up the operator from mid. Kind of save out that econ of course but they are bailing out and in a hurry they decided hey might as well carry two rifles we still have the lead we still have econ let's go ahead and see what work we can do next round against the four people of course of sunny c and i think a really big factor in this is svsu they won that last round but you know they all died afterwards they're able to pick up another one their econs aren't actually in the best of spots you can see them here there's going to be some light shields plus rifles here which is not ideal in a lot of senses uh, at least it's one on stitch there i believe he just might have to get bailed out with a buy of his own there it's it's looking a little bit shaky and for the first time in a while so you see the ones with the economic advantage here little j here 
doesn't have a gun though, which is a little bit worrisome. Maybe might be getting a buy. There we go. And it feels like SES you need to win this round. It's, it's sort of the economic win at this point. You've got to get it. In. That's a great way to open it up. Yeah, that is a phenomenal <laughs> way to open it up right there. Get that pick with that op. Get out of there as well. You have the Omen Smoke covering you. So if they push through, they have the potential to get punished here as well. I mean, Slade has done a phenomenal job of just kind of choosing his spots on when to be aggressive, right? Like we've seen him just lurk the back of Boathouse, not get cleared and find two. That time taking a very aggressive fight with the operator, able to pull it out. We're gonna see, obviously, Radiate has to repeat this, right? They can't let him get that for free. They don't realize that he's TP'd out and he's completely off of the site. It's a great job, honestly, by SVSU, just being patient here off the opening pick. Teams are not getting aggressive. They're not doing anything. The Fade Util is gonna spot one in mid, so they know that they can kind of just relax. They have the choke points covered and that's all they really need to worry about. This time around, you know, Faithion hasn't been as much of an X factor. We saw the insane flank on round one, and since then, it's been a little bit more subdued coming through from this Killjoy. Of course, as expected on a defensive sided map, you know, we're expecting defense to get a little bit more of an advantage here. Really curious to see how this Killjoy comes alive when CC are able to defend for themselves. But thus far, they just haven't made any moves for the last minute or so. They've just sort of done nothing since the raise went down to that early frag. Yeah, the raise went down, and now, you know, you have to kind of throw everything in the kitchen sink at the execute and kind of just evidence be darned as somebody is sitting in hell right there. Gonna find one right He's definitely gonna get Sova ulted out of here. At least gets the plant down, and there's gonna be spec with another frag from hell. You love to see that one. It's Faithion. There's a shot while paranoia. The flash coming out as well. The blind, the trade coming out as well. Faithion can't find spec, who does a phenomenal job getting to that round, including that fatal as soon as they had to push on site and that's really the problem adam with what happens when you wait that long right because they know they can guarantee that ult and they're going to hit three or four people because you have to collapse on site you're not giving yourself a choice for anything else yeah it's the desperation you can just see it coming through from the side of sunni see there they felt like they just waited around too long you know you didn't use any util you didn't try and trade util with anyone else and after a while you're just like hey are we doing this or not are we just going to save our rifles and look for another time or you know, you have to execute at a certain point, but I feel like, you know, 20 seconds left on the clock, especially when you don't have your duelist alive, you got to go a little bit earlier. And as you said, uh, the Sova ultimate's just able to guarantee a kill every single time. Yes, the plant still comes down, but hey, still got your one. I mean, hey, got mine, right? I mean, <laughs> exactly. I, how many times have we said that in rank to, you know, the people that didn't frag that round? Like, you rough. know, you get your one kill. You get your one kill. Oh, Whoa, Jay? Hey, yo, finds two? Okay, this is an opportunity right here that Sunni C has to take advantage of right now. Here's little J pushing through the volley. Ooh. The man doesn't care. And here comes the showstopper as well. Gonna find one little J with three on the round. And you know what? I was kind of questioning the move over to Raze because we saw how effective he was being aggressive on Jet last round. That is the trademark little J that we've seen so far. And of course, it's Faithion with the flank making an impact as well. Slade just has to sit here in mid and hope he doesn't get spotted. There's the op shot. It's missed. Sai throwing down of course the molly and it's just gonna blade away at the health he is gonna find sai though and they're still bullying this time with the nano swarms they are trying to get this off out of his hands <gasps> oh my goodness he missed he missed he, slade can miss did he Apparently. i was a wall bang i guarantee you that was a wall bang because i think faithion had more health than 18 going into that i think it was a wall bang onto the hands and it did not end up killing Oh my good! That that was wow. I, I don't know. We'll we'll check the vod on that one. But my goodness, that was almost disastrous for Faithy on there as well. But of course, little Jay there, you know, just pushing the tempo, and that's what we wanted to see at a Cinecy. We don't want them to push the tempo. We want them to sort of go as hard as possible. This time around, though, Faithy has the judge. Always love seeing when this comes through because you know they could buy a rifle. They have the KO who has enough money, but they got the judge. Let's see what they're able to do. It's really, I would expect to see some bunny action here from Little J. Just double blast back in, try to get a judge pick. Doesn't really seem to matter. That's a great nade. Slade's going to sit down, though, and he's going to be finished by the paint shells. Little J able to get the trade. There's the boathouse. Guys, you cleared boathouse. I'm so proud of you. Take sight. There you go. 
radiate with the plant down. We're in a 3v3 situation. The retake trying to come through. Again, though, it was so quick that the door is already gone, but we have a massive work coming out from Garage as well. We're gonna see what happens. There's Jesus with one as Faithion gets taken down. And this is gonna be a very precarious position and the retake is gonna come through, albeit Suni C finally cleared out Boathouse. They're not able to catch the win. 12th round in and they clear a boathouse now they can just fill it up as much as they want they can be the ones to rat in there if they want to but good defensive half from SVSU it looked a little bit dicey especially last round you know Lil J being able to find you know three kills that round just really pushed the tempo of it was the main thing that got Sunny C away from this 8-4-9-3 situation in that case so going to 7-5 on a defensive sided map you've got this killjoy who can really just lock down one site by herself it's gonna be difficult to challenge that as SVSU, of course, we'll have to see how this goes. There's no duelist though on their side. So that's going to be interesting to see how they entry onto site, how they continue to control their space in that sense. Yeah, we saw a lot of this out of Sentinels in the last chance qualifier, a lot of triple, you know, triple initiator lineups with no duelist. And I don't mind it then. I mind it now because your flash has been nerfed and you have yes. two, you have two agents that essentially gather intel for you. Now, Fades Prowlers are a menace and they're definitely something to be reckoned with. At the end of the day, though, you're not going to have access to that pop flash, and Little J's going to find one in mid with his trademark aggression. No surprise there, and we're already sitting at a 5v4. Little J just gets off for free. I don't even think he got tagged in that interaction. I think he's still at full health. Yeah, Little J doing a great job of just opening up with that breakneck tempo, I want to say. I think they've, they've definitely lived up to that, if we want to put it that way, but you know, just holding this tree area, they're just able to hold default for as long as possible, and even though you've got these people peeking down mid, looking for as much space as possible. As we said, Killjoy clears out mid, clears out B site as well with how much utility she's got for herself. So it's going to be difficult to push the agenda here for the side of SVSU. They're going to have to really find some picks early on to get some more information, get some advantages on the map so that they can push these sites a little bit more aggressively. Sai's going to shut that down once again with a kill of their own. Lil J finds another one onto spec. Lil J finds a third one of the round. And yes, this is going all the way of Zuni C. Faithion comes in from the side with a trademark classic flank. And that's how you do it. That's how Zuni C are going to take their first defensive half round. And hey, you get, you know, the anti eco coming out. It's going to be a lot of specters and potentially a marshal as well. No, just straight specters all the way around. I dig it personally, but there, there's something that needs to be said as well like for svsu you're on offense on ascent you have to take map control in some form right because this map is so large there's a lot of areas to navigate even just pushing up to mid and sitting in the cubbies alongside you know the entrance to mid just getting that map control can kind of secure yourself but having everybody just kind of pushing up tree by itself is a very dangerous proposition because you're dealing with two very a very skinny choke point that's very difficult to get through and besides that they pushed into three members of the other team obviously they don't know that going into it but it's not necessarily like a great idea to just kind of shove yourself and shovel yourself through this one tiny little hole and as we see or as you say that you know they're doing that exact thing they're going to try and shove through tree here so i trying to hold the line but they are going to be pushed back here just by the sheer amount of members side of Saginaw Valley who are here look at the rotations look how quick they are raised though gonna look for that flank so little J you know doing little J things as usual yep. and, uh, no he, he's gonna <laughs> aggress he's gonna aggress and but you see the mid control is actually being taken this time they lurked into cubby I swear they're not listening to us we're on a delay <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely love to see that just to kind of wait for that out but oh all the way from behind is little J and he's coming in and Obviously, this is Spectres against Classics. This shouldn't be a win by any means. Uh, if you're SVFCU, you're kind of just, hey, GG's go next, but they have a chance. A yeah, you can definitely take some guns out of hand. What? Faithion. <laughs> they don't see the Nano Swarm. They didn't see the Nano Swarm. Now Switch has some, oh, gets flashed from behind. SV, Ashton actually going to pull one out right there as well. Here's little J just rushing in. Here comes the nade, trying to get one. Radiate going to find another. Sitch just left and no man. What a shot. Oh. Okay. Good try on the TP. Hey, I respect the attempt at the outplay. They got the plant down as well, so that's going to be nice for their economy. That's actually a very successful... I mean, noting that they came in with all classics and almost no util, I would almost call that a successful, you know, a successful eco. Not bad. I think that, you know, you're able to get a couple of kills picked up for yourself. You look at these buys now. Little, of course, Little J is going to go for the Bucky. Of course. Of anyone to do it, it would be them. Uh, they swap it off. They're baiting us at that point, but... I think that to an extent, this is a round where 
SVSU can take back control a little bit here. They're able to push you know, an eighth round into their belt here. It's again, team that wins the pistol round and round the first side doesn't like the defensive side has always been really good at these pistol rounds. It feels and nonetheless, I think Slade here. They're going to be a X factor once again. You know they had a lot of these kills in Boathouse. If they're able to get even half as good a performance on this attacker side, it will bode well for SVSU. But thus far, it's been a little bit of a slow start. That's a really nice pick early. Oh my goodness! Never mind the bonus round paying off already with a couple of kills. Yeah, the bonus round is huge right now, taking away two guns from SVSU. We're going to see where this fade lands right in front. I mean, do you spray this down? You know they're kind of sitting there. No, it's going to be the fade util coming out, trying to clear out this B site. You still have two holding on to A, and I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that one has a Bucky for Sunni C, so this one's going to be a little bit dangerous. As here comes the spray through the wall. Can they get it? Smack! What? Oh, the box. does it not double wall bang through the extra box? I don't think it does, or if it does, it does very little damage at that point. I think Spec really taking a whole lot of damage, but... Nonetheless, it does prevent them from pushing forward. They are scared of what the Sova and Killjoy now are able to provide. So I'm going to try and rotate out. But look at this. This is already sniffed out by Sunni C. They're able to sort of read the room, understand that they didn't really want to push into the Sova with the Ares, where in those tight spaces, you can get accidentally headshot and all of a sudden, hey, there's the Ares getting a kill. But look at where Radiate is. Look at where Sai is. They're just sort of sitting in these corners looking for another bonus. <gasps> the that's the second time that they've actually smoked off and covered their own fade util. Oh, here comes a flash. Here's the opportunity. The Bucky. No, not going <laughs> to find it. I was chosen for a Bucky kill, but it's not going to happen. And now it's going to be Radiate here alone on this A site. And they know exactly where he is. This is going to be very difficult. Slade going to get taken down, though. That's going to be a free gun, potentially. They're wrapping around this right here. The smoke coming out. Spec does a good job. 2v2 now in this scenario. And the Prowler coming out. This is going to be tight here, but, you know, if Atheon, you got the Sova as well here, trying to just push onto this site, there's one in hell. Great teleport out at the right time, but I think they read it here. 40 health on Stitch, are they going to be able to find anything? They're going to find one. Will they be able to get out in time? Faithion looking for it. There's one. Faithion trying to spray it down. Will they find it? They do find the kill. Do they have time? They have time. They have time. One health. Oh my goodness, one health. Oh, is he going to get this? No way. He got it. He got it. Two seconds to spare. One health! <laughs> oh my! What? Yeah, I, fan yourself, Faith. Don't fan it. Fan it. Fan you, it. I'm sweating over here myself. I'm not even playing in this match. Um, Faithion, did you see that you also panic swapped to the knife trying to get out the ghost? He panic swapped over. Was like, oh my god. You see the knife come out and he's like, oh, okay, one notch on the scroll wheel. Let's get back to the ghost. It lands the headshot. Oh my I, i'm speechless at that round right there it looked it was back and forth the entire time and these two teams again we talked about not expecting anything less but eight to seven soon you see up right now of course on defense with the killjoy so the advantage is lingering in their way and we might see a map three and of course i cast a curse it and spec is going to get a stinger kill right off the rip yeah they're forced back on this econ but faith unable to find one as well so no, Faithion's still just pushing hard. That's an interesting lockdown thrown down. Is Spec able to collect another one? That's a lockdown destroyed. Not too sure if they maybe miscommunicated on that one a little bit, but it's a big ultimate down. You know, that defensive side of ultimate with the Killjoy lockdown, so good at stalling out. Sai going to get taken down by Spec as well as now. Zuni C, this is the first round where they've looked a little bit worse for wear, but Radiate says otherwise. Yeah, Spec's on Ace Watch there. right now as well. Actually gonna heat check the all. Oh, oh, oh. Asahi? Oh my, the double kill. And now Spec was on Ace Alert. He's gotta take down two and get the plant down. Already burned the ultimate as well. This is not looking good with 11 HP. We're gonna see if he can bring it out. He did throw the haunt through doors, so they're probably going to be a little bit more passive on back site here. Might give them the opportunity to get one. We're going to see what happens. 20 seconds remain. Spec not going to save here. Just going full send, trying to push downstairs right now. The smoke goes away and Radiate finds the frag. It's going to be 9-7 in favor of Sunni C. Half of these plays that come through just end up leaving both of us speechless. Oh, what? What are, we, what are we supposed to say? I saw he finding two there on a dirty angle. Just absolutely nasty coming through on the side. And of course, Spec had three really good kills off the middle, you know, starting off with the Stinger, able to upgrade that gun once again. But 
it just feels like Sunni C are they've got that momentum. And we talked a lot about momentum in the last game and how these teams are just begging for it every single time. They're always chafing at the bit to be able to get that extra little bit of power going their way, get that sort of momentum for themselves. And four rounds in a row here for Sunni C is looking really good. But little J, look at the angle that they found. Push so far up, they find one. Oh, the heat check. <laughs> oh my Whoa, God. speaking of heat check. <laughs> Coming back the other way. SESU, they, they've got nothing. Ashton, going to have to make a miracle happen at that, trying to ADS it down. But the Molly coming through, going to zone him out. And Faithion is going to walk through it. Why not? Fan himself down as well. I So we expect that out of Little J, right? Like, we know he's aggressive. Oh, yeah. Pops the showstopper. Goes full send with the blast packs. That's fine. Finding three picks from two different members of the team in mid on the timing? That, see, that, that, that's what blows my mind, right? Because you know they're aggressing A main. Why would you not be watching for the push from that area, right? You can't get caught worrying and checking out the mini map in the mid of ascent. It's the most dangerous spot to be in. And they just get completely caught out. And as soon as you see, able to take advantage of it in 10 7, this has been the most lopsided this match has been the entire time, including the last map. Nobody has had a three round lead so far. <laughs> it, it feels ridiculous calling this lopsided at that as well, but nonetheless, it's five rounds in a row picked up for CNC. They've been able to really push forward on this defense top side, holding this angle, finds one. Oh no, the reload. You hate to see it. <laughs> the Call of Duty reload. Like, yeah. I shot four bullets. No. I need to reload, and you don't have a you don't have sleight of hand enabled in Valorant, sadly. So it's just one of those things. Little Jake gonna find one. Little Jake gonna find two. It might find three here. Gets traded out, and hey, this is actually a one v two right now. That grenade does a lot of damage to Sitch, though. It's gonna be a precarious position. Actually, TP's out. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna peek? This is the question. Are oh, Faithion might get the timing here. He knows they're running. Is he gonna run behind him? The smoke coming out. Blade or Slade, I'm sorry, gets caught with a little bit of damage. Sitch actually running all the way back to A has the spike in hand as well. This might be a phenomenal opportunity. Or are they just going to go for the pinch here in between the two of them? Now he's going to get the plane down. I mean, we saw the Omen having 25. Oh, Faithion finds it. The smoke was just a little bit too far off. Sitch just has to find the right place and be there at the right time. You can see Faithion just taking the long way around. They don't know where each other are. This is going to be really tense coming down to it. Stitch, 25 health, does not have an advantage here. This is all up to Faithy on the clutch this one out. And we're going to see if they can do it. Of course, coming from long, this is going to be the one spot that probably SVSU doesn't expect him to be as he starts to make noise, though. Checks out. Okay, smart. Go ahead and get rid of wine. The peak coming in from heaven. The, the spike is playing perfectly for him. This is actually an opportunity here. They're on it. He's holding it. There's a headshot peak. Ooh. Sitch is going to clutch with 25 HP and send it through. The attackers take a dub. It is now 8 to 10. We're back to the two round standard that we set at the half with it being 7 5. And this was a save round for SVSU, clutching it out there. A really big round win for them because they have enough to have a full buy here. They've got enough to have most of a full buy next round as well with how rich Stitch is at this point as well. On the flip side though, you know, those economies aren't as in as good of a shape as we expected maybe out of Sunni C. They've got probably another full buy left in them, but still, this is a big round for SVSU once again. Every round's a big round at this point. You know what? Forget me saying any round is not big because they're all big. This is so close. We have a quad or triple stack here coming out of tile. Very interesting there. We've seen, of course, Little J already abuse this spot. They're going to try to do it again. The teleport going to bail out the chamber there. Little J has had a read on these mid aggressions quite a bit. Does a great job at least clearing that one out. Here's an opportunity. Jesus is going to actually land 120 damage on the side. That's going to be an issue possibly carrying forward into the round that chip damages it becomes more and more important of course for svsu pushing up kind of aggressing mid here we have one on a main one on b main <laughs> three mid on this default right now this is a very different look we haven't seen this from them before yeah and actually faithion getting punished for sort of the same setups every round oh, it falls down as well the molly actually took out the alarm bot first so that's what sort of set it up did they throw a flash? I don't know. They, they were looking around like they th threw a flash and they didn't know where it went. But Slade trades out with Sai. I saw he finds another one onto Ashton here. I saw an SVSU in trouble. I saw he finds another one. It's a 2v2 once again. Jesus coming through with left. this one. 
My goodness, both KO alts online. This is so tense here for both of these sides. They've got to try and find any sort of advantage. So back, I think they heard him running across. Yeah, I, I know for a fact at least they were spotted. And of course, you're going to see the KO ult being popped as well. The Molly coming out on that garage push. Oh, Jesus. And Spec's going to find the other one from Garage. It's beautiful. They actually didn't end up clearing it out. Maybe the KO, the KO ultimate ended up making a little bit too much noise because I thought they had him red dead to rights hearing him running from mid. Yeah, I think maybe they, they were maybe a little bit doubtful of what they saw, what they heard. They said, you know what? Are we sure that this happened? And SVSU bringing this back to within one round. Now the economy is starting to boom once again for Saginaw Valley State. They've been so good at getting these advantages back for themselves. You know, after five rounds in a row when we said this momentum is starting to build really heavily you in CNC's favor, as you say, not so fast. And little Jay, trying to take a little bit more of a passive approach this time, sort of sitting in hell, waiting to see what comes out. This isn't where we usually see this race set. No, it's definitely not, but we're going to see little Jay get spotted here. 24 with the Bulldog, gonna get traded out. It's a lot of damage put down, however. We're gonna see what that ends up being. A spec, just reckless abandon, pushes straight up, gets the spot as well. But here is one looking for the trade, not gonna be able to fight it, is Radiate. It was in a good position to potentially deal with it. We're gonna have the Omen alt out of there as well, get a peek at where they're coming from, and it's a super aggressive Haven retake here. As everybody's in heaven, there's three people there, one people on, or one person on the door side, just waiting for that lurk that we've seen so often, of course, from uh, from SVSU. A little wall bang action coming through as well. Sai looking for that right click, gonna get it. Gets the kill as well. It's a great part of the retake. Radiate gets traded out as well. 3v3. Yeah. Atheon finding one here as well. Sai, oh my goodness, the timing, but the headhunters come through. Atheon finds another one. It's a 2v1. Do they know where Ashton is? It may not matter. They find the hunter theory onto one. Yes, you get the last kill. It does not matter. As yes, you, they tie it up once again. My goodness, these teams do not relent. They <laughs> certainly don't. Adam, they certainly don't, man. I, this is oh this God. is something. Um, but I, as we look at the scoreboard right now, look at the kill difference on the top, of course, with Atheon and Little J, and then the 11 kill spread versus the 7 kill spread. And I mean, if I'm doing quick math off my head, it's telling me that Sunny C has had more dominant rounds with when they get kills. SVSU has been able to clutch out the small ones, but the economic damage that was done to Sunny C right now is just so so difficult to deal with right you're on an eco in a 10 to 10 game you've already been in this position before you have to get your thrifty here and you have to get lucky enough as Lil j makes another good read of course with the pain shells at least able to get some chip damage to start off this round and with this approach that they've gone for we've seen this multiple times at a second about like going three through tiles and pushing up from there it gives them just a little bit more of an overload towards mid. It gives them that sort of space that they want to afford themselves to go towards either of these sites. It's been a while since we've seen them go towards B site, it feels, and be successful with it. But nonetheless, they've been very good at just finding space, being able to get a read on what the side of Sunisi want to do. So we'll have to see what this KO is able to do. As you can see, just so much space afforded towards market. Usually this means a B hit, but you never know with Saginaw Valley. They've been Switching it up very frequently. Oh, the stinger from the back finds one. Ah, it certainly does. Oh, but the push coming in from Garage, able to find one out, and Ashton's going to take that space. Sai's going to find one. Radiate going to be removed from Boathouse. So, of course, SVSU doing what Suni C could not, and that fact of clearing out Boathouse. Zasashi has a chance. No, it's going to be Slade shutting that one down instantly. We have little Jay. Coming up with that, Marshall might have a chance here, honestly, but they got to get the timing just right. They spot the gun, and there's the headshot from Little J. It's now a 2v2, and the showstopper is online. They had the potential to use it, and we see it come out right now. The double blast pack takes out one. They're looking directly at Garage. Specs going to get one. They can't get Little J. Has the opportunity. They have the time. They have the defuse. It's going to be 11 to 10. Never put a cloud over Lil J because it's coming up sunny in this round. Once again, the thrifty to push them to 11. SVSU still have more than enough in the bank to be able to afford another round. This is going to even be tight for Sunny C, but my goodness. This game, this game, man. <laughs> no I, words. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just back and forth on the merry round we go. Where it stops, nobody knows at this point.
uh, I'm ready to see a 20 round overtime. You know what? Let's just have, you know, 40, <laughs> 44 rounds in one game. I'm good with it. I just, at, the, at this point, it's so even. The plays being made on both sides are insane. Little J, that showstopper, getting that was pivotal, and the Marshall shot to the dome could not have been more clean. Definitely love to see that. We're going to see Slade with some early aggression here over towards the side, and Little J just perfectly perched on that rat corner right on top of the boxes. See if somebody does that. Obviously, the jump spot is heard. Nobody really aggressing yet, however, for SVSU. Yeah, you can see a lot of utility actually being used by CNEC here just to sort of prevent the aggressive pushes from SVSU. This hasn't really been their style to push that aggressively, but we'll have to find out what they opt for Slade. To be taking away those teleporters as well. I don't think they expect Lil J to be up on this box because they haven't been there the entire time. Every single time Lil J's in a different spot. And it's paid off so many times, giving them huge advantages in these rounds. Timing. Oh my goodness, not again. The barrel of the gun comes through. Lil J finds it. I just, it's uh, it, it's impeccable timing. And uh, hey, that's a great swing right there as well from Jesus and Sitch being able to get two. The Bulldog trying to come out. Faithion just sitting in the corner gets two. Spec trades it out finally. It's another 2v2 scenario. Frags are falling like leaves on the trees because it's autumn. I'm losing my mind. And Asahi has a chance right now, potentially with the dart. We're going to see what's happening. No ults on either side. 2v2 post plant scenario. It's like we're taking retake simulator right now. Look how precise coming from as well. Look at this. Is it right? Gonna be checking it at the right time. Asai finds one. And it is just up to Spec once again. But Spec has been in this situation before. Won't end up winning this one out. Cine C pushed themselves to 12. A familiar situation for SVSU, but this might just be in their wheelhouse. Uh, it's certainly looking like it is. The economic advantage is definitely going to be there. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a breath because these sight hits have been volatile and they have been bloody. Like every single time the site gets pushed, we are seeing three, four, five trades just back and forth. It is wild to think about how coordinated both these teams are, at least having that second person there are able to trade out your team and how vital that really is. And something I want to highlight as well, Faithion was actually on A. That's the only time they have played A. This entire map on defense set up a that time perfectly read out the eco understanding that hey they're probably going to stack a here and rush in it's a great job oh this ko knife just beautiful to spot out three four members from the side of svsu and you know even if this map doesn't go to overtime this series has been so close that who knows what happens after that if we get a map three i think all of us are going to be pretty satisfied with that nonetheless because this has been some really good valorant gameplay thus far I can't disagree with you at all, man. This has been a pleasure to watch and, you know, get to yell out an excitement over, honestly, because both these teams are just doing things that are not to be expected all the time. And uh, I'm definitely loving getting the opportunity to cast both these teams in such an even match. As Tree is going to get darted here with the Recon Bolt. Not going to find much as look how hard Sunny C is just pushed back right now. They are just vibing it out. They really they're don't in, care. Yeah, they're in their comfort zone. They have the KO ult. They have the Killjoy ultimate. Two insane retake tools, especially on ascent with somewhat smaller sights. I want to say at that. Atheon though, gonna oh, get postured out. Oh my goodness, Spec is able to trade it back onto Asahi. It's a four v four. Now they go for the execute. Thirty seconds, 30 seconds left. left though. Do they have enough time to do anything? They're trying to rotate out. This might not give them enough time. Omen has the ultimate. The from the shadows will guarantee a site plan, but oh, is this too soon? Are they going to find it? He, he spots Little Whoa. J. He gets the headshot on Little J. You have to blind. You have to do something here. Radiate Spike gets the pick down. on Cinch. This might be it. Nine, eight. The clock is winding down. You have to get the bomb. You have to get the plant down. It's a 2v3 scenario right now. And the bomb is going to be planted. Here's one right here. Smack is going to find the kill. Looking for more. Two are both just peeking out of the top of tree right now. The killjoy is available as well. Going to push them off of their site zero players detained they know they both have to be back around wine the hold coming out we're gonna see oh slade's gonna get found out here's spec looking for it the lineup is gonna do enough damage though are they gonna fall they do radiate do you have the time you do we're going to map number three. Oh my god rare adam are you kidding me right now <laughs> Get me off the roller coaster. Mr. <sighs> ECAC's wild ride continues. <laughs> 
No I just, words. No, no words. No words. No words. None necessary, honestly. We're just seeing some phenomenal Valorant right now. Um, I, I do have to highlight how much of a beat. And even though we said, like, hey, we weren't seeing the um, the real impact out of the Killjoy, they were effectively shutting down sites. We saw a lot of a lot of a hits coming out from, of course, um, from NEAC. So it just it really comes down to the sheer fact that while you know that impact wasn't exactly felt now obviously faithion did a great job he went 24 and 15 i'm not trying to take anything away from that man uh but his ability just to kind of shut down areas of the map and that one read that they had on a i wonder who their igl is on their squad because that's an insane read to know that they're going to buy up and they're going to hard push a and that's the only time the entire map that we saw faithion on a with the killjoy setup yeah and i think faithion little j you know just always trying to push the envelope a little bit more seven first bloods for little j and it felt like it could have been way more with how they were playing. They were always the ones aggressing onto the side of SVSU. And here, you, know, you win your map pick here on both sides. You go to Icebox now. It's going to be a little bit of a different gameplay there. Icebox, huge map, right? You've got so much space to be able to afford yourself. I think there's a lot that you can do for both of these sides. And I think especially with the comps that they've pulled out, we're going to see some changes come through. I think we're, we might see the Sage come through that we haven't seen as often. Killjoy not going to have as much value, I think. So once again, another comp coming through, another matchup, and my goodness, what a series we've gotten. I just, it, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm just trying to think of my words that are next. And the only thing that kind of concerns me with Icebox being this is we've seen both teams take extensive use of the mid on attack. And Icebox mid is historically not really friendly to pushes. Yes. So we're going to see how that ends up going out and see if they kind of concentrate on that A or B or if we see even more default heavy gameplay than we did on Haven. Uh, so it's definitely going to be interesting. And you know what else is going to be interesting? The fact that we have Icebox, game number three in between SUNY C and SBSU, but we have to catch our breath once again because we just casted a second banger in a row. We're going into <laughs> map three. Definitely excited for it. So after a short break, we're going to be right back bringing you map three of this intense matchup. Stay tuned. Down potentially no on the round. Oh my, the flight coming. What? They're taking their time with the shots. They're gonna. It's gonna be a precarious position right here. The opportunity for Asahi to clutch it out. Four HP on both sides. And Asahi gonna clutch for SBSU. Click. I'd like to see the left foot coming out. It's a good job by him to kind of push Slate back just a little bit. Nothing found yet. And oh, they don't they clear the back of sight. Come on, you gotta clear your angles. Slade's gonna be able to get the plan down, but it is a 3v4 scenario. And Faithion here on the flank once again. Oh. Gets one, Faithion oh. gets two. Are Three. you? We're gonna see if he goes ahead and makes a pop out, and he does. Picks off Faithion. <gasps> Actually finds where the drone is as well. He's gonna find two. <laughs> Frag from hell. You love to see that one. As Faithion, there's a shot while paranoia. The flash coming out as well. The blind, the trade coming out as well. Faithion can't find it. Coming out from garage as well. We're gonna see what happens happens there's jesus with one as faithion gets taken down and this is going to be a very precarious position and the retake they're going to find one will they be able to get out in time faithion looking for it there's one faithion trying to spray it down will they find it they do find the kill they have time they have time they have time oh my goodness one health oh is he gonna get this no way he got it he got it two seconds to spare for him this is actually an opportunity here they're on it he's holding it there's a headshot p Ooh. sitch is gonna clutch with 25 hp being popped as well the molly coming out on that garage push oh jesus and specs gonna find the other one from garage comes through Faithion finds another one the 2v1 do they know where ashton is it may not matter they find the hunter theory onto one yes you get the last right now the double blast pack takes out one they're looking directly at garage specs gonna get one they can't get little j has the opportunity they have the time they have the diffuse it's gonna be 11 to 10. Well, my name is Darian Wheeler. I'm a junior at Cornell College, and I play for the Overwatch and Smash Ultimate team there. I also play football, and I enjoy playing Ultimate Frisbee as well. Wow, how do you have time for all that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to prioritize, right? Yeah. So how long have you been playing Overwatch and Smash, you said? Overwatch, I started playing the summer before I came to Cornell, which was in 2019. And since then, I've gone from bronze the masters ranking just by being on the team um and smash i started when the game first came out but i haven't played the game competitively until around the end of last year and what made you want to start competing 
at the time, our esports coach, we just started getting into like big tournaments and stuff. And so the t- we went to a tournament where one of the PGR, one of the top 50 players in the world was appearing and we played him and it was not pretty. It was, uh, we got stomped into the dirt. And so <laughs> that I, I didn't like that. So I was, I said, you know what, I'm going to get better. I'm going to play better and I'm going to figure out how to, how to beat someone like that. Cause that that was not fun. And what have you done to get better at the game? Like, what kind of strategies do you use? We have weekly practices. We have Monday, Thursday, and Friday we practice. Uh, I play by myself, of course. I go to tournaments. And from these tournaments against good players, I take the film that I get the, and I VOD review it, learn what I could have done better, um, and figure out things like positioning, usage of abilities, you know, that type of thing. So what do you think about your team? How does it feel to be a part of an esports team? And do you guys all get along? Are you guys friends? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We, like, we're, if we're all in the room together, we're, we're just joking around. We're, which sometimes makes it hard to practice because it's, it's very hard. It's hard to get serious when it's uh, really goofy like that. But I love being on the team. It's, it's like one of the reasons I stayed on the esports team, despite because we had a director change, despite the director change was because I just love the team. That's really good. You guys support each other and all that. That's awesome. You said you've gone to competitions and stuff. Well, how often do you think you game a week? How many hours do you think you play a week? Maybe over 24, maybe 30, 30 hours. It's a lot of time. You play Smash and Overwatch. Which one do you like better and why? I really like Smash better. One, I've always, fighting games have always been my thing before shooters, so that's part of it. And I'm much better at Smash than I am at Overwatch. It's, Overwatch is more of a team-based game, so your individual performance matters a lot less. Uh, Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esports U Channel 2. We've been bringing you ECAC Fall 2022 Valorant. This is week number two, and we have seen some stuff we've seen some things and we've seen an amazing matchup so far in between saginaw valley state university and suny canton this has been ridiculous we're going to a map number three the first one of course went to overtime on haven went in favor of svsu suny c was able to pull out uh, ascent 13 to 10 so both these maps extremely close and now we are headed over to the box ice box we're gonna get cold hands and we're going to get some cold hands potentially for one of the players as well as the sub is being made in for SUNY. They were subbing in JCK for Radiite, who we saw play Omen for the first two maps. Yeah, and we were theorizing that potentially this could mean they're more of a Viper player because, you know, Radiant and I played the Omen twice. Sometimes you can argue for Viper on both of those maps as well. Mostly going to be used on Icebox, so it's almost a necessity to have that there. You know, Sage is another agent that we see a lot of. Could also just be that, and they're shifting around their controllers to other people as well. So there is a little bit of secret sauce coming through from CNC. But honestly, this series has been excellent. And it's so weird to say week two after these games, because it feels like these teams have just they're so well seasoned. They know all of these strats. They've just been executing so well we've been talking about like these teams are they're playing at the highest level that i think they possibly can and it's been absolutely fantastic to watch i think something to highlight for both teams captains or their igls or whoever is making those calls in the mid or in the mid round those trades are being made so effectively on site we were talking during the break about how it's a bloodbath every single time somebody enters a site you have you know five kills rolling off in between the two teams in the span of a second and it's almost impossible to catch all the action that's going on just for the sheer fact that every single person that peaks is being traded and i'm not saying that facetiously like there is a trade followed by a trade followed by two more trades and oh there's a plant down in a retake scenario and essentially it's been a lot of 2v2s it's been a lot of 1v2s that we've seen so far and we do in fact see G- jck hovering that viper right now that is definitely something to keep your eyes on the viper specialist getting subbed in for icebox yeah and of course I'm also curious to see what the answer is from Saginaw Valley. Are they, there we go. We lock in a sky already. So this is going to be something different that we haven't seen, you know, no more pot flashes with the bird. You're going to go for the long flashes instead, giving you that extra utility for your team. 
curious to see how that works out as well with the Viper, because it means that you can be a little bit more aggressive with your flashes. Usually you're not going to get blinded, but everyone else on the other side of that wall will. Or your teammates. Yeah, or, you, or <laughs> you're just, you know, you're just trolling your team and you're flashing yeah. your entire team as they push yeah. forward and everything. But, you know, point still stands that uh, we get to see something a little bit different come through from spec here. It's interesting to see how they sort of rotate around the chamber. I believe it was spec who played at chamber on that map one now moving it over to Slade who played that breach on map one. So seems to just be some agent comforts coming through another agent that though, that got a little bit of changing uh, is Reyna. And that is a Reyna that we see. This is a competitive game and it is on little J of all people who we would trust with Reyna. I think little J's up there. I mean, if you get to heal after you get those first bloods, he did have seven last match. So that is definitely something to look out for. Little J coming through. Of course, we're going to see Sova. We're going to see Viper. We're going to see uh, Chamber and KO rounding out SUNY Canton and then Saginaw Valley almost going with the mirror comp, but they're going to have Jesus on raise, which I actually particularly like because just having that extra utility to either deny the plant or to go ahead and throw in the post plant scenario is very vital as far as securing rounds. We've seen a lot of teams at the VCT caliber start moving towards raise on icebox for that exact reason, just to give yourself some more utility to throw to try to deny plants, especially on B site when you have a sage there. Now it's interesting, we don't have a sage on either side so we're not going to see a lot of those B wall and plant strats that you typically see in ranked. Yeah, it's it's interesting in a lot of ways to see them not opt for it because it can sometimes just give you free access to a site. It lets you push the tempo a little bit quicker. It's intruder alert as this game underway, but my goodness. I've, I'm still so curious to see how they play out this map because Icebox, as we said, it's very wide open. There's so much space that you need to keep in mind when you're pushing sites. You know, A site is so far back if you really think about it. There's so much ground that you have to make up. B site's just in such a weird position where there's walls that you can cheese out, all of this stuff. Icebox is always one of those maps that really define teams. And I think especially the fact that we're going to this as our decider can make it any more exciting. Well, we see a B stack coming out early and there's gonna be a lot of spotting. Three actually getting suppressed to start off. And what was that recon bolt? Are you kidding me? That was Ooh. beautiful on top of the crane to spot out the chamber with a little aggression. They're gonna have to reposition to snowman. We're seeing a quick B hit to start off with. And this one, little J is going to be on the flank to start off with and that is a terrifying prospect to think about yeah and that's a great wall as well but look how much damage slate is taking just from the orb from all the decaying coming through it's an aggressive start here on this attacker side of note it is second of alley starting off on attacker here we didn't actually have the sides decided last when we checked the map select but Stitch going to find that first blood of the round here. Meanwhile, timing on Faithion, able to find one. Faithion on Sova this time. We saw him on, of course, you know, Killjoy last map. So you talked about that rotation of agents. We're seeing it in a lot of different places as Sitch going to be up close and personal. The right clicks get him one, but not able to find more than that. Little J comes in on the flank, finally gets that final kill. And it's going to be a pistol round win for SUNY C right here. The Viper, the Sova, the Reyna still standing. I can't say I'm surprised that Reyna is still standing at this point. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, it's Reyna, solo queue terror. We can talk about solo queue more than we can talk about how well it does in comp because in comp it's hit or miss. We'll put it that way. But nonetheless, very good from LJ to be able to find that timing just to be able to clean up the kill. But overall, have to see how this develops because if any of these teams get momentum, it's, it's difficult to say what side Icebox is sometimes because there's so many different executes that you can go for. Usually with the Sage, you know, you have that ability to sort of cheese out a site with Vipers. They're just walls that can crisscross across all these sites. So it makes it difficult. But usually I feel like a lot of teams do end up going defensive sided on this side. I'll have to find out if these teams agree with us or not. Yeah, that's for definite. I would actually point to SVSU, and this is going to sound extremely weird, but because they have a raise, I would actually point to them being a little bit more defender sided just Ooh. for the ability to deny the plant. This is a hard mid push. JCK going to be able to find one. Oh, and the Spectre gets put away for the knife as they try to get away. Ashen's going to find one here as well, get a Spectre of their own. And now Viper's going to be on the actual back of the B site. They're going to be planting in towards Orange. This is a ridiculous plant coming down. Sai's going to get one with that Marshall looking for another. Faithion's going to get a clean up ashton gonna drop here's jesus getting the pick oh my whole collapsing 1v2 scenario right now one blast pack available grabs the specter this is going to be interesting because jck is quite low right now 
Yeah, and of course, this is going to be difficult for Jesus to get out of. Yep. And it's just going to be the Reyna picking that one up. GCK able to stay alive, got the defuse off as well. But overall, a really good end of the round there just to be able to say, hey, I'm sending, you're the lower health. Go for the spike. I'll try and take this trade. And little J, of course, he's never going to lose those. But pretty solid economic damage coming out from SVSU as well. You know, a very heavy mud, mid push. I was going to say mud push. That's crazy. Um, but with only classics and you you run away with three guns taken off and you look at the, the economic side, of course, of SVSU right now, at least they all have the full buy, but not a lot of buys coming out. The full bonus coming out. Nobody kind of forcing the issue with picking up either that Vandal or that Phantom. And I was kind of surprised because, you know, I thought maybe somebody would, Little J would purchase and kind of hand off his Spectre and be like, yo, guys, I got this. Especially with the changes to Rainus Flash now being undiscovered or un unblindable basically by any range now it has infinite range yes. on that blind so it's definitely nice to see and I, I do have to give some credit to them as well obviously paper rex as an opening pick goes in the favor of jesus paper rex does run <sighs> slate as soon as i'm trying to get my point across every time you know um <laughs> but jing i mean jing he's a mad lad he does run he does run uh the reina as well on icebox so i mean we've seen it in pro play before it's just not a common pick and you know the classic tens play that happened here as well with reina oh, yeah, everyone's got to remember those highlight pro plays as well and what they could influence in that sense there's the new sky flash you can't kill the bird you can see just the Saginaw Valley having a little bit of trouble actually getting onto the site here, even though they've got that Last weapon advantage. Only one Vandal has fallen here, and yeah, it looks like Asahi's going to be the only one left around. This time piloting KO. They have an idea of where the KO might be. Blast pack isn't going to get the kill. It's going to be the shock dart. Nice. Little combo utility there. Of course, it is a bonus, but you only get one rifle out of the hands of SVSU. I think they would have liked a little bit more, and honestly, the only reason that... Uh, that kill happened in the first place is uh, Viper got baited on the orb. <laughs> the whole team yeah. just baited her. <laughs> They're like, yeah, grab the orb. It's clear, I swear. And uh, the Viper, of course, JCK gets taken down there. Um, so it's going to be one of those things where, you know, we look at this with, you know, 2-1, full buys on both sides. Uh, obviously, economics looking kind of important and vital for this round as far as momentum goes. And we've talked about that so much so far in this series has been the sheer fact that these teams are willing to rip off four, five, six rounds in a row and be able to kind of flip the script. I feel like this round right here is going to be vital and kind of determining the path that this icebox is going to take. And of course, even when they are willing to rip off five, six rounds in a row, it's the fact that the other team will still come back with five, six rounds of their own to tie it up or something along those lines. Oh, great peek there from side to be able to pick up. Jesus, this is sort of the issue with icebox sometimes though while it is sort of the frozen map haha we can make all the cold jokes it does sort of slow the game down a little bit from time to time with how many options there are with how open the map can be little j finding another kill there it can sometimes give decision paralysis to these attacking teams that's a phantom moment for specters they're able to get under the, the box there but nonetheless this is just the svsu sort of crumbling at the seams as soon as you slowly pick them off one by one Oh, the timing here? There's a oh. chance. Sitch, he was making noise, though, so he's definitely going to be... They don't know. No what? shot, no shot, no shot that that timing happens. They're both just sitting there waiting, just caressing each other, essentially. What? And Viper's they're back facing to back. Them away. Oh, they're back to back. That's crazy. Oh, they're actually on the same team. There we go. That makes oh, yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long night. <laughs> yes, this is map three guys we're losing our own marbles as well um i i could have sworn that it looked green and i'm assuming it's because the sova's mid i saw the green flare but uh yeah that's uh that's definitely one of those things right there they're gonna save out here obviously 4v2 scenario not a lot of reason to push especially when that econ is kind of in the gutter so smart job saving out here and nobody's gonna be aggressive everybody really wants to hold on to these rifles on both sides so we're gonna see Lil j of course and sai Sa Sa getting a couple early picks and kind of pushing the pace here but it's going to be 3-1 in favor of suny c and it seems like so you're just feeling a little bit more comfortable maybe you know jck coming through just giving them a little bit of a boost as well could be one of the shot callers you never know with these teams you know don't want to assume anything but of course it's still looking really good for them now you see the buys coming through from uh Saginaw valley you see a couple Bulldog there for a brief moment. They're going to actually rotate around some rifles just to make sure that everyone can get as full of a buy as possible. But even then, these executes onto A site specifically haven't really been as clean, it feels, from SVSU. Of course, they got their full buy round win, but even then, it just seems a little bit messy. And then, oh, Jay, 
Actually gonna go down there. Spec is able to double peek there with the Viper Sai though. Gonna trade it back. Yeah, that's a, a bit of a heat check right there as well. And oh, a Sai. This, this position is beautiful because that wall is there as well. Even if it gets brought up, they're not going to be expecting him to just lurk here. As everybody sits in maze, the Viper ultimate does come out. The Viper's pit going to be committed here. They don't even have full sight control. They're going to go ahead and push this off. JCK is going to take one off the flank. This is going to be a very precarious situation here because nobody has sight control. You have to plant this down and hope nobody pushes you. And Sitch right here, just oh in goodness. size waiting wings. This timing might be crazy. As Sitch mollies out the back side, <gasps> but does not catch Sai. This is going to be deadly if somebody pushes out of this. Yeah, this Viper's Pit doesn't quite Five go plenty. under rafters as well. So it's not the best. I'm not a huge fan of it. We'll see if it works out, though. Yeah, Stitch is going to get spammed out there. And Asai is just going to go for the defuse here. Have, ooh, they don't have the solo ult anymore. So it's going to be up to Spec who finds one. Remaining. That's two. But it doesn't matter. They lost the round anyways. Yeah, I mean, you get the defuse, you're up 4-1, you start building that econ anyway, they're not going to be hurting for this. As you can see, I mean, Little J definitely heat checked with that Reyna ult to the beginning of the round, though. He just yeah. ulted and sat there at the entrance like, I dare you to peek me. Um, I actually have a question here, though. Um, do we know if the, obviously, that wall that was made infamous by VCT, um, I'm assuming that that's on the bugged list and that one's not allowed to be used, correct? That's something we'll ask production at some yeah, point absolutely. i'm curious because that that wall is that the, the wall is completely broken i'm not going to sit oh. here and lie to you it is yeah. disgusting i've actually used it in ranked a couple times to <laughs> some uh get some cheeky kills and get some question oh, marks of course in the all text coming down but um i like to see the fact that they're not using something that's that cheeky of course to start off the rip so uh we're going into the round here a little bit of mid pressure actually coming out from faith on my Oh my, this might be dangerous here. Of course, one on top. Actually spotted out. Faithion going to go ahead and use a shock dart on that. Little Jay's going to get a pick on the top Whoa. side. And JCK actually comes from mid and takes the one off the top of two. This is going to be extremely dangerous. Faithion pulls one off as well. Gets traded for his life. Is the run and gun from Little Jay not going to work out as well? We're ending up in a 3v2 scenario. And something that was looking strongly in Sunni C's favor is now kind of swinging SBSU's way. Yeah, you can see the chamber, all the Tour de Force bullets still pumping through. So difficult to get out of the situation to pick up the spike even at this stage, but they've just sort of guessing. Sai just firing into the blind of that orb, trying to do whatever they can. It's still really tough. Of course, there's still JCK with that Viper ultimate. Seconds Look at left. this angle that they've afforded themselves, though. Toxins going up. Spot this out, right? Ooh, but the shots don't land. Ah, the shots don't land. It's going to be a three-person retake. Here comes the wall, going to block off everything possible. The heal coming out as well. So, you know, two people, you know, one half health, one at 100. No shields afforded to them. But we're going to see how this retake is going to progress. Of course, walking through that wall, I don't think they really care too much about that. The left click, double left kicks down. Sitch is going to pick off one who just rushed onto site. And it might be a little bit of miscommunication. JCK going to find one here. It's going to be up to Sitch solo at 100 health. They're trying to pull this off. The wall is going to drop here. The timing is there. The timing is there. JCK still has an opportunity here. Taps the spike. Sitch on top of this right now. Swings out wide. Gonna just delay time. And there it is. Whoa! Sitch gonna get the headshot. The 4K. The clutch. Sitch doing work. Getting the second round for SBSU. That's huge oh. for Saginaw Valley there. Oh my goodness. Nerves of steel for Stitch there. It was looking so dicey for themselves. And what was sort of a half save round after they saved the round before with the Sova and the Viper. They're able to capitalize on that. They're able to continue to push forward their advantages. And, you know, Sunisi not able to get a grip on this game. Look at their economies once again, despite them being up two rounds here, despite them having what seems to be a good sort of stranglehold on this game from the first, you know, four or five rounds. SVSU flipped that around right away, and now the team that's in the lead that's suddenly on a save round, really sort of out of nowhere. Yeah, two hero rifles with light armor is all they're able to bring to the table this round, so it's definitely looking like potentially three going to drop for SVSU, but I mean, honestly, we've seen so many thrifty and thrifty-esque rounds that I wouldn't be surprised if Sunni C was able to pull one out here. We're going to see the wall committed right now. The obvious B hit going to be taking place and Little J gets spotted in the backside. The showstopper going to be committed as well, trying to chase somebody down. Actually, up top, going to go through here. Do they find it? No! The Rosa ult, unfortunately, going to happen there. Get it lofted onto is the paint shells. They're not going to find any with that as well. So some util being dropped, not being able to find anything. And that third 
Unfortunately, going down right there. This is going to be Asahi in the back. Actually gets a nice bounce on that. Unfortunately, not able to find anybody, but pushing them just off the angle of slight bit. Skybird going to get that full flash as well as this is here. This is going to be an insanely difficult retake, but we are talking about a 5v5, and Jesus is going to find one. Oh, oh my, SVSU coming out with the heat, with the rifles. That is a flawless, and I got to say the execution there, flawless as well, with the chamber lurking mid, able to find a couple. That was beautiful to see really putting down the hammer on that round as well you know we talked about how it was sort of a little bit of a thrifty coming through from suny c but no svsu making sure that hey we're not gonna lose anyone we're gonna keep our economies in check we're gonna keep that lead and despite them being down that round still it's looking really good for the side of svsu you look at their money once again they've got a decent amount built up for them another round win as we mentioned in the previous map the that should be wrong. able to fuel them for the rest of this half and that is really really important especially after a little bit of a slower start especially with jck coming in and sort of switching things up with his viper now svsu are sort of getting themselves back into it and of course we expect no them to tie it back up. But what, what what are we do we are we not going to take what we've seen for the last two maps Oh, of course, it's it's going to be even all the way through again. There's no doubt about that. Of course, bringing in the the Viper main to kind of come assist you out is the the null command being thrown out here. Going to deny a plant a little bit. A nice jumpy right there from Jesus trying to just find something as this is going to get the dog off as well. Of course, we're going to see what can happen here. Little J just sitting on the headshot spot, just waiting so patiently for Jesus to take a pick out. And here's one spec actually <gasps> spots it. He's going to have to get off this angle. No, he re-peaks Little J, you oh. mad lad. He's still living. Oh. He finds it. Are you kidding me, Little J? He peeked it like eight different times oh and it finally God. works out. SVSU now in a little bit of a pickle here. You can see CDC just controlled this map for the last minute. And once again, you're getting down to the desperation times. JCK with this angle. One, two. They fall like flies. They'll be pulling out this Viper right oh. there. Ash is actually able to find one in return. It's a 1v3, but everyone's over this A site. They don't really have time to mess around, though. Ashton's got to find everything. Faithion coming through from mid as well. Ashton's got to find this plant as soon as possible. Ten seconds on Dark's left. not going to be able to find them either. Knife will. They were going to plant down, but even then, it's looking real dicey. They're not even going to get the plant down. They're just going to look for even more kills. And little J falls as well. But unfortunately for Ashton, they won't be able to clear that round for their team. I mean, Ashton did everything in their power, though, of course. I mean, it's unfortunate, of course, that uh, JCK kind of ran out of ammo there and just had to throw the molly down, like the kind of panic molly. I know, yeah. I, I know I've done that myself, and then Ashton finds two. You got to find that op shot, though. I, that, that's the one thing that I think is really the missed opportunity of the round is Psy losing that operator. Of course, the Tour de Force not in session yet either. He's only at two of eight. And we see that uh, the economy for obviously for a SVSU is still not terrible, to be quite honest with you. They'll have after this round the ability to buy two, especially if those two stay alive. So it's going to be in that kind of scenario where it's going to be more and more difficult for SVSU to kind of make it out of these scenarios, especially when you have Sunni C Sai here sitting with a Bucky. Do we finally get our Bucky kill? And of course not. It's not going to do enough damage. Just Bucky things. Unfortunate, but it was a good effort. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more gas behind that Bucky there. Yep, and Side just falls right after. Jesus is able to find the kill there. Now they're finally executing onto the site. Something I want to point out, though, from the Sunni C. JCK not popping that Viper ultimate. This is the second one we've actually seen on the side of SVSU. So, not using that too defensively. Slade's able to find another one on the heavy flank coming through. Little J. It's a couple of shots on the Slade. It's looking a little bit dicey here. Faith Young gonna try and find their way in here as well. Finds one. We have the shock dart lineups here finding it that's going to be a second kill picked up by slade this might be the way back in here but still it's a 3v3 into a viper spit going to be so difficult to decide as soon as see to be able to push through this spray down getting a little bit of damage is jesus kind of just sitting inside this one throwing a throwing a blast back out seeing if they can get anything actually pushes little j through Ooh. jesus gonna find one the ping from two now they have to find the viper sitch is going to find the final kill and there it is, SVSU picking up another round. It's going to be four to five, and back and forth we go once again, Adam. This has been a wild, wild ride, and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. Yeah, the seesaw continues. You know, even when we thought CNC was starting to run away with the this half a little bit, you know, they're up 4 1. Saginaw Valley continues to fight back. They refuse to relent. The gumption on these folks are just absolutely insane. And no. 
round 10 here, you're trying to really get your lead to stick. For CDC, you want to just get your six. You want to just be able to say you've got your half at that point and try and push any advantages from there. Oh my goodness, Sai though. The shot is true. Uh, the shot is true and he gets out for free and it's just one of those scenarios that you'd love to see somebody double peeking that entrance because we've seen him play that angle once already. So you have to be prepared for things along those lines. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. JCK with the Viper ult, the pit down on A. We're gonna see Spec see if they can spot them out. We're gonna see, okay, Little J actually gonna get tagged through this, but they follow Little J instead of trying to find the Viper as well. It's gonna leave this pit up. And obviously now that util from uh, the util from Sky gonna come through. They find and locate the screen as well. The pit goes down. There's a great job by Spec to get it down. Now. We're gonna see, of course, the KO knife coming through. We're gonna see who can pick this off. Little J ulted in the corner. Empress running out quickly and nobody quite aggressing yet. There's still 45 seconds on the clock. Spike they have down. plenty of time to kind of reposition this, but Sai gonna find another one. Is that on the flank? Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's just sort of camping around. Faithion gonna fall down as well, but now 30 seconds left. They just have to spread out. Is Spec gonna fall left. as well? Little J finally finds another one for themselves. It's just be the raise and the sova but Sai has it read he's read them like a book he studied the cliffs notes will he be able to take advantage of it jesus doesn't know where he is and Sai gets behind them he finds one he finds oh. two for the 4k what a timing coming through from Sai. he flips his knife in approval i i'd be flipping my knife too i mean that's uh, rgx pro blade always beautiful to see it's kind of been left in the dust by the rgx butterfly i'm glad to see the og back out but Little J just kind of camping that corner, just staying place. And Psy was a menace that round, right? You get the first blood on the pick on pipes of A, on, on obviously the offender side of pipes. Then you rotate all the way out. You go through, set a TP mid, get the pick mid, drop the spike, and then rotate to B and make the perfect read. I just, especially after the Viper's pit drawn, the faith that man had that they were going to go B at the end of the day was insanity got the faith they've got the faith on they've got everything going for them at this point but yes sony ac six to four definitely want to sort of secure a winning half here this is really going to be important for them you want to get as many advantages as you can but look at this soba ultimate faith on find spec find some damage onto some other members nope seems to have missed that last shot but you get your one there that's a big member down your sky your blinds your dog is going to be taken away from svsu and they seem reluctant to push once again despite them not really giving any information yeah, it, it just really comes down to one of those things to where, you know, you, you lost your sky, so some of that intel is gone. You're going to go ahead and, you know, some drone on drone action. They're just spotting each other as they know Faithion is up there. They just aren't able to spot him out. Going to shoot this backside. It's a great nade by the Rays as well to get some chip damage away. Faithion going through right now. And again, that KO, that Molly coming through, that nade able to at least delay the plant for now and get some damage off as well oh Slain, though is lurked in the middle oh. of nowhere finds two matches this back up to a 2v2 slade you rat you devil finding the great location is he gonna get another one slade is popping oh and sai is literally in spawn thinking they're gonna rotate thinking his team can hold this down that is not the case slade finding the trigger discipline as well just holding for as long as possible but look at this Sai! oh my goodness ashton finds the headshot and closes it out saginaw valley they get their fifth they're gonna keep this half as half. close as possible God. i mean oh. if, if we had a vegas betting line on this what's the over under on it being six six like if we had a prop bet like a live prop bet going on right now <laughs> Like, to be it, fair, it, it, it's, neither it's, neither of these halves, like none of the four halves that we've had thus far have been 6-6. Six, six. They've all fair. been, you know, one off. So, you know, it's more so whether we're going to get overtime. And I mean, I kind of <laughs> want to get overtime just because I want to see more of these teams. And my goodness, these teams have definitely been performing. But God, these teams, are, they're so evenly mashed. And what a, what a game to get on stream. That's all I'm going to say. Because yeah. we've heard the other two streams, they were stopped. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Sometimes you win some, you lose some. So we're going to see a little mid-aggression here off of the ultimate being popped, of course, by Sai over on the Sunni C side. Where we're going to see a wall committed pretty deep as well, but only one currently on B side. So if they hit this quick, they might run into some issues, but it seems like it's being read out, especially with the bird being put out. That's probably heard, of course, by, um, by the sub, the super sub, as we can say right now, because he's doing a pretty good job. VCK, of course. What?
is this look at where Faithion is in regards to the Viper on the opposite side. Slade finds JCK to open us up and already planting a spec stitch finds it onto Sai. Somehow didn't find Faithion that entire time. He goes all the way back down tube to try and find it. Faithion's on the run. Stitch. Oh my. Check him, PC. Check, check it. Check it. That was inhuman. Back man. Back man. Easy. Back, 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 back. <laughs> back man, as we see Ashton and Slade pulled out the last two. That was a, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to age myself a little bit here because I am 30 years old, but I believe that is what the Fortniters say. That is cranking a 90 because that was a nasty 90 degree <laughs> flick right now. Holy. Just instant. No doubt about it. Just, you know what? Let's go for half a hospital flick. No big deal. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you might need a cast for that wrist after this one, but my goodness. You know what? We we should have put the house on it there. 6-6 six, six at the half. As even as you can get. 1-1 one, one your map score. There is so little separating these teams. They are neck and neck. My goodness. Saginaw Valley now on this defense, though. Going to be curious. You mentioned you prefer this raise on the defense. We'll have to find out how that pans out. We certainly will. And I mean, it really just comes down to if Jesus is going to play aggressive or if Jesus is going to lurk back a little bit and kind of sit back and just see what he can get. Slade is pushing up aggressively, though. Oh. He gets suppressed, but he is able to at least get out with his life. No chip damage done, just a bunch of night terrors, to be completely honest with you. There's no damage is done on the trades there. And this is going to be another quick B hit. And it's been interesting, Adam, just for the sheer fact that we have seen a ton of B hits out of both these teams and nobody brought a Sage along. It's so curious, but oh my goodness, I'm finding a couple of kills already to open us up. You can see that little Jay needs to try and find a frag here to get that heal back up if possible, but no sages, no problems, I guess. But it seems like they've had a couple of problems. You need these retakes have been looking really good. The Viper Wall does sort of provide a secondary effect from that, but look at where Stitch is. They've snuck up so close. They're not spotted. The right click Final finds the kill. Feet. Viper on Viper action. Now the spike is down. You've got it in your sight. Five members strong for Saginaw Valley going to be trying to hold this one down. And it's looking like they have a really good opportunity here. Of course, we're going to see that dart come out. Little J, I mean, you're Reyna on pistol. You can break rounds if you find one here. We're going to see if he has the ability to, though. Nope, the boom bot is going to be spotted and shot. It's going to give away Little J's position. It's going to be a very, very difficult time, even just getting the spike, one more or less, doing anything else. And yeah, Stitch going to find one. Jesus is going to find the other. Faithion drops. It's going to be the pistol round, of course, in favor of Saginaw Valley State and uh, I mean it's the start of that it's the start of that process right because we haven't seen a team lose an, an anti-eco yet at all every single team has been solid on the anti-eco for all three maps so it's going to be very curious to see how this ends up pulling out because we're going to start to see Saginaw Valley of course have that economic lead just a slight bit with the guns coming in for SUNY C in the round after this one I think what SUNY C need they need they need a spike dance again you know they got to just conjure up something because the last three rounds the last you know the last couple of rounds this is where the momentum starts to kick in it's it's really been challenging to see where they're getting this value out of little j you know they've been getting caught out asahi hasn't had as good of a performance as we've seen from him in the past oh my goodness ashton with some great timing but not able to land the shots and look at this they're just going so ham down mid <laughs> absolutely and taking a page out of jay-z in uh, kanye's book right there as that's a great oh, jumping right click from goodness. jck down, unfortunately not going to be able to find Faithion. enough damage and what Faithion. Ah! okay you got one hey Faithion is looking at his team right now going like guys what happened i got mine what happened <laughs> this is also of note the third time we've had pov on faithion with one health yeah. like, and can pull it out yeah it's it's just, one health is so rare in this game as well because everything you know 40 damage from a vandal body shot you know 39 from the phantom nothing really adds up to 149 over time or 124 in that right it's kind of I don't know. Faithion's got something different. He had his breakfast this morning or something. Yeah. I, I'd say it's a good omen. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> There's no omen here, apparently. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Oh, man, as we go on, we're going to see, of course, SVSU get a little aggressive here. Slade's going to get an opening pick on Little J. I think that's massive. Mm. Also, the Sky Flash, that was huge. Able to just curtail the push a little bit. Combo Util is great here. SVSU understanding that, hey, we're on an eco right now. We're on our bonus round. We have to get some info out so we can know what's going on. And look at the rotations already coming through as well. Sky leading the charge, of course, for SVSU in a 5v4. Yes, they're at a gun disadvantage. But right now, if they keep hitting their shots, it's not going to look like it as... Are they faking this? Could be. Using the Viper wall that they've used every single round. These attackers love using that on B site. 
Maybe just trying to force him out a little bit, but it doesn't look like SVSU are taking the bait quite yet. Or are they? Look at where Ashton has pushed up. They've pushed up mid, but they haven't spotted them out quite yet. Oh, he just misses them. Oh, they had Silva lurking A the whole time. Look where Faithion is. Oh my god, Faithion! The one. opportunity of a lifetime for Faithion. Mine's one. But now they have access to this A site. This is so good from this side as soon as you see. They're finally able to execute the fake just so strong. And now it's all up to CSU to try and retake this site. Even then, Sai's just lurking up mid. Oh. Yeah, that's precarious there. Sai getting caught out, and that's going to be a rifle in the hands of SVSU as well, and that's the last thing you want to do currently. So everybody kind of sitting here playing the post plant. You have Asahi just kind of waiting on this flash, kind of left-click it out, going for a little pop flash left action. Do they there. get it? One far back, but it's a 1v4. It's oh. going to be SVSU winning their bonus on the back of Ashton, getting that Vandal that was so vital. Everybody else picking guns. This is a massive economic swing and one we have not seen so far. The team capitalizing on the bonus, able to get an extra round in. Yeah, this momentum is just shifting really quickly once again, and so you need to curtail this. They need to stem the bleeding because thus far, they've been lost. You know, they started off this map really well, and ever since then, I mean, we can look at the scoreboard here. You know, it's eight out of the last ten rounds going the way of SVSU, and that's, I think, one of the hottest streaks we've seen any team pull out today really just sort of breaking the mold finally able to solve what Zunir sort of cooking up on this attacker side so I think they've just got to pull something different out don't think it's going to be this round it's going to have to be that next round but even then going down 10-6 already not going to be the ideal play for the side of Sunni C and certainly not ideal but it really just comes down to the fact right you got to reset you still have plenty of rounds 6-9 and oh. that's one way to do it little J with the headshot on the marshal and the full heal off of it that's going to be massive and they just run in and take a site they do not care as you see, the side there trying to get... Oh, there's the pop flash coming out. Not going to be as long as the duration as before, of course. Two players sitting there making sure the plant goes down. And it is, in fact, going to go down. A very strong A-site position right now with a flank watch, of course, from side. This is going to be massive right now for Sunni C. Yeah, and Faithion just sort of holding these angles. Has the stinger. We talked about the bus. Still can be so scary in these situations. Although, Spec going to turn around, find one onto Asahi. Trying to peek twice. JCK finds one. Little J finds one as well. Sudi, are you going to pull it out? You've got to beat down Stitch, though. He's been so true with their shots. Ashton and Stitch on this site. Looking for the defuse. Do they have the shots? Are they going to be able to get the spray down? Sai finds one with the headhunter. Ashton in the 1v2. Will not be enough. The thrifty is collected for Sai. Of course it is. At this point, why wouldn't it? At what? At this point, why wouldn't it? I just the thrifty comes out. We get our like second official thrifty of the match, but there have been some very light buys that have just been overshadowed by you know just straight heavy armor buys on the other round that should qualify as thrifties but aren't. And I'm just looking at this right now, and the econ gets flipped on its head because if if SVSU loses this round they're broke except for sitch like it's gone your econ is disappeared from you especially with the operator being brought in this round we're gonna see who can bring it out and who can bring it home little jay has been so so pivotal right here on this does he know that they have the op watching him though is the question it's just been back and forth every single time oh no not like this slade That's that's a heartbreak right there when you miss that auto shot. And, but little Jay has snuck up so far already. Look how much space this Rand has afforded themselves. They do get hit with the shock dart, but I don't know if they're aware of where little Jay still is. I don't think they are. And we're looking at this right now, and it's been kind of a slow push so far. Of course, Jesus is going to use that boom bot, try to get some more intel as they try to shock dart him out of that corner. Slate is going to get the op on little Jay. Push just a little bit too far. He's going to get punished for it. And here is the silent rotate out once again. But this entire time, Look at where Sky is positioned. This is gonna be deadly. Spec has the dirtiest lurk in the world right now. And Viper backs off and uh, what? Sixth sense the coming read? through for JCK. Oh my goodness. Sky is just still sitting here, just waiting for the time. And maybe now is the time they strike. Stitch gonna be able to left. find one. Oh goodness, great turn away from that flash as well. But look at where Spec is. Spec is in their spawn. And maybe this is the time they find it. Sigh. Oh no. You just got done dirty because Spec finds you on the flank. <laughs> I mean, 
I understand you're you're at a disadvantage and honestly Vipers pit my drop here they're going for the round they are going for the round Sunny C is saying hey this is vital this is pivotal we need this but this is not an ideal scenario to be in except they're kind of split up right now you're gonna see Jesus just wrapping in as soon as possible trying to support his teammate in the Viper pit and they actually bail on it this is gonna be massive this is gonna be a huge opportunity right now if they're able to close this out they're oh, just I'm gold just... playing ring around the rosy. JCK yeah. finds one, finds two! Oh my goodness, are they gonna be able to do it? They find three! No way. You bring in the sub off the bench, and JCK in his Viper Zalt will he be able to find a round. The spike is half. He pops out another Molly. He's jacked up! The Viper finds the 4K. Just a galaxy-sized brain on this man. What? The super sub JCK clutches out a 1v4 in the Viper's Pit by leaving it. By leaving oh, it. That man goes, no, I'm going to ditch. We're good. I'm going to wrap around the other side. My whole team is dead. If this play doesn't go wrong, what are you going to blame me for it? No, I'm going to clutch this up. That is wild. Absolute insanity from JCK <laughs> to bring them back from what looked like a for sure lost round out of there is just absolute ridiculousness. And this match just continues to deliver. I love Valorant. I love this game so much. Holy crap. But I mean, we talked about what that round meant for SVSU as well, because they're Econs. Not in the greatest of shapes. Yes, you've got a Vandal here, but even then, this round, that round loss, man. It's so difficult because you had that advantage. You had, you know, eight of your last ten, and soon you see just refuse to give up. This game keeps delivering every single time. And we think it's over now. Just the, oh, the shot through the, the wall. My goodness. I mean, it's a beautiful shot, but that tour de force is going to be taken away with this null command. So that's going to be very important. Of course, Slade going to try to wait this out. Might get spotted beforehand. There is the shots from Slate, of course, with that classic. It's a 3v4 in that retake scenario, and we know that the buy right now for SVSU isn't the best, so it's going to be full rifles against what they can scavenge together. Of course, Jesus still rocking that light armor plus vandal combo. We're going to see what comes through. Little combo utility. Little Jay's going to get oh. spotted and removed by Jesus. Here's another opportunity right here. Asahi trying to get one. They're on the plant, but two still standing right now. They're going to find one. Here's the opportunity of the lifetime. It's going to be an easy defuse, and SVSU gonna bring it back with a lighter buy as well versus the Sunny Sea roster that just had the biggest clutch of their lives, probably. Yeah, they just had to rest that one back, get a little bit more control over their game. Once again, though, the Sunny Sea Econs, they're, no, oh, they're actually not in as good of a shape as I expected. Granted, Sai can pick up the Tour de Force as well for themselves, but Asahi is not really having the game for themselves. They're just gonna be fine saying, you know what, I'll eat it. I'll just do what I can for this round. But then again, you can see it's so difficult to find any advantages. Now Spec going to be donated over a rifle as well. It's just every single time we look at these two teams, it's just so close. There's so little separating them, and it's delivered into one of the most exciting series that I think we could have asked for. It's a Tuesday, man. There's still a whole week ahead of us, and this is what we're getting? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane to think about, of course. Little J just doing Little J things. Pushing up quite quickly. We're going to see them to use Let's both their play. flashes. There is the Tour de Force, in fact, pop. We're going to see what happens, of course, with Sitch just sitting here. They know that they're there. The combo utility getting dropped. The spear Ooh. coming through as well. Faytheon's going to drop. Stitch is going to get one and the heal as well. I think they might actually be out of the heal here. And Lil oh. J just going to get removed from play from Jesus with a nade combo. Oh, and the showstopper coming out. They are trying to solidify this round and solidify their lead. There's two. Sai gets one. Everybody back there. Jesus finds two. Sai gets one, but can't find the next. It's going to be SBS you once again and ults invested everywhere across that round but i think it's very vital to point out that svsu getting that lead getting that economic advantage that is going to be massive this could push towards 12 at the very least you can see the buys coming through from suny canton here they don't look too confident in what they're getting at right now it's going to be a hero rifle on sai you're going to put the hero rifle on anyone it's got to be sai or either either that or faith on at this point but regardless it's just everything backs up against the wall you've got to try and find any sort of way back into this if you're suny canton because the push to 12 could just easily be a 13 for the side of svsu who have just bounced back in a crazy way after a really poor start to this map 
Yeah, it, it's impressive to see. But like I said, I liked the raise on defense. I'm being proved right here. So <laughs> love yeah. to see that. Um, just the ability to deny plants is so big. And Lil J just taking such aggressive space to start out with. I just don't want to see him get caught out again because there's the one thing of where sitting down and understanding the fact that you're on a marshal. This is not a good position for you to be in because you have to cover 14 different angles. So everybody else pushes in. Of course, Asahi pushing in. Spots out one, going to bail off with the stinger in hand. As we've been mentioning so much recently, buff. That's a nice shot as Ooh. well from the top. Gonna bring a little damage as well as oh my gosh, you see three up here on the stairs, just kind of over sitting rafters, of course, on site, and that shock dart gonna do well. It's all a bait. Look at where JCK is. Look at where the chamber from his side is. It's all been a ruse this entire time. Can they find the timing though to prevent Slade from getting out of dodge? This has been miraculous. Slade getting shot at now. He needs to try and find them. Oh, let's so see. So scary. I know. 30 seconds oh, left. Oh. Sai gets the pick. That's absolutely massive. Are they going to commit the wall here? Oh, the wall's on A. They full sold the fake here. Oh. And they are just going for it. And look at Faithion's positioning right now. All the way up on the flank. Able to get one up in two. It's a 3v3. It's a retake scenario. This is going to be massive if another thrifty rolls out. Oh my goodness, gets the timing on to Faithion, but Asahi finally getting on the board with another kill of their own. It's a 2v2. Asahi has no health. This KO is going to be so low. Stitch going for the defuse. They've got the lineup going through. Are they just going to stick it through? They're trying their best. It's a 1v2. JCK has to make some magic happen once again. Colin Disney, it won't be enough. It will just be Stitch clutching that one out, and that pushes out to 12. It's a little too close for comfort there with Stitch on 2 HP, but they are able to pull it out and get to 12, and we might see our first match with neither team in double digits. That is something crazy to think about with how close this has been the entire time. Even that match right there. I mean, just 1v1 scenario, 2 HP, or that 2v1, excuse me, and able to get it out, and whew, I'm just going to take a deep breath right here, and I, I don't want to call a player out right now, but... Masahi really needs to make their impact felt in this round if you're going to bring it back, if you're Suni C. And I think you just got to hold the line at this. You know, we've seen what SVSU are able to put out on this defensive half. And Suni C, they haven't had answers. They haven't had a lot of consistent answers. Yes, you got a crazy 1v4 clutch from JCK. But other than that, it's been very slim pickings for what you can get. Realistically, this game should be over apart from that insane Viper alt clutch. But. They're finally able to get on site. It's a plant. By that, you've already got yourself a little bit more time. And of note, that means JCK's ult's going to be up. So playing the Viper ult once again would be your clutch moment. Little J already finding one. Yeah, Little J doing a great job right there. The operator up top going to find Little J right on back. The answer, Ashton going to get another oh. as well. Has been quietly top fragging this entire game. His side is just sitting here kind of waiting. Might have been able to spot the health bar out and is able to turn the sky flash. There's the swing. Oh. Going to play for his life somehow as that's going to work out. And we have the Sova ult coming out all the way from back of sight. He's going to find one. Does he find more? Finds a damage pick on another JCK. Doing They're finishing the right fuse. Somebody. Oh, they finished the fuse. Oh, my goodness. And a heartbreaker for Suni C. This map is so even across the entire series. And it ends with a ninja defuse. Out of that... all things to end the game on. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. I thought they got off of it with the Sova ult, but they sent the person that still had full health and just said, hey, stick it. We got this with everybody playing backside again. And that was one thing that we saw on Haven as well, right? There was a smoke down. Everybody was playing off of site and a round was lost because of it. And we see the final round in this entire series go again. Of course, I would just want to give a shout out to everybody. Faithion on top, of course, for... Um, for SUNY Canton, unfortunately not able to pull it out. Jesus getting the top frags to be able to pull out the top frag position there. But I mean, Ashton was a monster on Sova that entire map. I felt super confident on it. And I think that it's so important, especially early on into the season to get these wins like this. You know, you, you show what you have on both sides of the map. You show that you can push through even in a long series such as this. And even though we had the super sub JCK come in, it just wasn't enough. And unfortunately for Suna Canton, you take the L here, but even then you can hold that hot, your head high at that because my goodness, Saginaw Valley, they, they push through everything. That's the... yeah. I still can't put it into words. Uh, I, I, I this can't. was, 
what a great way to get reintroduced basically for me back to the ECAC. I worked with them last year. It was phenomenal. But this is the first match we get. Like, how are we going to top this? That's my question because this is this has been absolute insanity the entire time. So, I mean, look, guys, we've been casting for three hours now at this point. It's been a riot. It's been a ton of fun. No pun intended. Once again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just showing my boomerness right now. So we're going to catch our breath real quick. And of course, after that, we're going to be getting an interview with Stitches to get his thoughts on this because I just want to pick his brain with how intense this was, Adam. We definitely need to hear from somebody about what they thought about that back and forth and how just desperate it seemed on every round how important it was to win. Going to find one here. It's going to be up to Sitch solo at 100 health to try to pull this off. The wall's going to drop here. The timing is there. The timing is there. JCK still has an opportunity here. Taps the spike. Sitch on top of this right now. Swings out wide. Going to just delay time. And there it is. Whoa. Sitch going to get the headshot. The 4K. Oh, this is here. This is going to be an insanely difficult retake. But we are talking about a 5v5. And Jesus is going to find one. Oh, oh my. SVSU coming out with the heat. With the Once again, you're getting down to the desperation times. JCK with this angle. One, two. They fall like flies. She pushes little J through. Ooh. Jesus is gonna find one. The pig from two. Now they have to find the viper. The the rays and the sova, but Sai has it read. He's read them like a book. He's studied the cliffs notes. Will he be able to take advantage of it? Jesus doesn't know where he is. And Sai gets behind them. He finds one. He finds oh. two for the 4K. What a time! Molly coming through. That nade able to at least delay the plant for now and get some damage off as well oh. Slade though is lurked in the middle oh. of nowhere finds two a rifle in the hands of svsu as well and that's the last thing you want to do currently is everybody kind of sitting here playing the post plant you have asahi just kind of waiting on this flash gonna left click it out going for a little pop flash action do they get it one far back but it's a 1v4 it's going to be svsu oh. you gotta beat down stitch though he's been so true with their shots it's ashton and stitch on this site, looking for the defuse. Do they have the shots? Are they going to be able to get the spray down? Sai finds one with the headhunter. Ashton in the 1v2. Oh, goodness. Great turn away from that flash as well. But look at where Spec is. Spec is in their spawn. And maybe this is the time they find it. Sai. Oh, no. You just got done. this out. Oh, They're just I'm gold just... playing ring around the rosy. JCK yeah. finds one, finds two. Oh, my goodness. Are they going to be three. able to do it? They find three. No way. You bring in the sub off the bench. And JCK. In his Viper Salt, will he be able to find a round? The spike is half. He pops out another volley. He's jacked up. The Viper finds it. Jay just going to get removed from play from Jesus with a nade combo. Oh, and the Showstopper coming out. They are trying to solidify this round and solidify their lead. There's two. Sai gets one. Everybody back there. Jesus finds two. Sai gets one, but can't find the next. It's Well, my name is Darian Wheeler. I'm a junior at Cornell College, and I play for the Overwatch and Smash Ultimate team there. I also play football, and I enjoy playing Ultimate Frisbee as well. Wow, how do you have time for all that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to prioritize, right? Yeah. So how long have you been playing Overwatch and Smash, you said? Overwatch, I started playing the summer before I came to Cornell, which was in 2019. And since then, I've gone from bronze to master's ranking just by being on the team. Um, and Smash, I started when the game first came out, but I haven't played the game competitively until around the end of last year. And what made you want to start competing? At the time, our esports coach, we just started getting into like big tournaments and stuff. And so the t we went to a tournament where one of the PGR, one of the top 50 players in the world, was appearing, and we played him and it was not pretty it was uh we got stomped into the dirt and so <laughs> that I, I didn't like that so i was i said you know what i'm gonna get better i'm gonna play better and i'm gonna figure out how to how to beat someone like that because that that was not fun and what have you done to get better at the game like what kind of strategies do you use we have weekly practices. We have Monday, Thursday, and Friday we practice. Uh, I play by myself, of course. I go to tournaments. And from these tournaments against good players, I take the film that I get the, and I VOD review it. 
learn what I could have done better um, and figure out things like positioning, usage of abilities, you know, that type of thing. So what do you think about your team? How does it feel to be a part of an esports team? And do you guys all get along? Are you guys friends? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We, like, we're, if we're all in the room together, we're, we're just joking around. We're, which sometimes makes it hard to practice because it's, it's very hard. It's hard to Hello and welcome back everybody to Esports U2. I'm Visionary One alongside me for this wild ride has been Rare Adam. Uh, it's like we just went to Six Flags and rode a roller coaster because this has been absolutely ridiculous. Result, of course, 2-1 in favor of Saginaw Valley. And this was by far one of the most hyped Valorant matches that I've ever casted. I just want to get your thoughts. Of course, we have Stitches here with us as well. But before we get him in here, I just want to get your final thoughts about this craziness that we saw happen. Honestly, I'm super happy that we got to cast this one just because man it was so back and forth it sort of gave you that almost like solo queue feel in a way where you're just like you know what i don't know what's gonna happen next time. i don't know what the next step is but of course we've got stitches here with us once again congratulations on the victory thank you thank you and so stitches i i gotta be honest with you because the back and forth swings that we saw in this match was basically unheard of you know typically somebody likes to take momentum and run away with it it seems like there was a hard brick wall anytime someone a team got four rounds it just swung exactly back the different direction so i just wanted to go ahead and ask you kind of what allowed you guys to fight back because we saw those swings both ways of course so like how was the mental how were you guys able to overcome when they started building up their momentum and kind of just come back and be able to stay in the games for as long as y'all did uh well personally i think like our mental, like we're a great team. Like we know that we are able to win anything. Um, you know, we're all, looking at like ranks is something that a lot of, I'm sure these teams do just like kind of size up each other. We knew that it was going to be a good game and that like, no matter what happened, we were in a, having a fair shot. I remember even on the Haven game when it was like 10, 11 and we had to save or like, no, we, we just we will win it over time if that's what it comes down to. So, you know, we just always knew that we were going to win out. Yeah, and especially in map three, you know, seeing the side of Cine Canton bring on a sub, was it something you were preparing for? Like, what's your mindset going into map three where they're just subbing someone in that you haven't seen? Um, we were a little confused at first because, um, you know, the person they were subbing out was a Smokes player. And, you know, I know a lot of people really like the Omen, and Icebox is not a very friendly Omen map. So I knew with that sub that, you know, the sub is going to be more comfortable on uh, Viper and... I mean, even I outperform both other maps playing Viper because, like, that's just who I'm comfortable on as an agent. So when we saw that sub, we were like, we know that we are going to have a tougher match here, but we we're confident in our icebox. Yeah, I, I also wanted to kind of give, obviously, you a shout out as well. But we saw a ton of agent rotation on y'all's team. Can you kind of speak to that and kind of how you're so flexible with roles and What's the most important thing for you guys like moving forward? Are you trying to get more comfortable or are you looking at a way that you can just utilize everybody on their best map and just kind of let them go ham? Um, we're going to try to kind of consolidate the roles moving forward. Um, I'm sure you guys saw I played a lot of smokes. Um, it's what I'm most comfortable on. But um, Spec and Slade, like they're they both love playing Chamber, um, but also Slade really loves playing Breach. So. You know, if there's a certain map where they love playing a certain agent on, we'll rather just put them on whatever they're comfortable with. Um, but looking f moving forward, we're, we're definitely going to try to consolidate those roles just so everybody can get like a, a better mindset of, of what their role is on the team. And of course, just want to open the floor up to you. Any thanks, any shout outs you want to give, you know, any sort of fighting words you want to give to any of your future opponents as well? Um, of course, shout outs to SVSU Esports, of course. You know, we're a, a brand new program just uh, made this year, so... This is literally our second week competing, and we're not giving up ever. So if you think that you have us, you don't. I definitely love hearing the confidence, Stitch. That's uh, definitely awesome. Uh, shout outs to SUNY C as well. Of course, they gave y'all yeah. a heck of a run. It was a magnificent match. We're going to go ahead and let you close down the esports lab, brother. We know you've been busy. <laughs> so I definitely appreciate you stopping by with us tonight, man. Good luck with your studies. I know we're hitting around that midterm time as <laughs> yes. well. So I hope you can pull that out because that one's always a riot during midterms, especially when you're involved with student activities such as this one. So thank you so much for being here yes, tonight. Thank you guys for we having certainly me. certainly appreciate you. Have a good one, man. Thank you. You guys too. Thank you. Adam, I mean, I, I still don't have words for this series. I mean, what a way to start off our Valorant season here with ECAC. 
it's definitely been a wild ride i want to give the floor to you man and let you go ahead and shout out whoever you'd like we can go ahead and wrap it up after that honestly shout out to our production team i mean rhino doing all of the observing and everything fantastic stuff as always like we got to see one hp like three times we got to see the two hp that's stuff that you know as a one-man crew it's really cool to see you know Leighton as well in the back in our ears giving us all that information super happy to see that and of course shout out to you for being my co-caster for today it was such a pleasure to be able to cast with you and my goodness what the future holds in this league i do not know all i know is that it's all bangers here yeah, there is certainly no doubt about that. Apparently, it's bangers only with Leighton as well as he's casted, uh, or I'm sorry, he's produced, you know, multiple game sevens, multiple map threes. <laughs> he's going to continue doing that for sure. I was going to shout out the people in the background as well, but I also want to thank Esports U for giving these kids the opportunity to be able to be casted. I know, especially in my early days in college, Esports wasn't really a thing, even though I played a ton of games, and I definitely would have liked this opportunity to potentially earn a scholarship doing what they love, and not only that, and being able to meet those lifelong friends that you'll probably game with for quite some time. So shout outs for Esports U and ECAC, of course, for coming through and really just fostering Esports into the collegiate scene. We definitely appreciate that. Adam, I appreciate you on this wild ride that you took with me tonight. It's our first time casting together. I feel like we brew it out of the park, but I'm gonna shout the gameplay out for that more so than ourselves because they gave us such a great match to cast. So of course, with all of us here at ECAC and Esports U, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in. It has been a magnificent night. I hope y'all enjoy yours. And hey, College Valorant's every Tuesday, so come swing on by. You'll see some more banger matchups. My name is Jacob, I'm 21, and it's my first year in this school. I've already been to community college for the last two years but I transferred here, it's a whole new program. What made you transfer? I wanted to do something different. I already have an uh, associate's degree in business administration and I wanted to come to this school and do audio production, just like uh, music engineering stuff. So what do you wanna do with that? The main goal is to 